Good evening, America, and all the other lesser nations. It's your boy Donnie, former president of the United States, and really the best president, quite frankly. I'm here tonight to tell you not to be like China and instead donate to the OC podcast. But don't just take it from me, the greatest and most loved president of all time. Listen to these other satisfied customers. I think of the host of the OC podcast as my five and a half additional children. And like a good American father, I support them by donating to their only fans. If only I had started donating earlier, Uncle Ben might still be alive. I've never met my real dad, but that's okay. Because after donating all my savings, the hosts agreed to be my new dads. I want the change out of his coin purse who donate to the podcast. No, not my coins! Yes, your coins. It's time to do, 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 donate to the Patreon. All right. The OCA podcast needs my money more than my sister Serenity. Donate today. SCA podcast. I am your host, the Anime Collector. Joining me tonight is Random Eleven. Hello. And Reese. Hi. And Greenline, who popped in right before the show started. Right in the nick of time. <laughs> um, so you guys are going to have to be on top of me with my uh, audio and everything tonight, because apparently too many tabs are currently open, and uh, yeah, it's going to be a disaster. So. Um, just to get this out of the way now, because it hasn't been said on channel yet. Um, last podcast, we had planned to do um, Shield Hero Season 2 as our watch club tonight. But then I realized tonight's episode is episode 234. And the episode where we covered The Promised Neverland Season 1 was episode 123. So I just had to make an executive decision and change it up. <laughs> Fortunately, I was able to... Uh, to get through the whole season uh, on my flight to that AI conference I went to. Over the Against expect ex expectations of 40% of the folks. Literally everybody. Everybody else, they had no faith in me. <laughs> All right. So getting started. <laughs> if you guys would like to support the OCA podcast, you can do so by funding us on Patreon. Uh, you could also fund me on Patreon. Apparently, you can also join for free. That's new. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever that <means. laughs> uh, There's also ways to do it. You can rape us monthly on the website at ocapodcast.com slash support. Um, there's a bunch of affiliate codes. Uh, definitely buy a Tenga on us. <laughs> and uh, Not yeah, on us, on our, on our uh, affiliate link. The, well, the Tenga is on you. You have to pay yes, for the Tenga it. is on you. Yes, yes. Thank you for clarifying for legal. Um so we are going to be talking to Wendy Lee tonight, but there are a couple things I feel like we should jump into first. So I would like to read uh, a little tiny bit about the WGA strikes. Uh, Marvel to restructure their TV division, lending credence to claim that new WGA deal would eliminate woke diversity hires. I hear an echo. In your face, anime collector! In your face! <laughs> Furthermore, <laughs> hilariously, it is the week of Halloween. <laughs> SAG after announces outfit rules for Halloween, tells striking actors to avoid, quote, costumes inspired by the struck content. Uh, so this did not go over so well. <laughs> it was very unpopular. Uh, straight up, like, big name players like Ryan Reynolds uh, basically gave a huge middle finger uh, to the leaders of the union. But uh, as the Screen Actors Guild American Federation of Television and Radio Artists ongoing strike begins to enter the spooky season, the union's leadership has issued new Halloween-specific rules for its members to follow including the forbidding of any costumes inspired by struck content. The guild's leadership announced their new grief, uh, sorry, their new guidance 
on how to celebrate Halloween this year while, al <laughs> while also staying in solidarity with the TV slash theatrical slash streaming strike. Imagine not opening your mail for a day and getting this memo that you can't enjoy Halloween and <laughs> losing your entire livelihood because that's how unions work, right? Like just imagine this crap, the power they try to control <laughs> over people. So, <laughs> so, <laughs> so per the one sheet, sag after introduced three new rules for the upcoming holiday. Those being choose costumes inspired by generalized characters and figures. So like when you go to the Halloween store and it doesn't say Deadpool, it says red ninja with black <laughs> accents. You're no, no, to wear no, that. Red, red immortal ninja. <laughs> <laughs> When it doesn't it's say like, Walt White. No, no, it's gonna, it'd be like Chibichanga vendor. <laughs> instead of instead of Walter White, it says disheveled man in his underwear. <laughs> 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 anyway, so yeah, they said um, choose costumes inspired by generalized characters and figures. Ghost, zombie, be a spider. <laughs> Don't post photos of costumes inspired by short content to social media. And dress up as characters from non-struck content, like an anim, pardon, like an animated TV show. That's good. In conclusion to their uh, to their announcement, the guild asserted, "quote Let's use our collective power to send a loud and clear message to our struck employers that we will not promote their content without a fair contract." <laughs> Considering, as I stated. The Halloween store rips off literally every single one of these companies. I don't think you're going to hit them in the pocketbook by not wearing a costume. <laughs> anyway, notably, these new guidelines would keep many of the year's most popular costumes, including anything related to Wednesday, Barbie, and even the live action One Piece, out of the reach of striking actors. Oh, shit, he's wearing a straw hat. Get him. You know, like, fucking... <laughs> Further, it would also bar them from dressing up as a number of pop culture mainstays, including any of the Marvel Cinematic Universe's many characters or numerous horror icons like Michael Myers, Jason Voorhees, or Freddy Krueger. Unsurprisingly, rather than, rather than applause, SAG-AFTRA's announcement was met with ridicule from a number of personalities associated with the union. Is this a joke? Asked Kingdom Hearts voice actress Mandy Moore. That's an interesting way to <laughs> call it. This can't be the same Mandy yeah, Moore. Yeah, I've, uh, I, I've known Mandy Moore for quite a few more things. She was in Kingdom Hearts, though, if I remember correctly. But, like, that is, like, bottom of the barrel. Like, she's been right? other. <laughs> she says, come on, SAG-AFTRA. This is what's important. We're asking you to negotiate in good faith on our behalf. Uh, so many folks across every aspect of this industry have been sacrificing mightily for months. Get back to the table and get a fair deal so everyone can get back to work. Please and thank you. Likewise, former SAG president Melissa Gilbert, who served in the role from, uh, from 2001 to 2005, also took to her own Instagram to criticize, quote, this is what you guys came up with? Literally no one cares what anyone wears for Halloween. <laughs> Anyway, sharing an image of the Hollywood Reporter's coverage of the Halloween rules as initially posted by Fear the Walking Dead star Kevin Zegers, Gilbert further mocked, quote, I mean, do you really think this kind of infantile stuff is going to end the strike? We look like a joke. <laughs> Please yeah. tell me you're going to make this rule go away. I hate to admit it, but you've always looked like a joke. <laughs> this is just the punchline. <laughs> And go negotiate for the love of God. People are suffering mightily. <laughs> but they oh got the same talking God. points. <laughs> this is what you have to say. Come on, guys. <laughs> anyway, so uh, coding his frustrations with the signature band of levity, Deadpool star, th uh, Deadpool three star Ryan Reynolds declared, "I look forward to screaming scab at my eight year old all night. She's not in the union, but she needs to learn." <laughs> All right. So anyway, I thought that was pretty fucking funny. Continuing from here, 
Hollywood reporter, uh, Hollywood is reportedly blacklisting individuals posting pro Palestine messages on social media. The Jews are doing a very poor job convincing me they don't rule the institutions. <laughs> now, I, I find it very funny though, um, because also Tara Strong claims she was fired from Boxtown for being Jewish. Studio Clarify's decision was made over her comments regarding Israel-Hamas conflict. Now, you can't blame them, honestly, because it's become very difficult to navigate this conflict. I saw this on Twitter. Please keep the yoga studios in your prayers. They are very confused about what's going on. It's a series of three emails. They're in reverse order here. Aid for Gaza children donation-based class. Correction. Aid for Israeli children donation-based class. Donation class canceled. <laughs> <laughs> On further review, we will not send our money to children. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's find out what happened to uh, Tara Strong here. So it's a YouTube show. It's a little different than Hollywood, obviously, right? Uh, Tara Strong has been fired from her role as Bill the Orphan in the Bandit Mill animation-produced animated series Boxtown, following a series of tweets in which the voice actress weighed in on the ongoing armed conflict between Israel and the Palestinian military, militant group Hamas. Further, Strong claimed to have not been informed about the decision and went on to accuse the studio of anti-Semitism, proposing that she was fired for being Jewish. How did you get hired then? <laughs> like, <laughs> That's a reach know, there. I didn't know beforehand. It wasn't on her ID badge. <laughs> she didn't walk in with the star, David. <laughs> Armband. <laughs> <laughs> it's in solidarity. Why? <laughs> All right. So um, she was fired. She claims she was fired for being Jewish. The voice actress uh, reaction was prompted by a post shared by the official Boxdown account on Twitter which revealed that the character she was playing on the show was being recast. Hello, all. Just wanted to offer a quick update on Boxtown, preface the statement. Quote, we'll be recasting the role of Bill, previously played by Tara Strong. They go out of their way to call her out. <laughs> we'll have more info soon on open auditions. Thanks for y'all's understanding as we, as we reorient and figure out the next steps. Question. Was it necessary to tweet this out? <laughs> <laughs> no. And I find it bizarre, too, by the way. like You virtue have, signaled too close to the sun. <laughs> yeah, but they have, like, open auditions. It's like, but you got Tara Strong, who's, like, worked for, like, Disney and shit. Like, how... Uh, yeah, why she's like um, open auditions. Like I don't understand. I think her. I think they have a photo of her. Yeah, like Timmy Turner, Bubbles. Yeah, she's been in like Rocky. Apparently, everything. she's been in everything. Yeah. Oh, hey, welcome, How Kingstow. In the world, do you like? Hey, man. The, their tweet sounded like, "Yeah, we'll be holding open auditions for some rando to take her place." It's like <laughs> I don't think. You could... Like if you could I mean, it's Tara Strong, you're not gonna pay some rando to do the voice. Boxtown, I gotta tell you, I could save you what ton of money with this thing called ai right <laughs> i think i honestly i honestly believe this was the excuse to get rid of her it had nothing to do with that i think they just they had buyer's remorse because they didn't want their cartoon to basically you know go under because that happens sometimes when you hire certain people the budget has to go somewhere right mm -hmm. And then you basically don't have a cartoon anymore because you have to pay Tara Strong or some big uh, voice actor like Phil Lamar or Billy West or whatever, Greg mm -hmm. Delilo. And you don't have we, a cartoon. Well, um, I encourage all employers of Gray Delisle to also look into this thing called AI. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So um, – I don't have a lot of desk space and I have too many open drinks. <laughs> All right. Um, I'm going to, yes, that's a lot of tabs. Welcome to the show. <laughs> uh, currently, I am looking at uh, a total of 281 open tabs. I don't know if you can see that. Um, anyway, uh, yeah, screw the strikes. <laughs> it never gets old. <laughs> Your owner hates you. This must be in reference to uh, 
um, the Hollywood okay. elites. Uh, no, oh no, no, he means uh, yes. <laughs> you know why he hates you? It's because you're not jeans and or leather. <laughs> you're clearly slacks. <laughs> <laughs> oh hello yeah you want to give me a promotion that's awesome uh i won't uh welcome you to fuck right off <laughs> <laughs> i tried going to twitch and i can't figure out how to oh, start up like the moderator functions i don't know i don't think you did it right um, i was gonna damn. try and delete that comment <laughs> Uh, well, unfortunately, I've immortalized it in the stream. <laughs> Good job, yes. <laughs> Mars Leonardo says uh, three kecks, I'm guessing. <laughs> Mandy Moore wasn't even in any of the Kingdom Hearts games besides the first one. Damn. Uh, shows who's in charge. If Kanye, if Kanye would have went after the juice today, he would have gotten praised. <laughs> 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 somehow, somehow I don't think so. <laughs> but that it would have been pretty, more funny though. Pretty, like, it would have been like the um like the protest like and for the the people who are protesting masks mm -hmm. and then like two weeks later the George Floyd protests happen and it's like Oh, well, Fuck those masks. protests are fine. Oh, yeah, my they favorite is when, like, the CDC came out and said, um, you have to shelter in place unless your uh, activism itch is going on, and then it's okay. And it's actually yeah. helping to stop COVID by protesting. <laughs> like, yeah. Wow. So, so if Kanye was doing that now, it, the, it would be like, well, anti Israel hate is great, except if you like Hitler. <laughs> you know? <laughs> <laughs> Pump the brakes there, Kanye. <laughs> Kasaibo says uh, Hamas is funded by the Islamic Republic of Iran. Those unfrozen $6 billion had to go somewhere. So my take on this, everybody's like, they're still tied up in sanctions. They're going to use them. And I was like, okay, look, project forward. The war has just started. <laughs> <laughs> this isn't for the event that we watched unfold with the paragliders. It's for the war. <laughs> let's see how that goes. <laughs> All right. So uh, let's see. Um, mustache I man. Right back. Oh. Uh, mustache man was the illegitimate child of Baron. Uh, no, pardon. Grandchild of Baron Rothschild. Uh, oh, hey, Tara Strong thing. Completely forgot about Yeah, I know, right? Uh, if you'd like the show to be weekly, please donate. <laughs> All right. Oh, man, there's so many freaking comments. <laughs> uh, yep. Yeah, yeah. It's brave, but yes. Both. We will, we will be getting brave. to Wendy Lee. Don't worry. That's coming up very brave, soon. So sooner than you could have ever imagined, actually. Um, all right. Actress. So where was I on this actually? Um, yeah. So I, okay. So they didn't really need to tweet this. Uh, quote: Just found out on Twitter. This is what happens when you help fans get shows made. I guess all oh, fired for being Jewish. Glad I helped you get your Kickstarter money. Not at all. Like like seriously, the paycheck must have been good for her to be this bent out of shape over it probably <laughs> maybe they like i said they probably gave her a certain amount of money that was going to go to the animation they took the bullet and that's not that's not like a stereotype on her being jewish <laughs> i would have said this about any actor <laughs> <laughs> we would have said them the bayonetta chick uh helena taylor yeah yeah helena so um, taylor it doesn't matter phil lamar billy west whoever Nolan North, Troy Baker, it doesn't matter. So Trump. she's she says, glad I helped you get your Kickstarter money. Please lose my email address and pray for my family in Israel and in Gaza. Hashtag pray for peace. <laughs> uh, a few days after the initial announcement, Bandit Mill Animation took to social media to release an official statement addressing the recasting of Strong, confirming that it was the voice actress post regarding the Hamas-Israel armed conflict that prompted the decision to part ways with her. Quote, As some of you may have heard, Tara Strong is no longer involved with Boxtown or Bandit Mill Animation and will no longer be voicing the character of Bill the Orphan. 
the statement uh, oh, <laughs> the statement declared um <laughs> Continuing, uh, this decision was due to a trend among Terra's recent online activity, including posts that promote controversial messages regarding the peoples of Palestine currently being affected by the ongoing Israel-Palestine crisis. It continued, we believe that our public platform gives us a duty to be careful when it comes to hateful messages and misinformation online. This extends to our cast and crew. Oh, fuck. <laughs> I got to pick up a co-worker tomorrow. <laughs> Shit. I might as well stay up all night. <laughs> oh, fuck. <laughs> sure. Allow me to just set my alarm <laughs> for an hour earlier. Fuck. All right, cool. I guess that's going to work. All right. Uh, so they continue to say, our hearts are with the Palestinian and Israeli children and families being affected by the ongoing conflict. People should be able to live freely without being threatened by a constant abuse and terror. We are hoping for the best. Not me. Hoping for the worst. Not really. <laughs> no, just kidding. World War III. It's a joke, you two. It's a no. Joke. It's a joke. It's a joke. As pointed out by the studio, Strong had been, uh, had been vocally expressing her disdain for the armed conflict that had been unfolding since Hamas conducted a surprise attack... <laughs> There's something about the way that's phrased. It's an accurate description, but it just sounds so playful. Surprise, sneak attack. You know, like. I, it's just so weird, you know, because I don't know. It's just the fact that a lot of certain individuals in that entertainment industry, they, they're okay with it when it's the other way around, you know, mm -hmm. when it's like canceling and firing people and, when it happens. Oh, they're definitely eating each other over this. Well, like, I'm saying it's, it's cannibalism at this point. It literally, they're they they don't have enough enemies, so they become each other as enemies. They uh, literally fight uh, against each other. Yeah, I think they have enough enemies clearly, but uh, uh, I think we've just finally hit a, a like the critical point where it's like. Uh, this this topic is so divisive that it's the left like and the far left can't really come together on what the the correct like yes. group think message the the, per, the progressive stack has hit a snag because the jews previously were the reigning king of most oppressed due to the holocaust but mm. Shortly after the Holocaust, they colonized Palestine. So it's just yeah. they're the, they're short circuiting their um, their understanding of who the bad guy is, uh, and so they seem to be. Uh, it's like it's the first time um, in Pokemon, like Charmander hurt himself in confusion. Like that's <laughs> happening. I'm seeing it live. I used to make fun of that shit. I am watching it occur. <laughs> Anyway, yeah, so uh, as pointed out by the studio, Strong has been vocally expressing her uh, disdain for the armed conflict that has been unfolding since Hamas conducted a sneak attack, I like mine better, in southern uh, Israel last week and condemning the actions of the terror group on social media. Quote, if you are pro-suffering, rape, murder of any innocent people, today I will block you. Jesus, these people. But that Nobody will only cause that. more suffering. No, I'm pro suffering. Don't block me. Like, come on. <laughs> like, Nobody has agreed to. That. I will. I will block you. You pro suffering people. You're on notice. <laughs> anyway, yeah, I'm, so um, I'm surprised that she has family over there. Honestly, I I thought you know because I don't want to assume that everybody over there has kin like from Europe or. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> Can somebody it's... crank his mic or what? It's at a hundred percent. I need you to yell, Kingston. <laughs> if I yell, oh, don't that's get mad at me for screaming you sound great. in your ears. You sound I don't want you now. to get deaf. No, you sound, no, you sound perfect. Normally. You sound perfect volume now. It's so weird. You just got to anyway, do the Augie when you're like this and you're right up in oh, the mic. <laughs> well, I don't want to suck my again. microphone off, but... 
Please all right, so anyway, I, I, you just gotta do what you gotta do. I mean, so she says we should all be <laughs> no, but I'm just saying, I'm surprised that, that you know, you want to make it in this business, it's going to require deep throating some microphones, my friend. <laughs> oh no, are you making a casting couch joke? Oh, so she man. says we should all be praying for peace to end all wars near and far, to end the suffering of all innocent civilians everywhere, regardless of political affiliation. Another post condemning the attacks carried out by Hamas was shared just a few hours later by Strong, who declared, quote, the fact that anyone celebrates innocent lives lost is beyond disturbing. It just I just feel like I'm hearing I, a robot talk, you know, like yeah. these are all the most obvious takes. You know what I mean? Yeah, but I'm just saying and, if, just if think it that was somebody found these uh, like problematic. If it was in reverse, <laughs> right? No, you don't understand. Lady Phoenix, the oppression Olympics have not gone insane in the world. They just brought in the oppression Paralympics as well. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> that isn't a paragliding reference. No. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, that These jokes are not uh, intentional, <laughs> but they are pretty funny. <laughs> um, I'm, 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 they're I'm not intended though. to give out suffering Tara strong no. don't block i didn't know Tara Tara Str i'm pretty sure Tara strong's people. already blocked me <laughs> uh, do you think you think she has an autobot or, or like I one of those watch yes out of decepticon <laughs> optimus, out <laughs> optimus prime out there star scream all right we have a very packed show so shut the fuck up so i can finish this and we can get into windy lee so she says, like, what kind of species are we? I'm so grateful I don't comprehend that mindset, she asserted. There's something very wrong with the terrifying amount of people on this platform and this planet. Hamas has successfully brainwashed the Western world to actually believe that terrorism can be justified. I, I would love to see you decry Antifa. <laughs> like, <laughs> you fucking bitch. <laughs> No, I actually, just full disclosure, I agree with everything she said at face value because she is giving the most tepid, um, middle-of-the-road take of, I don't want any children to die. No, really? <laughs> what, what are you, she, a human being? <laughs> like, she's geez. Basically, No, no, the problem, she's basically just declaring herself as pro-life. She... Like, she <laughs> She's putting, she's just putting herself out there like this, like beacon of uh, sanity. And it's like, you are like, literally you have a couple of people who are insane that you previously did not recognize were insane because they spouted the same Democrat talking points as you. But now they want you dead. And you're like, what, what, what did I do? We were previously on the same team. You know? <laughs> All right, so the world's gone crazy, uh, strong preface in another post, elaborating people arguing online about whether or not the mass raping, shooting, and kidnapping of innocent young women from around the world at, at a music festival is justified. <laughs> she continued, uh, could happen at any music festival, <clears throat> Las Vegas, <laughs> supporting terrorists empowers them, and that's globally terrifying. Now I can't go to the Taylor Swift concert, you dicks. That's the real reason I'm blocking you. Yeah. <laughs> For those who support the actions of Hamas, look, honey, I'll tell you, there are, there are some poopy pants reasons you may not want to go <laughs> to the Taylor Swift concert. No. <laughs> <laughs> For those who support the actions of... <laughs> For those who support the actions... <laughs> <laughs> it's just the theater. Oh, this inside joke is just too good. The uh, the actual concert safe. It's just yeah, that's <laughs> that's true. He went to the theater, the, the screening of it. So unfortunately, you can either go to the concert and get gunned down, or go to the theater and have to sit next to JT trying to push one out. <laughs> All right. So anyway. <laughs> For those who support oh, the actions of <laughs> uh, when they infiltrate your hometown on your soil, break into Jewish homes, raping, beheading innocent <laughs> babies, will you applaud them? Will you wave their flag while they slaughter Christians and Muslims who who don't believe their ideologies? Uh, Man, I'd love to see her um, interact with the Queers for Palestine group. <laughs> 
Uh, Strong has since remained somewhat quiet on the ongoing armed conflict. With her last post regarding the Hamas, uh, they spelled it wrong, the Hamas-Israel war, uh, revealing that she has made contributions uh, towards the victims of both Gaza and Israel. Oh, I hope you're okay. I'm not. Heartbroken emoji. All news is heartbreaking, and the images are repeating in my mind, and I'm overwhelmed with sadness. <laughs> Touch grass. Just donating to innocents in Gaza and those suffering in Israel received some pep talk requests from Cameo and donating them all to Children of Peace. All right. Uh, so just full disclosure, uh, setting aside all of <laughs> all of that, uh, it's a fucked situation. It just acknowledging it real quick, setting aside all the banter and, and jokes. Yeah, it's fucked. We're all fucked collectively. This will be World War III. I've only been talking about it since like the fifth podcast, by the way. So here we are. <laughs> AC was right. Put one in the AC tip jar. <laughs> All right. So last podcast, we discussed Anaris Canones, who had tweeted, I'm the English voice of Yoichi and Bleach, Thousand Year Blood War, double exclamation point, cat emoji, ninja, em black ninja emoji. Well, they, they really are inclusive over there. <laughs> All right. So uh, we didn't have this before, but I'm going to play a brief Emphasis on brief, because <laughs> it got blocked worldwide when I uploaded the whole clip. Um, a very brief uh, segment from this, so you can hear her voice. From episode 22, I believe. You know what? Let me, let me double check that I actually started screen sharing that with audio, because I think I didn't. And uh, that would have been... Uh, Embarrassing. That would have been embarrassing. Here we go. It would have. It would have. All right, here we go. These are the distortions they've been creating, the Quincy's. Hmm? Here. That's it. Uh, we first start. Cringe. That's all you need. That's all you need. Um, These are the distortions. So I don't want to throw her straight under the bus, um, but it kind of sounds like she might have had a cold. I don't know. I don't know. It's, it's like if she had done more episodes, maybe she could have gotten a little better, but that was pretty bad. Now, as I told you guys, I was in, um, I was at an AI conference this last weekend uh, in Utah, and um I flew back on Saturday, last Saturday, and I landed, got picked up from the airport by my wife, and got some really crazy news sent to me by multiple people. Shout out to Little Rocks and Ronan Ja. And if I had been drinking, I'd have spit that shit out of my mouth with a spit take when I read this. Wendy Lee is back. So I'm going to play this clip and you can hear her actual voice in the show after that uh, travesty we just heard. They're invading the royal palace. That means they're after the Soul King. The Soul King? He's a godlike being that reigns over all the worlds. The Soul Society, the world of the living, and Waco Mundo. I've only heard stories of him, though. Her voice Night and day. Does, right? Her voice yes. greatly matches the character. It, it, yes. <laughs> you mean hot? <laughs> right. Instead yeah, of exactly. <laughs> All right. She went, she went from a six to a solid nine. <laughs> she went from like, sounding like a stoner, like she had just taken a <laughs> you know, good long puff of Kisuke's special stash. From... Oh, Kisuke Uehara also sounds awful in that other clip i didn't play uh the whole thing of oh man but he he died the voice actor yeah. so i guess i can't there is this thing i want to introduce you to viz it's called ai <laughs> <laughs> all right so anaris had this to say hey y'all the studio and client decided to go in a different direction so i am no longer voicing yoroichi and bleach thousand year blood war and my recordings will be replaced it meant a lot to take on such an iconic woman of color. 
I appreciate all the love. I'll still be voicing Hiyori. Oh, that's right. Yeah, she voices the only other black character in Bleach, Hiyori. Oh, wait. <laughs> oh, wait, no. She's voicing a I thought that's who that character was. No, yeah. No, she had to take up another character that another voice actress played because that voice actress is doing other shit that's significantly yeah. better than so laura character. bailey i think used to voice yes, Laura bailey yes. right and laura bailey now exclusively does video games because they pay way more <laughs> yeah yeah pretty much that's outside true. of like Unless a few roles that like, she's like attached to like fruit basket and like soul eater she or naruto she i think she came back naruto. for I think she came back for Fruits Basket just because Fruits Basket was one of her OG roles, like one of the yeah. original original, and it probably just means something to her. Yeah, like so it's probably a show she really liked um, also being Naruto a part of, and so it's union, it's unionized. Yeah, Naruto, yeah, because right? they do video yeah. games and stuff. So she wants to, and they're union FIFA. because is she Tamari? You know. No, she's Anko, she? and I Anko. think another oh. character. I don't remember. Uh, Anko was brunette Tamari. I see. <laughs> She's Naruto's mom. Oh yeah, she's oh, de- she's oh yeah, she's Kashina as well. She's Kashina yeah. and Anko. I haven't heard that character talk because the- uh, she's dead. <laughs> Wasn't she other characters too? Green I don't know. She's characters. probably she's probably like side uh, characters, like side, yeah, side characters. characters. She's probably anyway, a couple of characters behind, anyways. behind the scenes. All right, so um, from moving on from here, um, I was brought it was brought to my attention <laughs> when I got off the plane uh, that not only did Wendy Lee get her role back, to which again imaginary spit take uh because just success. <laughs> when does that happen is the thing <laughs> that's a bold fucking move right? here's, the, here's the question though is it possible that wendy lee already did her lines recorded right and then they just rejected the new voice actress and just basically recycled her clips without her coming back to redo it no do you th- no you don't um, think you that's possible that you weren't re- here um okay. last podcast um, but we played this clip. Okay. It's also 100% new stuff. It's it's not a bleach remake, I guess. Yeah, and that's still going. And I yep. have not been a big part of it yet. So I have a very small role, um, uh, Manoli, who showed up uh, early in the first few episodes. So I got to come in and do that. But I'm like, so no, she's when a did pastor. we get to Yodoichi? <laughs> that's the one I'm really waiting for. Um, so I got a little nervous about that, but the fans have been telling me, based on the manga, she has a very big part of the the final story arc. So I'm looking yes. forward to that. And I know nothing about it, so it'll all okay. be a surprise to me. Yeah, sounds like you might know. Yeah. <laughs> Can you yeah. So a Thousand Year Blood War is like completely new material. Yeah. It wasn't they, covered they, in the anime before. She clearly I, I has not recorded random. her lines for you. I know that. Random. Oh, okay. I'm, just, yeah, I'm, just saying, I'm saying, like, you know, like test dubs when they would record something. Um, and then they just go back and forth. You know what I mean? Let's find out together. So Michael Edwards here, definitely a real voice actor, um, says, so Wendy Lee finally responded to the Anaris Yorishi situation. And all she's doing is attacking industry people who are comforting Anaris after the recast. Still amazed how transparently awful so many voice actors have been this month. I don't know who the other ones he's referring to are. Uh, so so her, it's a, her replies, screenshot of them, uh, in reverse order here, like, Staff at Studiopolis made a simple casting mistake. Viz wants the iconic OG cast intact. Your friend still has roles and will be fine, I'm sure. Nothing whatsoever, but uh, I did establish the role years ago. Just maintain the iconic character, Kaylee. You're really disappointed, Xander? I see. Just following what Viz requested. Thought I too might have your support, Tiana. So, uh, yeah, these are her being awful, right? Flat out wrong. You deserve better and we all know it. Replying to Anaris Kononis. Wrong? For Viz to maintain the OG cast? Okay, Chris. I'm so sorry, Anaris Kanones. For what it's worth, you'll always be my Yoruichi, wishing this to be a blip in the sea of W's for you moving forward. Hmm. Sam. I see. Yeah, so um, One Ronan asked me. Like my Yoruichi forever. One yeah, so Ronan tagged me in this, said, breaking news, and I was like, fucking hype. <laughs> um, and I said, LOL. And how many VAs comforted Wendy Lee when she was unceremoniously replaced? Oh, thank you. None. So many people- Only her adoring fans like me. 
<laughs> right. <laughs> the face. Which, which, by the way, I, maybe in the future we can interview her and ask her that. You never know. Knock on wood. So he says, why is she adding more fuel to the fire? And I am said... This is this is my take on it. We're just establishing it here so we can kind of move on from this point. Is she adding fire? It seems to me that she's simply asking questions like, oh, really? You feel this way, right? Like to the people she's replying to. Is it adding fuel to the fire to simply clear your throat and make your presence known when someone starts shit talking you as though you aren't standing right there? As far as I'm concerned, that's all she's doing. And I applaud her for standing her ground and not letting them walk all over her. So seriously, we're about to look at what the statements that she was replying to were. And then them backtracking, like, whoa, I was just comforting my friend. Ooh. And I want you to remember, not a single one of them reached one. out to Wendy Lee and said, no. oh, I can't believe you didn't get I to come back so as your Uchi. Oh, or not to mention You're they didn't do say, great things, Wendy. Hey, not a single person did. Yeah, that's bullshit. They didn't say, "Hey, it's sorry that you lost your job, Wendy." But you could. They're find talking about like better. white privilege, like all this POC yeah. privilege. Like, come on. Yeah, and and I just gotta say, uh, I I can't help but remember this beautiful gem from Stephen J. Bloom. I have always said that the roles are not ours, but I have never said you can't take over a legacy role. I've done plenty. What I've also said is that if there is an audition for a role that someone else is currently voicing, do your due diligence. Ask why. Contact the person if you know them and talk to them if you can. Make sure that there is a good reason other than just corporate greed for the role being recast. Hmm. Yeah. Where is everybody else on that now? I mean, you got to come out here and say, whoa, leave Jennifer Hale alone. Helena Taylor's crazy for making a stink about losing the role in Bayonetta. Jennifer Hale's the OG and the most honorable among us. Come on, yep. guys. Wink, like, wink. seriously, these people, if they did not have double standards, they wouldn't have any standards. Or Vic getting recasted by John Young Bosch and... Well, well, that's a little different. I mean, you, you're going to have to elaborate because uh, it's a little confusing when Vic did get recast as Ikaku well, was... in Bleach and Johnny Young Bosch voices Ichigo in Bleach. I think you meant no, I'm, um, I'm saying to for Broly. Broly in the video yeah. game and probably <laughs> right. if they redub the movie. Which so I guess I do. OK, I do see the point you're trying to make because the the tweet I just read from Stephen J. Bloom is about Helena Taylor in the video game Bayonetta getting all butt hurt and then Jennifer Hale replacing her. So I guess, yeah, I, I see the, I see the jump you're making. It just was yeah, in the context of bleach threw me in the wrong, the wrong. I'm sorry. That should have That's all right. You're good. Life. You're good. I'm glad but we got to come saying like in general, like this is hypocrisy in like, totally like a very great hypocrisy. It's like, wait a minute. You didn't do that for the voice actors for uh, Bayonetta and you didn't do that for Vic. When yeah, this, when well, legacy Vic, characters being replaced. Everyone knew um, why Vic was yeah, getting but, replaced. But like, that's her friend. That you know, like Steve. That's her. That makes sense. Why he's like, you shouldn't do that to her. But it's like, but for Vic, he wouldn't. He wouldn't give a shit. You know what I mean? I'm just calling a spade a spade. Look, after well, the I, shit show that happened with Vic and how much the industry has changed in terms of how much fans despise so many of these voice actors because of how they handled it including faking a swatting and trying to throw Vic's fans under the bus and whatnot. I totally understand people distancing themselves from the whole Vic situation. I 100% get it. Like, even if you're on his side, it is toxic to outwardly show either st side at this point. Right. I, I totally understand. That's that's, that's <laughs> Wendy Lee is Steve Bloom's friend. And of course he's going to make a big deal about it. Right. I would too. Well, if that was my, friend. he wasn't talking about Wendy Lee. Uh, but so, anyways, Steve Bloom was talking about uh, Jennifer Hale the, and, and Helena Taylor, okay, the uh, oh, Bayonetta sorry. actress, right? Helena that Taylor. Was, Helena Taylor. Just, yep. just to, for, in, if you don't see it, it was from a year ago, right? Yeah. It, um, uh, yes. Let me. Uh, so, and October so him, of last year. <laughs> yeah, a year ago. <laughs> Literally a year ago. A year ago. Yep. So, so, um, 
him saying that about the Bayonetta actress who replaced someone else who was difficult, right? And he's kind of saying, well, like, you know, you shouldn't do that without asking or whatever. This thread is 100% to come out in defense of Jennifer Hale, but he needed to like do a bunch of gymnastics before explaining to people why they need to support Jennifer Hale, because he's previously said things that, that go in the face of the statement he's making in defense of Jennifer Hale. Yeah. So, but with Vic, it's different, right? With of course Vic, it's different. It, it was, everyone knew why he was getting replaced. It wasn't Because it question. happened so, so publicly. Yeah. So now it's just whether or not you're okay with replacing him. And it, it's not, a the, the, the issue with, uh, Jennifer Hale was uh, whether or not the studio was going around the back of the voice actor mm -hmm. to you know replace them, um, and and in this case that would be more akin to that, right? As opposed to and it's not a, like Vic is completely separate, is what I'm saying, right? Of course. So yeah. to make to make the analogy between the Bayonetta thing and uh, Yoruichi. Yeah, Makes and just sense. to be clear, I haven't seen Stephen J. Bloom say anything about the Yoruichi thing. I haven't looked, but I haven't seen him say anything. I'm just pointing out that previously this is the way that that this yeah. click acts, right? Where they will bend over backwards and change the rules and and make it up on the fly and then act like they've been consistent the whole time. Oh, right? 100. Now moving but on. From I, I just want to hold on. I just want to crystallize my sure. point. That the comparison to that. And Yoruichi is okay, but again, Vic, although it still was replacing a voice actor, uh, different thing. Yeah, yeah. different Not really, but... Well, okay. we'll have more time to talk about Vic later. Yeah, we'll talk about um, Xander Mobius. Let's get to Xander. Yeah, so um, so in in the reply, so the, the, the tweet I had just read about um, the studio and client deciding to go a different direction, and Anaris is no longer voicing Yoruichi, but she is going to be voicing Hiori replies to this news that she has been uh, wrongfully robbed of the role of her dreams, voicing a woman of color. Uh, Xander Moby says, I am so sorry. You were such, such a, a good, good fit, fit. And I'm oh, really disappointed to I'm see this. I'm so bummed. Now Wendy. you will see this post was deleted by the post author. So let me show you the archive. You're really disappointed, Xander? Well, Xander I, I see. see. As yeah. if to say, hello, I'm standing right here. You have a problem with me voicing the character that I popularized all those years ago when Bleach first got localized in the West? You got a problem with that? Like, she's defending herself and taking a, a strong stance to say, like, hey, fuck you, Pastor, Pastor Lee over here. She's very kind, though. She doesn't use the same language that I use. She says, hey, Xander, go fuck yourself, yeah. right? <laughs> Reverend Wendy Lee. So then he replied, this is the next day. He replied, Wendy, me being sad because an actor got cast, announced, then had to deal with a very public recast doesn't mean I hold any ill will towards you. Uh -huh, I think the yeah. whole thing got way more complicated and toxic than it needed to. To which right. she replied, recasting is part of the biz. It happens. It was a scheduling mistake. But I, interesting like to, to see how quickly more, my colleagues are ready to see me off. Yeah, I'd actually so, like to talk about that more, actually, about the it was uh, a scheduling mistake. It was a scheduling mistake. Yeah, I think she's being nice. I don't think it was a scheduling mistake. I don't, honestly, I don't think, I think Wendy Lee was told to say that because we go back to Anaris's tweet. Mm -hmm. She said that the, the, the company wanted to take it, the role, in a different direction. Like it was completely in the original direction. Yeah, it was it's like, actually it's actually that they wanted to keep going, believe it or not, in the same direction. You were the different direction, Anaris. Yeah. Like I honestly think that this whole thing was intentional. I think she's being overly polite with the oh, it was a scheduling. No, no. And she like, probably could get fired. So we'll have we'll have a chance to look at the statement from Studiopolis. Um, my theory here, again, tinfoil hat. All right, I don't know, just my theory. Um, I think Viz wanted to use as much of the original cast as possible. They can't use Jameson Price because he stepped down. 
Yeah. Which he yeah, refused to continue voicing the which, character. Which, by the way, I'd like to just say that that was probably like not him stepping into the booth and having a sudden realization. That was like a phone call or an email. And then he was like, sure. Yeah, totally. A new actor. I don't know. Him. Could be That's... a woke, a woke uh, virtue signaling uh, type. I don't know. I don't follow him. I, I don't even watch Bleach. Um, I'm very much uh, only upset about this from the angle of people have lost their entire you know, decorum on the subject regarding their coworker, you know? Yeah. So I agree. I, and I said that last podcast too. I think that the, uh, the other actor was, it seems like it was like he internalized him getting told you're not being the new character as opposed to voluntarily stepping down. I don't know. Could have, could have been either way, but the point is um, he actually stepped away. Right. Um, my, this is again, my theory on it is that Viz wanted to use the original cast that was available. They can't use Kisuke Uehara because he died. They can't use Jameson Price because he stepped down. Um, David Lodge had stepped down previously. They already had a replacement for uh, Kenpachi, right? So of course they're going to use him, right? Um, Vic was toxic for them to approach, right? Because all of that nonsense. Um, and then I think Studiopolis, the dubbing studio, who was in charge of casting any new characters, I would bet they cast Anaris as a way of putting a person of color in the role. And then Viz found out later, whoa, whoa, what's going on here? What happened to our OG cast? Why isn't Wendy voicing this character? Like she's a fan favorite, right? Uh, that's my theory as to what's going on. We will read Anime News Network's article that has the statements from Studiopolis in a moment. Uh, but let's look at more of the uh, statements that Wendy was replying to. Um, so uh, Faye Mata, whoever that is, says, oh, wow. wow, I have many thoughts, but power and the utmost respect for you for your class. It's clear to me this has nothing to do with your talent. I mean, did you hear the clip we played again the podcast? <laughs> uh, looking forward to your next killer role, uh, to which Wendy Lee says, nothing whatsoever. Again, this, that is in reference to this has, this has nothing to do with your talent. Wendy says, nothing whatsoever. Yeah, like it's not about your talent. But uh, did I did establish the role years ago. Like, hello, I'm right here. Stop talking about me like I don't exist. Like, these people are effectively shunning her, right? Uh, so Kaylee Mills, she deleted this tweet. We've got the archive here. That's wild. You sounded fantastic as her, stretching to be really nice. And I'm sorry you're going through this. Just maintaining the iconic character, Kaylee. That is not a slight at you. God, it's making it about you. Yeah, Jesus, Wendy. Oh, <clears throat> it's just the choice to recast and then renege after the fact, regardless of the reason. It was a really uncool thing to do to Anaris. Again, did you reach out to Wendy Lee and say, "I'm so sorry you didn't get to continue being the no. character that you loved so much that just before." Her, her uh, appearance in Thousand Year Blood War, you were on YouTube in an interview saying, I can't wait to get to reprise this role. I am so excited. Fans are telling me because they've read the manga that she comes back and she has a big role. I don't know anything about it. I'm so fucking excited. Like, seriously, not a single person came out to support her except for the fans. And I will remind everyone in this industry, you work for us. This industry does not exist without us. You can pretend you're an activist. You can pretend you're doing it for some moral superior thing. But without our money and our eyeballs, our attention, you don't exist. You can't have my eyeballs. So... She says, that's not a slight at you. It was just a really uncool thing to do to Neris. No? And what position does that put me in? This is the biz. We all get recast at some point. In this case, it was mistakenly done by the person scheduling. 
I'm truly, honestly, just trying to show support for someone who was hurt. She's a fucking grown-ass woman. <laughs> but I'll try to be more quiet in the future. I'm sorry if what I said came as an attack. I'll remind you, she's the one who deleted the tweet, right? So, sorry, let me rephrase that. I'll remind you, I had to read it through an archive because she deleted it. So, if she's being genuine, like, if she's not being disingenuous here, you know, she then deleted she's deleted it saying, I'm sorry if I hurt you, I'm going to go delete it, right? I don't know. Read that as you will. Um, honestly, just trying to show support for someone who was hurt, but I'll try to be more quiet in the future. I'm sorry if what I said came across as an attack. You're both very talented actors who don't deserve public discourse. You don't deserve public discourse. <laughs> <laughs> it says <laughs> you don't have rights. <laughs> it says you did who didn't deserve. I think she means didn't deserve this scandal, but the way she said it, you don't deserve the public discord. <laughs> Hurt by a scheduling error? It's the biz. Mistakes happen. Thought after all these years, I might have your support too. Again, these people poo-poo poo on Wendy. Yeah. Like these people needed this. They like, need to get slapped up. Uh, she's uh, so the back she's just as way. tired of this as we are. Like she's just like, yeah. fuck all of you. And, You're my colleagues. And, what the fuck? And, and I just also kind of want to point out the number of pronouns in the bios of all of these uh, people commenting. I guess she's the first one here. So they, she. Oh, they got, they got the alpha. I don't, let me understand. Hold on. If you're a they, she, but typically a woman would be a she, her, does that mean where you would use her, you now have to say she? Don't try like, to make sense. Like, go of I'm she. Explode. I don't. Because otherwise you'd be she, they, right? Like, let go of they. That, that, no, that would be she, them. Explode. Just stop I don't, trying uh, to make sense of it. Anyway. Um, uh, Tiana Camacho says, I'm so sorry to uh, Anaris. Just following what Viz requested. Thought I too might have your support, Tiana. Like imagine, imagine being in Wendy's shoes, being one of the people, like this industry that all of these people are a part of exists in no small part because of Wendy Lee. Yeah. Because of the trailblazing she did, all the work she did, the iconic characters she voiced, fucking Faye Valentine, right? Um, Black Rose or from uh, uh, Dot Hack. Um, I mean, just endless. Yeah. Uh, and Harvey, Susan, right. Endless list of like the defining characters or defining shows, like being, being a part of it, being a, a casting director uh, and all that. And, and literally having that role in so many of these shows that were a huge success, right? She is, she is not a small insignificant reason that the industry is as big as it is today. Like they owe her so fucking much. It's like, it's like, um, it's like, I mean, it's essentially, it's exactly what's happening where all the like statues of the founding fathers are getting, you know, defaced. You know what I mean? Um, mm -hmm. like all the people for which you have freedom today because of them are shit on. Right. Like Just the reason you have a career shit on, you know, Wendy, with all due respect, me offering condolences to someone like the, listen to the gaslighting me offering condolences to someone who was very publicly recast. Isn't the slight at you. God who is also very publicly recast. Seriously. Anaris is a friend and a colleague. And I figured this was a case of you not returning to the role after it being offered back to you. What was that thing <laughs> Stephen J. Bloom said? Um, reach out to the person. You know, like, you guys couldn't even send her, like, a congratulations on giving up the role for uh, repenting for your whiteness tweet. Like, Jesus. I didn't think, I, I think they didn't want her to notice. <laughs> yeah. Like quick, quick, quick! Before they're like, "Oh back. fuck, like, she has a Twitter!" Oh no! Delete, delete, delete. We almost got away with it. 
<laughs> Anyways, she, said, <laughs> she also says, um, I figured this was you deciding to step away as many other actors have, like my my favorite manly, sexy voice actor, Jameson Price, <laughs> to give space to an actor of color to take on the role. I, I thought you were, I thought you were woke, Wendy. Oh, aren't you woke with us? <laughs> Just to give space to an actor of color to take the role? And I highly recommend you write, read this thread I created to educate folks about what actors of color face in the industry. Welcome back. <laughs> Close it harder. No. Close it harder. Close harder. it harder. Close it harder. Harder, even harder. <laughs> dog's head was the dog's head was sticking in the doorway. <laughs> <laughs> I kill it. <laughs> anyway, so um, yeah, so she's like. I suggest that you read this thing that I, a person of Hispanic heritage, wrote about why white people are the devil in the voice acting industry and should not have any roles except for the ones we, people of color, do not want. That's. Am I reading too much into it? Is that kind of how it sounds no, a little bit? No, mm. Right, that's, no. it's just like, I don't know if you realize that's how you sound, Tiana, but that's how you sound. <laughs> All right, so moving on from here. Uh, Kellen Goff said, I'm so sorry. A, for what it's worth. Oh, A is an heiress. Okay. I'm so sorry, A. I couldn't even remember how your name is spelled. I think there's an I in there, so I'll just call you A. Uh, for what it's worth, you'll always be my <laughs> Yoichi. Wishing this to be a blip in the sea of W's for you moving forward. She wasn't even the voice for like five seconds. Okay, maybe You already read that like one, by the way. I know. Anyway. She said, hmm, I see. <laughs> Flat out wrong. You deserve better. And we all know it's wrong for them to give it to Wendy Lee. Right. Wrong? <laughs> okay, Chris. All right. So uh, uh, Jenny Yoko Bori said, I love you and you're a goddamn shining star. And then uh, guess you'd, all, you'd be all for replacing this role too? This is sincerely just me reminding my friend of my love for her. When she's going through a difficult time, the gaslighting. Oh, egad, Wendy. I am merely comforting a comrade in need. You know, like, <laughs> <laughs> I didn't have any ulterior motives when posting this, only to remind her of her worth. I understand you're distressed, but I hope you're able to rediscover your peace. Again, I love you, and you're a goddamn shining star. What does that make, Wendy Lee? <laughs> like, right, yeah. It's like, oh, thanks. Thanks for snuffing out my star, Jenny. Yeah. Damon Mills, so oh, sorry, even. friend. That This is her reply to Damon Mills. Staff at Studiopolis made a simple casting mistake. Viz wants the iconic OG cast in tech, except for Vic. Uh, your friend still has roles and will be fine, I'm sure. Like, seriously. Right, yeah. It's not enough to play has... Hiori. <laughs> yeah, she has Hiori. She has other roles aside from Bleach, too. It's like she'll get yeah, she, 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 she says, Hiyori. fuck Hiori. Let Wendy Lee be Hiori. I want to be that strong whammon of color. That has more that has more significance in the <laughs> who, by the way, is a Shinigami and right. not probably at black. <laughs> um but right. so before you go on, just yep. noting that. That uh, Studiopolis uh, mention there is uh -huh. not the actual Studiopolis account. Yes, it was a mistake. Uh, yes, she... I know you know. I'm saying it for the video, Ooh. Reese. <sighs> Sorry. I guess I didn't drink enough of that G Fuel, so I couldn't pour the other drink in. <laughs> okay. So <laughs> I'm just going to not let my wife know some of it spilled on the floor. <laughs> Blame it, blame it on the dog. <laughs> it was the dog. You closed the door. Oh, he's right there. <laughs> All, right. All right. So Anaris Canonas is no longer voicing Yoichi and Bleach down near Blood War. Uh, original dub voice actor Wendy Lee replaces Canonas to reprise her role. Voice actress um, Anaris Canonas revealed on Twitter on Saturday that she will no longer be voicing Yoruichi, pictured right, in Bleach Thousand Year Blood War anime. And just to be clear, if the roles were reversed and Wendy Lee was a black woman who voiced a white character and Anaris was a white woman who got cast to be her, I would still be advocating for Wendy Lee. Yeah. Right? 
like just so we're hundred percent clear here, it has nothing to do with the race, right? It has to do with the legacy cast and the thing that made Viz the money in the first place. Consistency the thing that too. we became fans metaphorically, cause I didn't really yeah. watch bleach, but the thing that made people fans of the show is the thing that I will always advocate maintaining. Just like when freaking Katrina Leonidakis decided to put um, Big Brother instead of Nini in the uh, Higurashi um, translation. You know, like obviously we are always going to want them to um, pay respect to the thing that made us fans in the first place. Anyway, um, voice actress revealed she's not going to voice her anymore. The recordings for the character in the anime thus far will be replaced because the studio and client decided to go in a different direction. She is going to continue to voice the character Hiyori. Wendy Lee, the voice of Yoruichi in the original Bleach anime, revealed that she is returning to the role of Bleach uh, for Bleach Thousand Year Blood War Part 3, The Conflict. So Studiopolis provided this. This is actually an update to the article. Um, they said, quote, We would like to address the unfortunate circumstances that led to the casting error around the character Yoruichi Shihoin uh, in Bleach, Thousand Year Blood War, episode 22. It was always Studiopolis's intent to keep as many of the established cast members as possible right. from the original Bleach anime. Mm -hmm. There was a misunderstanding that Yoruichi Shihoin was part of the list of the original cast members who were unavailable to participate in Bleach, Thousand Year Blood War. In error, right. our casting coordinator offered Anaris Kanon as the role. By the time this error came to our attention... Where the fuck were you? Uh, it was too late to correct before episode 22 was released. So did episode 22 come out before Anera said, I'm the voice now, right? I don't know. I want to say yes, but maybe not. Maybe she did it after the fact. But I don't know. That mic was still hot from Wendy when she's like, yeah, I'm the new voice. And like she had it up on her yeah. Twitter thing and stuff. Yeah. I'm not buying it. Yeah, me, me neither. We would like to take this opportunity to apologize once again and express how much we appreciate their talents and enjoy working with Anaris and Wendy, who will both continue to add their voice work to Bleach Thousand Year Blood War with Wendy as Yoruichi Shihoin and Anaris as Hiyori Sarugaki. I mean, I would have loved Laura Bailey to return. Just saying. Yeah. But I understand in that case. Lee, known for Faye Valentine, Cow Bebop, among others, implied in several posts in Kanona's tweet the following day that it was a scheduling error that led to Kanona's re, uh, casting as Yoruichi. Those replies were made in response to other voice actors who had replied to Kanona's with words of sympathy. Lee also implied on Twitter in a now deleted post that it was Viz Media's request to have her come back for the role in the anime's third part. Deleted. Lee posted an apology on Monday on Twitter, this time to Kanona's original tweet from October 7th, announcing her casting as Yoruichi. Right? We'll look at that in a second. Uh, actually, we'll look at it right now. Because <laughs> I, um, I think we're just going to rehash if we don't. So she said, wishing Anaris the very best. Again, this is in response to her original announcement tweet. Wishing Anaris the very best. I reached out and apologized. Mistakenly, I assumed my colleagues knew I originated the role and felt unsupported by the disappointment expressed in their comments um, re the cast change. Apologies and heartfelt well wishes to Anaris. Welcome to the cast. With a gun to her head. Is that good, sir? Did I type right? <laughs> <tweet? laughs> yeah. Right. So Anaris then says, thank you all so very, very much. I'm surprised and humbled by your wokeness. Now, by the outpour of love and support, I'm terrible at taking compliments, but I've seen as much as I could, and I'm incredibly thankful. No, 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 no. You're terrible at taking criticism. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I was going to say, um, that means you can watch this podcast in its entirety because we aren't going to compliment you. <laughs> in fact... Uh, well, okay, I'll, I'll save it for now. But there's a uh, there's a very glaring uh, issue uh, I'll, I'll bring up in a second. Uh, when I was when I was cast as Yoruichi earlier this year, I knew I had to mentally prepare myself for backlash. As you know, uh -huh. I am a woman of color. Uh -huh. 
Uh-huh. I was excited as someone who grew up watching Bleach and excited uh-huh. for the people of color community who had who had seen themselves in her, the Shinigami who transforms into a cat. You know, <laughs> I was determined to do my best. <laughs> I almost didn't announce. I didn't want to invite the negative attention, uh-huh. but I knew it was a big deal, and I did it anyways. <laughs> <laughs> I did my very best to remind m- myself where some of it was coming from and focused on all the love. And there was so much. Again, thank you. A few days later, I received a phone call informing me that they would like to get the role to Wendy Lee. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was upset <laughs> most of all most of all for the fans don't be upset for me honey <laughs> for the fans that were excited about the recast those aren't fans all, yeah okay. those are called virtue signalers <laughs> it was a bizarre situation it wasn't my first time being recast but definitely the strangest circumstances Right. So I, maybe now is a good time uh, to what point you out. Well, no, I'll save this. I'll save it. We'll save it. <laughs> um, I don't know. Um, is it mean to say I think it was a good choice? <laughs> In what, no. I, I know I brought this up before, but her and her voicing in Shadow's House. Uh-huh. And she's the white, the, the mm-hmm. uh, Emilico, and yeah. Emmy Lowe is um, Kate, the shadow. Like, yeah, why didn't you? Was, why, why, <laughs> why didn't you have for Kate to be that person? <laughs> <laughs> you want to be Where the death think? god, but not the shadow form of the little blonde girl? <laughs> right. All right. At Wendy Lee, I recognize and appreciate you've reached out privately to apologize for how your replies made the situation blow up. I would like to point out, her replies did not make the situation blow up. The people going, how dare you? How dare you, Wendy Lee? That's what made it blow up. Wendy Lee had every right to clear her throat in the back of the room and say, "Uh, maybe you didn't notice, but I'm standing right here, fuckface. Again, she's a pastor. She probably didn't use those words. (laughs) (laughs) But (laughs) But this started the moment I made my casting announcement. I understand where you're coming from, but your words were unkind towards my peers. She's so indignant. Again, I'm going to... Another scenario. Right. It's the entitlement, right? She's so entitled to this, right? I want to point... Another scenario here. Let's say, let's just say that Wendy Lee was black and Anaris got recast to play her. And then the studio said, whoa, shit, we want, actually, we wanted Wendy Lee, black Wendy Lee. Do you think that all the people would be like, oh, nope. that's, you're the one in my book. You're your Ouija for me, Anaris. <clears throat> really? Nope. No, come on. Like, this is clearly a race thing for you. Yeah. You know, and and you are determined to make it a race thing for everybody else when it's not. But your words were so unkind toward my peers, her peers as well. (laughs) Yeah. Her peers that said nothing. That said nothing. Never apologize to these people. Never. Yeah. They just take it and they're like, oh, like, (laughs) fuck you anyway. Like, I, I just keep thinking of Wendy Lee, like, messeth around, findeth about, z- thus saith the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> the only ones that deserve an apology is Kaylee Mills, Xander Mobus, Tiana Camacho, David Mills, Faye Mata, Jenny Yokobori, and Kellen Goff, and whoever this is that I don't... Oh, yeah, that was the last guy. I did I did look at this. I just, uh, I'm sorry. Name. And yeah. actually, we don't apologize to Kid Diddlers. So, they uh, didn't deserve <laughs> it. Yeah. If anybody o- is owed an apology for me, it's probably Damon Mills, but I refuse. <laughs> <laughs> that tweet reminds me of uh, someone. I can't put my finger on it, though. Oh, is, uh, is it a person who um, uh, has asked for help and how to poop his pants in public? No. <laughs> no. 
<laughs> I haven't responded to Wendy privately as I have no energy or interest. Abdo, right, oh. but she'll make this. Oh, <laughs> what? What? Hold on. His name does sound a little. Uh, I mean, he's not. He's not black. <laughs> but, <laughs> but maybe he's just on the edge <laughs> of that Middle Eastern range. He's just on the edge of the Middle Eastern spectrum. Just saying, uh, I've probably heard every one of these voice actors, including Anaris, voice a character and loved them as that character. Okay? Mm -hmm. Just saying. Yeah. Like, I, I'm not suggesting that they are not talented. Damon Mills, for everything that he has done against Duncan, is amazing as Frieza coming back to yeah, take like, over for to the fact, like I can't tell the difference hardly I, between him and to the, to the point where I'm pretty sure most of Dragon Ball super is actually Damon Mills and not Chris Ayers. That was a, a speculation going around. Some insiders were saying that he voiced him for much more than just yeah. being an, an understudy. I think it's likely just, Full disclosure, each one of these voice actors, I'm sure, I've heard and loved in something. And I'm, they have lots of talent. Unfortunately, they're pieces of shit as people. <laughs> <laughs> she says, I haven't responded to Wendy privately as I have no energy or interest in participating in this situation more than I already have. I am not ready to talk. Please respect that. I, That's I don't a big wanna... Fuck I'll be honest, right I don't want to hear you talk. <laughs> yeah. Again, thank you everyone for your kindness. I'll be taking a social media break from here on out. Thank you. Now, now that we've gotten through that, although I stupidly did not <laughs> stay on top of it the way I should have. Okay. Uh, now that you've gotten through that, I would like to uh, bring up this tweet from Anaris that we covered in February is very disappointing that despite all the resources publicly available to find diverse talent, minority voice actors still cannot have the opportunity to represent themselves for a extremely rare and groundbreaking double exclamation point minority lead in anime, especially a Middle Eastern North African queer lead. So uh, this was said because Jill Harris got cast as right. a Mercurian from the Witch for Mercury. Why are Middle Eastern North African queers entitled to play people for Mercury? <laughs> I, I don't know. If anybody, Donald Trump is the only one with the proper skin tone to voice that character. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, think, I think Freddie Mercury came from Ooh. the Middle East. I think that's why. Oh, oh, they're confused. <laughs> <laughs> they saw it's queen. Yeah, yeah, they yeah, misread I'm... it as queer. I see how it works. <laughs> <laughs> they should have just had the AI Freddie Mercury voice work. All right. So the, uh, that toxic discourse that you don't deserve that discourse. <laughs> and Notice uh, how she turned her comments off on that one. Uh-huh. You yeah. can't reply to that one. Mm. So uh those uh the people who blew it all up uh and all that, let's see, let's hear what they had to say. I'm saying it, I don't care. Wendy Lee coming back to be Yoruichi and replacing Anaris is a slap in the face to all people of color voice actors. Charlie Murphy, what the five figures say to the face? <laughs> <laughs> all the fuzzy snap. <laughs> it is a kick in the teeth, and it 100% proves people would rather have bigotry and racism and baseless criticism be better than what's deserved. Right, okay. despite the fact that she was in the role for like a good. Are you going to be a black woman for Halloween? Yes. <laughs> Reese thinks I should be a black woman for Halloween. Oh, lovely. <laughs> Going blackface. That, that'll get viewers <laughs> to our podcast for sure. <laughs> I'm going as Jojen Nager, the Jojen of Akita, the Tokusatsu legend. <laughs> All right. <laughs> a 
three Halloween, everybody. He's a real guy. I'm just saying. <laughs> like, <laughs> all right. So this person had this to say: Imagine collectively bullying a black person out of a role. Bullying. Mm-hmm. Right. That's bullying a black person out of a role. Only for the actor who returned to reveal herself as an ego-driven Karen attacking her own peers. Let me rephrase that for you. Only for the original voice actor to be a based bitch who didn't stand for your bullshit. Imagine not being able to stab that white woman. Right? Like, yeah, we uh, that was it. That was sorry. Let me rephrase that. Imagine not being able to backstab that white woman. That's how that was yeah. supposed to come out. <laughs> we were hoping to take her role from her and pray that she wouldn't notice. This your queen? You heard black people for her. All this taught me is that the anime community can only fail itself. Damn. Maybe you should leave it. <laughs> yeah, leave it. We don't want to. The door's that way. Yeah. <laughs> I'll be shocked if you didn't. What is this? Is it rude cue, you want to say? Cue, oh, cue the, boomer. The, cue, cue the, you're not the targeted audience. <laughs> I, I think he's he fancies himself a voice actor. So this, per- this person said, is it rude to want to say, okay, boomer, to her? Or will that be too far? Oh, am I, am I, like, too, what's that, uh, what's that? Pussy? Freaking, God damn, no, what's that thing, Um, uh, you know, the, but I'm not a rapper? What's the name of that? You know what I'm talking about. Is that, is that too yeah. much? It's like sugar fire hot or something. I forget what it's called, but you know what I'm talking about. You know, you know what I'm talking about. Um, no. no one knows that you're talking about. No, <laughs> but I'm not a rapper. And then like the, the gif of the black guys like freaking out when the guy you never seen this video? No. Mm. Jeez. Okay, you're killing me. I just say like this comment what, is what so that rabbit hole tonight. <laughs> and we're not playing yeah. the clip. I just happen to have this this comment is so like you know I'm not saying that I think oh, that man. She looks like a like like MC Hammer's album for you can't touch this is called please hammer. Don't hurt him. And this person's like, am I going to hurt her? If I say, okay, boomer, like, <laughs> like, am I, is it too much? Will it leave a bruise? You know? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So here we go. Hold on. Um, podcast two, two, five. Nope. Six. Nope. Four. <laughs> Where is it? Seven. Six. Oh, I was going up front. Okay, here. Yeah, this one. Any second now. Almost there. Okay, in the background. <laughs> you don't remember this video with the guy? But I'm not a rapper. And then the guy's like freak out and he walks, this guy walks in front of frame. I've oh, never man. actually heard that. Like, oh, you're I, killing I, I me. Okay. Full, I haven't seen the full video, but yeah. Obviously, the it. GIF or a picture or whatever. The, the GIF is, is adequate. <laughs> Uh, you know, yes. How are we supposed to know that? All right. Can you guys keep? Uh, I haven't looked at the the chats at all. <laughs> can you um, star some of them so I don't go through all of them? Um, so anyway, she says, "Is it okay to say okay, boomer, to her, or will that be too devastating for this woman?" I'd be shocked if you didn't okay, boomer, her. That's a critical hit. <laughs> you know, sixty-year-old Karen getting an aggro at white people thriving and she genuinely thought it wouldn't catch up to her a lot of people this year have been showing their butts and this might be my favorite example all year i don't know why this guy became really brave like yeah he just gets <laughs> all of a sudden all right how are you gonna expose your whole ass is this a black thing like showing your butts is that a whole is this is this a phrase i'm not familiar with can we look this up on urban dictionary for me Get the white person translation. How are you going to expose your whole ass and be a passive mm-hmm. aggressive and take personal offense to people comforting a black woman? Why like, woman make no sense? It's the fact that, oh, and it's a she they too in the bio. That's mm-hmm. No, it's the fact that they were also being passive aggressive towards her. Like you said, not to be standing... confused with the they she from before. <laughs> right. She was standing there in the fucking booth. She's directed some of these people and they were just like, yeah. oh, we're glad she's Again, gone. Thank God. Just, just reminding you. They literally brought her back for Thousand Year Blood War yeah. to voice a different character. They had face to face interactions with her. Yep. Voicing a character in the in the beginning 22 episodes. 
Then when the character that she established the yeah, fan her base most for her most comes up, in they, everybody in the in the studio just starts whistling and looking around, not making eye contact. All right, this person, uh, Sarah Hensler, VA and musical sawist, okay, um, non-binary demigirl, she, her, uh, uh, you know, says, know you know what? You, and, and this is a quote tweet, by the way, of the, the first one we looked at with the screenshots of Wendy replying, only showing her replies. You know what? Fuck it. I don't care if I burn bridges by saying this publicly. It needs to be said. Literally everything I've heard about her in casual conversation with voiceover people has been negative. Accounts of racist things said to actors of color in the booth. How mean she could be when directing. I, I'm going to need a little bit more than that. Yeah, how mean? Like, what do you mean mean? Like, And, and also, why directing? would you end with how mean she can be and not end building up to fucking throwing the end bomb around man <laughs> like come yeah. on i'm just sure look seriously think about this for a second you're a voice director everything is being recorded constantly do you throw the n word out there probably fucking not <laughs> like i just i don't know man <laughs> it just doesn't seem wise so then this other person uh their pronouns are she, Ella. I just I, that's important to know. That will come back on the test because quote I hadn't planned on making this public because it didn't bear any relevance to the situation at large. But hearing all the stories that are coming out now, I'm wondering if her misgendering me in a session was actually the honest mistake I had thought it was at the time. <laughs> Your pronouns are she slash Ella. Whatever you identify as, there is no way she could have guessed. No way. Who the fuck even is this? I've never heard her fucking name ever. She is a German trans. What is that? Colombia? I don't know. I don't fucking know. I do. We. I just don't know. The Puerto who the Rico fuck flag, is. right? That's that, that's uh -huh. what that one is. So Germany, Puerto Rico, and and uh, transgender. Hmm. Yeah. I, I so just, I don't even know. What that's that quite is. the mixed bag. Again, just. How often do I see this? Voice actors are all the same drama queens. Something happens in the industry and they all run. They fucking bolt to be in the middle of it. Wait, but wait, wait. Oh, she misgendered me. <laughs> Vix fans kicked in my door. Here's a photo that I also posted to Facebook years ago. <laughs> yeah. Come on. Come on. The fans need to be better. Fuck you. You need to be better. All these attention whores. With problematic VAs being a trending topic currently, there's a list of VAs still working in the industry who really shouldn't be. Vic Mignogna sexually harassed multiple women and con attendants. Tried and failed to sue victims into silence. Chuck Huber, you know, he's guilty of being a flat earther. And an <laughs> NFT shill? Right. Damn, man. Oh, Chuck. I can't even. How has he not been killed yet? Oh, <laughs> what a crime against humanity. We can't have that. Quentin Flynn? He has a wiki sized list of sexual harassment allegations. Oh, except for the part where he also has that exonerating evidence where the judge made the victim, quote unquote, admit in court she made it up. That, that guy? Oh, and uh, Tara Strong, uh, the Islamophobe. It all comes full circle. Oh, no. <laughs> Guilty of being Jewish here. Oh, <laughs> man. Oh, he continues. It is impossible. He continues. Holy shit. Yeah. Oh, my God. It is impossible to, uh, to live up to the standards of these people. I invite you um, to instead cater to the fans. Instead of these people who actively hate you yeah. for being Jewish, Tara Strong. <laughs> All right. In other news, voice actor Sung Won Pro ZD Cho criticizes race-based casting. What? Oh, no, hold up. What? 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 
But that's what was that thing that I, a humble white person, said last podcast? What was that thing I said where I was like, I would love it if black people could voice white characters. What's any character that they fit the role? Isn't that what I said? Damn. Yeah. Oh, it's like I'm a fucking it's, prophet. Jeez. It's almost like, you know, wanting race-based <laughs> casting is almost like segregation in that it's going to hurt you in the long run. Oh, wait. Yeah. <laughs> Look. The, you you shouldn't you be said. hired just because of how much melon is, is in your skin. or what's I, I love this. Pants. I, I, I love that this just happened to be this way. Voice actor Sung Won Pro ZD Cho criticizes race-based casting. Cry about it. <laughs> <laughs> so Pro ZD recently posted about how they were only rep- how they were only presented the opportunity to read for an Asian character in a recent audition. Cho allegedly was auditioning for an upcoming show and was offered only one character to read, who uh, who was the only Asian character in the cast. He asked his manager about the other characters and was told, quote, those characters are drawn as white. So no. Oh, oh, no. <laughs> but we wanted the we wanted the, 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 the white characters, too. And then the, the, the Asian <laughs> characters would be reserved for me only. That's how I wanted it to work, right? That's how welcome to the rice fields, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so uh, what's they funny all is... all the benefits with none of the downside. And now what? the downsides come to bite them yeah. in the ass and like, oh, wait, shit, no, I forgot. Yeah. Like, Real I made a deal with the me. devil and the devil tricked me? <laughs> so uh, a little bit of extra story here. He said, to add extra insult to injury, the character I got sent was labeled Middle Eastern, Southeast, or Southeast Asian. Because, you know, that's all the same, right? Uh, I mean, it is if uh, you're, you know, like the mayor of a town in London where they constantly get terrorist attacks and they blame it on the Asians. You are, that is there, yes. Uh, You can just lump them all into one. My agent told me that this is just how some major studios are doing things now. Coming back here. Yeah, because it's what you So he's also, he's also deleted these tweets, by the way. Mm. Um. But you can still find them here. (laughs) Um, (laughs) There has been a recent push in voice acting asking for talents to only accept or even audition for roles matching with their race or cultural identity. This time, Cho ran afoul of how some major studios are doing things now. Later in the same thread, Cho elaborated that when there's so few Asian characters, it's not a level playing field. Oh, bro, no. 99% of characters in anime are Asian. Why don't you just stop whining and go over there and audition for that? <laughs> Jeez. He, he has been in some, obviously. But yeah. yeah. And then he also, like, chat on Wendy Lee, too, in that situation. <laughs> yeah, so he, yes. So he, um, he went on to say, um, turning to a different production, the voice actor further noted, quote, this is not new. For another show recently with a large cast of characters, I was only sent the audition sides for the character who exclusively speaks Mandarin. I don't even speak Mandarin, said Cho. It's demoralizing. And as much as I love voiceover, the future looks bleaker every day. Ultimately, Cho concluded his thread by clarifying, to be clear, this was not my agent's decision. They have sent me plenty of white characters before and have been nothing but supportive of me colonizing those white roles is how that is reading to me. (laughs) This is what they were told by the people in charge of casting that show. Unfortunately for Cho, uh, while he may be seeing the very obvious downsides to making every single topic of discussion in life about race, as noted above, he, has, uh, he was not an unwilling participant in the industry's adoption of its current casting philosophy. Asked during a May 2nd appearance, ladies and gentlemen, you need to be donating to Bounding into Comics because nobody else has coverage this good. Asked during a May 2nd appearance on film critic Corey Coleman's Double Toasted Interviews podcast if he felt, quote, like more opportunities would be open to you if you were, you know, a white male, the Korean voice actor affirmed, 
I definitely would have more opportunities if I were white, for sure. There's no doubt about that. But I think there have been changes in a positive way. He and not just for, white, you know, Asians, but for all different races, different genders. Yeah. He continued, there have been steps and it has been improving. I mean, even comparing now to say like, let's say 10 or, you know, even five years ago, it's definitely changed. Yes, because five years ago, Wendy Lee would still have friends. <laughs> like, I think studios are much more aware of, hey, we should, you know, cast authentically. And that's why I got cast as the Viking guy's son in uh, God of War, <laughs> right? Like, <laughs> no, I think he got cast as a fucking squirrel. Oh, is he the squirrel? That's yeah, even funnier. <laughs> <laughs> I, I like funny. the idea that like the casting director or whatever got the memo like only Asian care people can voice the Asian characters and they took it as like only Asian voices for angel for Asian character and not oh, Asian that's voices. why he speaks Mandarin. <laughs> and no 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 like they got the memo that like the only Asian voice actors can voice the Asian characters and uh -huh. that means not he, the but, white oh, ones. Okay, so yeah, like yeah. they took it you're to saying, the full you're saying, of the meaning. You're saying the that memo. the memo said, whoa, just so that we're not problematic. I can't have any white guys voicing the Asians. So only Asians can voice the Asian characters. And the guy who heard that message heard it as, okay, Asians can only voice Asian characters. <laughs> yeah. 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 Which is exactly what, you know, that would be. <laughs> yeah. Perfect well, that's world. where we're at. Towards and guess what? If you don't like it, I invite you to go to Asian land of your choice and be in their shows or Middle East or North Africa and be in their shows. And Eris, like, <laughs> go ahead. Like, I'm sure that there is so many roles for you to be a part of, you know, or, or we can work on a meritocracy. You yeah. get to continue to voice Black whoever or white or Mercurian or literally any race, character, robot. I don't fucking care. You could be them if you fit the role. Yeah. Like, geez, is it so crazy to think that we advocate for that? Is it so insane to have predicted correctly, I might add, that this exact thing would happen, Pro ZD? Like the color of your games should not even be a thing at all in the casting booth whatsoever look man all i'm saying is if you were a white guy you wouldn't have gotten to be this badass chipmunk <laughs> 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 so he says so there have been some good steps but we still have a long way to go and i'm just hoping that as time goes on more and more doors will open for you for you know diverse talent okay need more comments in there bro fix it about into comics so as it shows complaint about various Asian ethnicities being lumped into one general casting group, while it is admittedly a tone deaf move by studios, it is also an unfortunate result of the industry's obsession with, with race. With many productions, particularly anime that take place in fictional settings, characters are often depicted with non-white and non-black skin tones. However, Given that these settings feature no real world dial, no real world analogs, um, casting directors are left to try and authentically cast Goku as Asian, even though he's a Saiyan, right? Like, <laughs> uh, they are, are they are left to try and authentically cast such roles based on what little information is available to them? Well, the one thing we knew right away is Spike Spiegel had to be Asian. Like, seriously, how many quotes can I pull up from, from this crowd of fucking over all this stuff and being completely tone deaf in the process? Casting directors are, are left to try and authentically cast roles uh, based on what little information are available to them. Um, you know, like Piccolo definitely being black and all that. Um, except that they drop the ball there, <laughs> which, often, which often amounts to a uh, little more than they are vaguely brown skinned as oh. such. And, and this is the thing in the West, most people, including, you know, um, uh, African Americans, when they see a, a dark skinned character, unless that character talks like a poo from the Simpsons, they just go, oh yeah, they're black. They're like me. 
right? <laughs> but in Asia, you know, which is really close to India, their first assumption is going to be, ah, they're Indian, right? <laughs> you know, like... <laughs> the piccolo comment made me think, like, wait, who voices Mr. Popo? It's also freaking Christmas. It's also Daffit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. that's brutal. That would have been too on the nose for a person of color casting. <laughs> so, as such, with his middling skin tone range pull, uh, ruling out explicitly white and black actors, casting directors have no choice but to open up a given role of vaguely brown character to actors who can themselves be described as vaguely brown. <laughs> Is it a great system? <laughs> Absolutely not. <laughs> Is that what they call the house children? Oh, that's that's no, Reese. You took it too far, Reese. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Is it a great system? Absolutely not. In fact, as Cho was uh, as Cho has discovered, it's inherently racist. But unfortunately, it's the it's the one that many in the industry have fought for. And thus, the one we are currently forced to reckon with. Good job. Thanks, fuckers. Yeah, you reap what you sow. Like, I don't All right. Know. Yeah, go ahead. Sorry. Um, oh, yeah, just, just, if it's not the cause. Yeah. Like, I, saw this, cons- I saw this by, you know, Clownfish, and I had to, you know, post the article. Because it's just like, wow, good job, guys. Like, this is exactly what you wanted. This is yeah. exactly what you wanted. And 100%. And it. And you didn't realize, so, uh, oh wait, there's downsides. There's a there's a backlash to this. I, I didn't think of the side effects that this would have. Yeah. You didn't, of course. You thought only the benefits, and that was going to be it, just the benefits. So, um, as I said before, ProZD deleted those tweets. But not before Justin Savakis uh, had a take on him. So we're going to read his take. There's a huge catch-22 for Black, Indigenous, people of color talent and getting cast. Insist the characters be cast according to ethnicities, and then they only get cast when racially specified. Insist on colorblind casting, and then they often don't get called for anything. Damn, Catch-22. Is that really? Like, Phil Lamar's been voicing fucking Vamp in Metal Gear Solid? Like, I'm sure the Romanian-accented Dracula wannabes uh, were clamoring for that role, but Phil Lamar's a legend. <laughs> and he's he snatched it from him. <laughs> that's, a, that's a little uh i shouldn't have said that <laughs> that was a little racially insensitive to a film <laughs> he um he gracefully acquired it without any resistance from the others because he was that good that's how i should have said that um he said i think colorblind casting is ultimately the way to go unless there's some specific character uh cultural grounding but that only works if the production actively tries to find new and diverse talent and not rely on ye old talent Rolodex. It's a lot more work to do this, but it often pays off in quality. Yeah. Just like at AM studios, a big reason why Nyav post or no, it was like NYAV post. Is that what, yeah. what's his name calls it? Yeah, um, and NYAV. sound cadence. So a big reason why, uh, NYAV post and sound cadence dubs are so good is because they are passionate about finding new talent. They've both introduced us to some stunning new voice actors and the work was far better for it. I don't know. You never got to work with Billy West. <laughs> I, I, I like to bring, keep holding on to that NYAV post, bring in new talent for voice actors. Keep that one in mind. We're going to return to that in a minute. Later okay. On. So uh, John Ronald, he, him, says, controversial take, white actors should not audition for people of color characters. People of color actors can and should audition for anything, including white characters, and be cast if they're the best. Casting directors should proceed with this goal in mind. Black people should have everything. White people should have nothing. Right? That's, that's what I'm hearing. That's what I'm hearing from John Ronald here. With anime, the line can be very blurry. Yes, because 99% of the characters are Japanese. Most characters are Asian. And a slightly darker skinned character can reveal itself as a certain ethnicity late in the show. 
or Okinawan. <laughs> but I always <laughs> applaud talent stepping back when they feel others would be a better fit. It's a classy, generous move that I love to see. So uh, Childish Gamzino, Zena Robinson over here, um, famed white knight of Anaris Canones, uh, had this to say. Now, look, just to be clear, um, Yoruichi is a Shinigami, a death god, who transforms into a black cat. Now, I don't watch Bleach, but when I first got to the part in the Soul Society arc where I left off in the show, where Yoruichi showed up, I was under the impression Yoruichi was a black cat who could transform into a human. <laughs> is that wrong? Uh, that's mm. right. It's the other yeah. way around. It is the other way around. Okay. See, so when I first saw this, I was like, you fucking imbeciles. It's not that it's a black character who becomes a black cat. It's that it's a black cat. And because the cat's black, they become a black character. <laughs> you know? No, but... <laughs> Um, <laughs> so, we should have had your kid rock screen for that one <laughs> so I just want to say um, I am not of the, the crowd of your witch is not black okay I thought um, she was Indian to be honest yeah I think I, I think was... Indian sure I, I think that's much more likely right um, and part of the reason why is because there are actually black characters in Bleach and when you see them, you're like, oh yeah, yeah, it's it's like a Disneyland character just sketch. Yeah, like it's that's a black person. Yeah. They are they are very on the nose with it. Um, so so uh, and when you look at them side by side, they're clearly not the same, right? Um, so uh, I I will like I'm not gonna make the argument when I read these, I'm not making an argument against what uh, Zeno Robinson is saying in that I am not one of the people he's decrying here who is who is claiming for some reason that she's not a person of color, right? A, a what do you call that? A ethnically diverse or whatever. Okay. So um, he says, not going to drag this out. And maybe I'll make a thread later. Maybe, but one, to insinuate your Ouija isn't black or any of the bleach characters who are aren't isn't asinine. Is asinine? What is ATP? Her original voice thinks so as well, and there's proof. Uh, show me that proof. But um, not that. Again, I'm I am of the the belief that the character is most likely Indian, but like for all intents and purposes, black, right? Um, but I would like to see this. Uh, the original voice actor, meaning the Japanese voice actor thinks so um, in light of this, how certain fans treated Jameson price can't even spell Jameson's name. Right. What kind of a friend are you after he laid and prostrated himself and whipped himself for being white to give the new voice actor, the role of Chad, you can't even spell his name. Right. Jameson price. I hope you're watching. So after certain fans treated Jameson price for stepping down was absolutely harrow uh, harrowingly disgusting. Uh, and flies in the face of all the rhetoric I've had to read for the past, like, week. Three, no one is tripping about anyone coming back to reprise their character. It's well within their rights. Whoa. Thank you. What, what a nice thing for you to say. Would you verbally say that to everybody else? Would you, Stephen J. Bloom, your way up and say, attention, everyone. Wendy Lee's okay. And these things can be better communicated. However, the industry also has a history of privilege. Ah, here we go. So even though it's okay for Wendy Lee to reprise her role because she's woke, she shouldn't have, is effectively what he's saying here. The industry also has a history of privilege. Privilege of being the pioneer. Privilege of being the person who was there when it didn't exist and you built the fucking industry off of the back of your hard work. That privilege. You're the one who's privileged. You get to voice act easily in a climate that celebrates you as a minority voice actor. You play tons of characters who are not black. Hawks being one of them from uh, My Hero Academia. 
right? You, my friend, are the one who's privileged in this scenario. All the hard work was done for you by people like Wendy Lee. The industry has a history of privilege, and we can choose to be blind to that or not. Representation matters. <laughs> Represent Wendy Lee over here. Everybody high five. Uh, if we if we really believe that, we as performers have a responsibility to that belief. I'll remind you, you have a responsibility to me, the customer, not to your grandiose ideas of changing the world by voicing a, a cartoon black guy. Come on. Let's think about if we are upholding that responsibility given our resumes. But enter person of color actor voices anime character is... A, a, is and will always be a false equivalence. Dub should be reflective of the region of the area, opening the door for that talent behind you, especially if you have benefited from their absence slash marginalization, is a respectable act. You're, you're a hero, Jameson Price, who I can't even spell your name right. You're a hero for letting that Hispanic actor voice Chad. Yeah, you're a even hero. Though, even though in Bleach, nobody really likes Chad. <laughs> Chad's the goat. How dare you? <laughs> I mean, as far as like the characters go, like like nobody like just uh, Chad's such a like people forget that Chad exists in Bleach. <laughs> Chad shoved his freaking karate chop hand in between Orihime's boobs. He is the goat. <laughs> <laughs> you may have the luxury of race not mattering to you. People on Twitter can throw this out all day, but it does matter. Being seen matters. You should not be a voice actor if being seen matters, bro. No. And it matters, slash matter, to the people who have struggled to succeed because of it. So this person says, no, Zeno, you don't get it. This isn't a black woman at all. Now, this is a bit disingenuous, again, because um, this is from the, what is this, the 26th ending? Yeah, this is like from an ending where they're all dressed Yeah, this up. is, I this is a, I think it's the 26th hair, ending. Like all the girls have that like fro hair. Like they, they frizzled their uh, hair. All of them were black facing? <laughs> Not black facing, but like they were all dressed up. It's from like, ending 23. Okay. Stay beautiful. And it's like set, like all the characters in like the 1920s. Right. And then somebody else, I couldn't find it here. I'll have to, I'll have to look for it later. Um, but somebody else was pointing out that in the episode, I think right after this, or the episode after this ending starts, or maybe it's actually the episode where the ending starts. Um, they do like the next time on bleach segment at the end. And Orihime in the English dub says, do I get to put on a wig Afro and a tight dress like Yoruichi <laughs> implying that it's a wig. Now, once again, I just want to, I want to make it clear. I do not hold the position that Yoruichi is not a black character. All right. And I think if you were Orihime, you would have to wear a wig because your hair couldn't naturally do that. Just throwing that out there. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I don't think it's fair to say, well, this proves that that was, it was just a wig. You know, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not making that statement or that point. Um, but I, again, I just think that everybody involved in this um, has been kind of a shithead uh, me, especially, but, um, <laughs> but really like, come on grown ass adults over here. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, uh, I'm afraid to look at the 145 comments that I haven't. Uh... <laughs> uh, honestly, though, when we first started, I thought, you know, I thought I'd have the hot take. Honestly, I thought I'd be the one defending Wendy Lee, but apparently I had the cold take and everybody in this. Oh, let me. Sorry. I, I, I started this with like, let's get through the part where she was talking and then I'll let you. Uh... I'll let us go into opening this like discussion on it, but uh, I was a little bit on fire there. <laughs> right. Well, I would have been too. And you've said most of what I was going to say. Like they're all her colleagues. She's probably directed them, you know, um, coached them in different. Because yes, she's part of the old crowd, the old guard, whatever you want to say. Like so, all these people that are like coming after her, are, like the young kids, they're like our age, that are like in their mid twenties. Checkmate, like voice actors. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my gosh! Yeah. Like I have one, th I have one thing to say about this. Go for it. That if I was an uh, aspiring voice actor trying to sell my talents in the industry and being handed roles just because of the color of my skin, mm -hmm. it's the same I'd argument be upset. we make. 
Yeah, same argument we make for um, – what's that one guy, LaShawn Thomas? Like, if you're – and it's just – it's disgusting to me. Every every Black History Month, um, Crunchyroll will put out these pandering articles um, showcasing the best of Black cosplayers and stuff. And it's like half of these are trash cosplayers, and you know it. You are just – digging deep into your own ass to pull out some way to pander to black people. And it's sickening to me. Like the fact of the matter is that most of the people that you showcase during black history month, you would not give attention to if they were not black. And I don't mean just in black history month. I mean, just throughout the entire year, you would not acknowledge or give any, you know, attention to any one of them if they were not black. So they have to create this like, like um, pandering way of going about it where because you're black, we're going to pretend you're special today. Right. Which again, puts you in a position. It puts you in a position where you will always wonder or feel like you didn't actually earn accolades because did I get that spot in college because of affirmative action or did I earn it? Did I get that role in that movie as a diversity token hire or did I earn it? Right? Like this is fucking awful. That's a horrible way to live. Yeah. Anyway. It just, yeah. yeah. But people want to take the opportunity any way they want, you know, like unfortunately, right? they want to take the that's easy how road. Some people are desperate. They want to take the easy way, you know, <laughs> Go ahead, Grant. Interrupt you. Sorry. So, no, no, no. I, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> this is all <laughs> Kathleen Kennedy's fault. <laughs> also, uh, so I, I want to. I want to acknowledge. Uh, apparently, James Bond graced us with a five dollar bill. Thank you for that, James Bond. Uh, may you never die. Uh, how does your computer not crash with that many tabs open? Look, man. Uh, this podcast uh, is run on shoestring and bubble gum. So <laughs> I, I like my response. And a lot of duct tape too. Don't forget about it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, Reese, you had something you wanted to say about NAV, NYAV post? Well, when, we, when we go over the uh, okay. cash list for uh, one half. Oh, uh, okay. Okay. The OG Bleach was union, but Bleach Thousand Year Blood War is non union. My owner's right. Both sides are equally toxic. Both sides of your pants, maybe. <laughs> Steve and Wendy are friends. Yeah, Steve. I mean, how could they not be? Again, yeah, I was as I was describing for a long time. Yeah, as I was describing, um, Wendy Lee, like the industry that all of these like entitled voice actors are a part of, is in no small part because of Wendy Lee and Stephen J. Bloom specifically. You know, because of like. Partially because of Cowboy Bebop, but um, but they basically run the studio that got anime onto TV, you know, it, on Toonami and, and Adult Swim and everything. So, yeah. yeah and don't forget Sci-Fi Channel, too. Um, I don't think they dubbed the stuff that went on Did, Sci-Fi, didn't though. Ninja Scrolls was... Didn't Wendy Lee voice the Ninja Girl that had the poison? Maybe wasn't she in a few of those anime movies that they had on Sci-Fi what? for Sunday? No, oh, so anime I, I'm Saturday, sorry, Sci-Fi. Sorry, I was Monday thinking of tech, uh, G4. I was thinking of tech, the anime. G- no, yeah, no, yeah. I'm talking I about know. Sci-Fi. I, I couldn't comment on that because they do the anime. You're probably stuff. correct. I was thinking of yeah. something else. Um, mm. yeah, the co-star and Kobe. Yep. Um, didn't Vic get Johnny as his replacement for Brody for Broly and Saba? Saba. Yeah, his Toei connection. Probably Sabo. Sabo. Oh, for One Piece. Okay. Um, it's been a while, but I remember that being the story. I know the two are friends. You know, honestly, I th- I think it's... If it That's wasn't a, a move picked by Vic and it was just the studios, it's a fucking brilliant move because it's the one person that you can't... Uh, you couldn't get mad at them for choosing. Yeah, nobody's going to shit on J- Johnny Young Boss. That was the smartest thing they did. Who's also one of the OGs. Yeah. Awesome. yeah. Yes, he is. Yeah. Okay, so um, where was the support for David Lodge when he was recast for being non-union? David gave I, up his role. Like a David gave up his role. Yeah. See, this is the thing. Ago. David was David was being real sneaky about this. 
Um, we cover this on, on the podcast, but um, David left Bleach because he wanted – he didn't think it was going to be um, – He's like, uh, what's the the actor who played Obi Wan in uh, the original trilogy? Alec Guinness. Alec Guinness, yeah. Alec Guinness uh, maintained till the day he died that he he thought George Lucas was a quack and he had no idea what Star Wars was about. Right. No, um, it but... has become one of the most uh, profitable. Well, not anymore. <laughs> but, but, <laughs> isn't it, but isn't it what? <laughs> but, uh, Brad. Here, I, here, I, it weird. was it was the big three. It was one of the biggest sci-fi things in in the world, right? But the oh, thing yeah, that's um, crazy no, is yeah. that you know. I thought you Dave... Hold on, hold on. So David Lodge, similarly, he was working as Ken Pachi in Bleach, and got bored, and effectively said, "I'm going to do something else." Like this isn't. This isn't paying the bills. I don't want to do this. This is never going to go anywhere. It's stupid. He's got fucking bells in his hair. I'm I'm editorializing everything. That's probably he was only thinking those things, <laughs> right? Yeah. So so he left Bleach and they were they replaced him way back in the day. Then when Thousand Year Blood Work came out or was you know coming out, he decided to come back and pretend like oh, I wasn't even offered. Oh my god, you know like. How dare they? Why, why wouldn't they cast me, the great David Lodge, who left them hanging all those years ago? Yeah. Like, And to be clear, okay. I prefer David Lodge over Patrick yeah, me Sides, too. but it's like you gave up totally. the role, <laughs> David. Yeah, like, man. No yeah, takesy um, backsies. The, yeah. the, the old Obi-Wan thing, right? Mm -hmm. um, there's a little bit conflicting thing going on there because supposedly uh, you heard the story, right, uh, about um, James Earl Jones about the money thing do you nope. uh do you take uh like do you invest like do you get like a uh, stock or whatever from lucas right or do you get a regular paycheck james Earl jones it's being not. desperate he need, he took the check whereas yeah, obi-wan he took he took the the stock which basically made his family you know for life like his family still gets oil considering i just said that alec guinness uh was like yeah he's a fucking quack this is well look he no could have just said he's a quack right but still say, well, if this does well, I'm so I've been I've been interpreting this wrong the whole time. Him being a quack was even <laughs> this guy's a he's a fucking genius, but he's a dumb quack for even offering me the the stock. You know, like I'm gonna be filthy rich. <laughs> he's a fucking like, idiot. <laughs> to this day, his family gets all the money like from any yeah. of the old trilogy stuff that him as Obi Wan. He's, I mean, generally yeah. speaking, that's how SAG contracts work. I think well, this was James pre. Probably... This was pre SAG, though. This was, was pre SAG. Yes, know. this was in the seventies. This was like, like the first. All right. Movie. I guess I don't know the, the whole you're history. Making correlation of like the, the um, fuck. What, what your dad gets for being and the, the stock value, like what you what your the um, fuck. What your dad what your dad gets is, is residuals. Paycheck. Residuals, yeah, res like, the, the residuals. Yeah, the residuals. You're, you're, That's what I meant. He, um, he's basically equating the residuals with what Obi Wan yeah. got. I think that's what he means by stock. Because, yeah. Yeah. yeah, the stock, like, that's what I mean by stock. Constantly, it might have income. Okay. Because James Earl Jones didn't do that because he was a struggling actor back then, right? He It wasn't until the other two movies that he actually got residuals. He, Lucky for yeah. him, he's in the other two movies. Am I right? <laughs> <laughs> but that's what happened. He was like, oh, I need Oh, that's right. Hold on. Alec Guinness like... shows up as a ghost. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. He was a force ghost. What's up? The tent's going to blow Oh, come on. Let it. <laughs> the umbrella's going to fly into the neighbors. Oh, no. All right. Let me finish this segment. Uh, oh, hold on. I didn't mean to skip that. Um, the ultimate... Uh, the... SS Ultimate Goku says, I kind of disagree with your take of her going on public like this. If she really had an issue with her colleagues, she should have handled it in private. I'm sure she has their contracts, or their contacts. Contact. Yeah, but see, um, I think I think handling it in public, like it's more effective, right? Yeah, because the thing that these people despise more than anything um, is you know the the public spotlight on them in a negative way, hence cancellation, right? Well, it's, it's uh, that's why it's so effective and, on other people. And, and, and if she just messaged them in private, they would have gotten she would have gotten a response. Yeah, oh, or they would have, or they would have given the like the same talking through their teeth, gaslighting response, but yeah, in would, private, they would have yeah, letting they putting it out on display. I think was the right move. Yeah. They would have lied about it. Yeah, like it's it's literally the difference. Thing, she said this thing, and then. In reality, they lied to her in private. So this is the best thing for her to do because what else? Because like, yeah. 
She's protecting her reputation. I would have done the same thing Wendy Lee did. It's literally the difference between being in a room, you know, like walking into a through a doorway and somebody has their back to you and they're talking to a crowd of people about you. And you just happen to walk in right as they start disparaging you. It's literally the difference of tapping them on the shoulder or clearing your throat loudly to make your presence known. Like, what the fuck, dude? Doing that or standing there, taking it in front of everybody and then writing them an email later. Say, why, man? Why? Like, doing it publicly was the right move. Showing people, like, you aren't going to walk on me, you know, and I'm going to make you uncomfortable for being a, a, a shithead in public, right? I think it was the right move. That's just my take. You can disagree. Um, Smart Geek 97 says, Wendy's not in the wrong entirely. She comes off as an asshole. I don't think she came off as an asshole at all. No, she was um, being blunt. She was being true to herself. That's not being an asshole. But everyone it's was basically standing up for yourself. Yeah. It's standing yeah, up for yourself. They were coddling a, a grown woman, an heiress. They were coddling her, acting like... Uh, Queen, it's okay. You deserve this. Yeah, like, come on. Uh, Sweet Hone Girl says, from what I can see, David Lodge got a lot of support. Yeah, and again, I think that he, the support he got is because he pretended. He fucking pretended. I'm the original voice actor, and I should, I deserve it back. And people looked it up. <coughs> they saw his name there, along with Patrick Seitz, and thought, oh, no, it, they can't give it to this Patrick guy, right? I'm sure a lot of people supported him because they – he presented it, sorry, he presented it as though it was some grave mis, misjustice on him. But he's a fucking liar. So she goes on to say, um, there have always been comments of fans being disappointed he got recast. Fans were petitioning for Viz to recast him when Bleach came back. Yeah, they were. But again, I think that he was playing them. And again, I think he's a much better Kenpachi. I would have loved to have David Lodge come back. I would have loved that. But you don't get to run away from the project and leave everybody else to work on it without you and then come back after it's a huge success. Like, that's yeah. not how this works. Yeah, There's a big the difference. Old, he left her in the OG the bleach. Yeah. Goes, either you're pregnant or you're not pregnant. You can't be half pregnant. You, know, you can't be one. I know it sounds funny and stupid, but you, you know what I mean? You either <laughs> are or you're not. You got to be fully committed or not be fully committed. I just feel End like I'm. I keep sealing these envelopes with a wax seal and King style is like, but wait, I got to leave this extra note. <laughs> I got to add a little bit in there. Yeah. All right. I, I think we've, I think we've beaten this horse enough. All right. So there's a big, uh, there's a big difference since he left. Yeah. We already covered this. Yeah. Um, Kisuke's current voice actor actually also was in the original anime. The OG actor left Kisuke before he died and Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Now that you mentioned it, I do think we remember hearing that. Um, again, I haven't gotten out of the Soul Society arc. I would love to watch Bleach, but I just do not have the time. Um, again, I disagree with your take on this. Hold for the next four years. <laughs> <laughs> I think she should have handled it in private. Stuff like this should not have been in public. I don't know. I think you're she entitled, exposed them. You're entitled, you're entitled to, to your opinion, That's fine. But the thing is, you got to stand up for yourself. You can't be yeah. like... Yeah they talk shit behind your back and you can't defend yourself. That can't. Yeah. Be. And, and what's, what's done, done is done. Finalist. You know, like at this point, what's done is done. Um, the one where he said the reason for people of color exclusivity is to get new talent in as in actors who haven't already gotten big roles. The thing is that there's plenty, right. And there's, I am all for more, more diversity, quote unquote, in, in casting in that, I'm fucking sick of hearing the Dragon Ball cast and all the long running shows on Funimation. God damn it. One Piece is ruined for me because goddamn Sabbath is in there and Colleen Klinkenbeard is in there. I hate that shit. Eric Vale's one of my favorite characters in Dragon Ball. Can't stand the Misanji. Get that shit out of here. All right. I am <laughs> all for bringing in new blood of every color. I am 100% for that. I am advocating for that as well. Uh, well, Pro ZD, all I have to say is rest and piss, Bozo. <laughs> <All right. laughs> if it isn't the consequence of my own action. All right. So, um, yeah. pickups. Uh, is that where we're at? I'm going to skip uh, a bunch of stuff, actually, so we can definitely be at pickups. Um, because I have a tarp in the backyard I need to pick up before it blows away. Huh. Uh, unfortunately, before I do that, I have a pickup. That I am gonna turn this off. 
Um, it is from a fancy uh, barren wasteland called Crunchyroll. <laughs> mm. It is actually a right stuff thing. And I just want to say, I have handled over a decade a lot of right stuff packages. This one does not feel right. Have you have you gotten anything from Crunchyroll, Reese? I have one waiting at home and one from Right Stuff also waiting at home. <laughs> well, I want you uh, to tell me when you uh, get home if it feels like it's packed a little tighter and without as much cushion in the Crunchyroll branded one because uh, this does not feel like I'm used to from Right Stuff. So, you did it? Oh, cool. <laughs> Overlord nice. season four. <laughs> All right. Um, so, uh, happy to report that the packaging does have all of the important things. Um, mm -hmm. I think it just happens to be one of those packages where they uh, yeah, they pack almost, it differently. Yeah, it's so, a little too perfect of a fit. Yeah, exactly. That's exactly how I would describe it. Oh, there's my address. Get out of here. <laughs> I, I, mean, I think I've I've probably had a couple of those like that. But yeah. The other, the other part was ReZero, um, season nice. two. Oh, that doesn't look. That looks oh, different. I, oh, there's a little crease there. Am I wrong? Ew. That doesn't look so good. Ew. Not good, Crunchyroll. What do you have to say for yourself? <laughs> All right. Anyway, so now I guess my um, my wife handled it, so I don't actually have to go outside. She's a superwoman. Um, so I guess uh, we don't. The reflection too. So yeah. Uh, yep. She you. knows. She says hi. Hi. Good for you for for you know taking doing it instead we of him. Can, hey, you can see her <laughs> waving there. All right, so um, just into yourself, just yourself to your wife, so you just can't read it below. No, I didn't mean to. <laughs> <laughs> so, do you guys have any uh, physical pickups you want to show? I do not. Okay, so I'm oh. going to the Discord then. Where Footnum, may he rest in peace, uh, has a slip unlike a black and white movies. Oh, great! I guess you meant to say Pokemon X and Y has a slip. Oh, that's cringe. No. Unlike the black and white movies. Well, I guess I wouldn't expect the movies to have them, actually. Yeah, the newer movies have slips, so Ah. So it's cool and sex. That's terrible. Oh, is this a black and white movie? Yeah. 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 Mega 3 movie collection. Yeah. Whoa, Reese, what did you say? What did you say? Mega 3 movie collection? Uh, it didn't sound like that. What did I say? Uh, he thought you said the N-word, I'm guessing. Wow. I know you've been thinking it all night, but please keep it yourself. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's on Randy for hearing that. Not all right, so me. I said mega three movie collection. Okay. All right, so uh, Footnum also picked up Darling in the Frank Steel book and Yashahime, Princess Half Demon season two part one. Hmm. Um, Mirage Leonardo picked up Front Mission four. It's quite the cover. I I remember seeing it all the time and thinking I bet the game doesn't have naked people in it. <laughs> it's, it's not full frontal as it is being advertised. It's rated T for teen. Yeah. This isn't going to be that good. <laughs> all right, he also picked up uh, final fantasy type zero HD, I guess. Hmm. Exclusive final fantasy uh, 15 playable demo. Yay. Day one edition. Nice. <laughs> this means nothing to me. Also, some Kingdom Hearts. Awesome. Legend of Lagaya. Okay. Man, I'm I miss when anime character or when anime when video game characters looked like a polygonal mess. <laughs> All right. Uh random eleven, you picked up the PS5 Spider-Man wrap. Uh it's not a wrap, it's the Actual PS, PS5, Spider Man PS5, which I, you know, sat there and looked, wow, he, he might really, must really like Spider Man. Oh, wait, shit, I forgot his 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 avatar. Fuck, I'm an idiot. <laughs> uh, uh, I also got the collector's edition of the game, which came with this uh, Venom statue. 
And you got like what, Who's, 11 inches of Is that Miles Morales on the left? I think it's 19 inches. Uh, yes, that's oh, Miles Morales. Why does Miles Morales look bigger? Is it is he really much closer to the to the camera? Uh, he, he is closer to the camera. He's a giant compared to the one in the back. <laughs> it is also uh, the, I think I was using the wide angle lens for that. Oh, so does this happen be... in the video game? That's funny. Or is this from the no, movie? This is from the, the movie. movie. <laughs> Wow, I, I assumed it was a video game because the CGI looks ass. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Next, he said, "I really wanted my 19 inches of venom. Kind of wish I'd pull the trigger on that." <laughs> yeah, the, I think it was Sony's like Twitter account that said, like, advertised that collector's edition as 19 as, inches of venom. Yeah, 19 yeah. inches of venom. Wow. <laughs> So uh, Vivi <laughs> says, uh, um, sorry, Danny picked up Vivi is what I meant to say. Uh, a little late, Danny. <laughs> also, Kaguya-sama, Love is War. Re-Zero. Oh, copycat, even though you posted this days ago. <laughs> uh, Seb got the Japanese Blu-ray box for the Ava. Um, Pull one out for Seb. He doesn't have Jap or English subtitles or dub. <laughs> It has five each of the moon, though. You don't need any of that other shit. <laughs> <laughs> you also picked up I Am a Hero. Is this the live action? Oh, that looks yeah. cool. I want that. German uh, version. Yeah, I think Crunchyroll put it out of her too. Danny too. picked up, is this the hard hardcover manga? Yes, yeah, volume three yeah. for Helsing. Deluxe edition. Uh, Kaleido Star. Yeah, I'm just saying you should have got the one I fucking got right here. Oh, champagne box. Somebody camera on me. Uh, it's been under my desk ever since I showed it off. <laughs> well, well, we would, but we don't know how to contact the one dude. So All right. give me um, Maybe I will. Mirage Nero picked up Rayman 3D for the DS. Bendy and the Ink Machine. Lance picked up uh, from, from Reese. Call of the, Call of the Night. The Night. Uh, enjoy, I guess. Mind Game, Inu O, and How's Moving Castle. Oh, huh. what an odd assortment! <laughs> uh, gosh, Mirage, all these games you're buying, uh, Child of Light and Valiant Hearts. Dear Lord, how many more do we have? Okay, I'm almost there. Uh, <laughs> Reese, you picked up Dead Mount Death Play Volume, Volume 10. 10, yeah, and you also picked up Overlord. Nice, Standard watch Club win. <laughs> <laughs> and Bobby Hill says, my last right stuff order. Oh, I still got one coming. I'm still waking up from these nightmares, <laughs> shaking and, and like, oh, <laughs> Kathleen Kennedy and Crunchyroll are not real. <laughs> 235, right. isn't it? Cool. Um, I'm going to skip this and we'll cover them either later or um, next yeah. podcast. <laughs> Sushi terrorist found guilty in Nagoya District Court. Sentencing left many feeling justice wasn't served. Didn't he get like three years? Oh, it's because he was also a child trafficker. That's right. <laughs> Earlier this year, the public was appalled at the behavior of the customer at the uh, at the Kura Sushi uh, Revolving Sushi Restaurant in Nagoya City. In IG Prefecture, the offender uh, was recorded drinking straight from the shared soy sauce bottle and stealing sushi from plates as they passed by, and as a result, became the first person arrested for it. This shouldn't be con uh, this shouldn't be confused with the customer of sushi. Uh, sorry, oh, this is a different one. Holy shit, it is. Yeah, I'm thinking of the one from Sushi Row. We covered it last podcast, the Sushi Row, and this is the Kura Sushi one. The Kurazushi. Um, yeah, so this shouldn't be convinced. Uh, uh, this shouldn't be confused with the customer of a sushi roll revolving sushi restaurant whose soy sauce and cup licking video went viral only days earlier. Wasn't he the original one? Or first person arrested for it? Okay. Uh, okay, so this guy went viral. This guy copycats, but he does it in a dumb way where he gets caught first. Cool. Uh, the back to back <laughs> incident sent shockwaves as a nation cried out, What the hell is wrong with people? At once, and sushi conveyor belts came to a grinding halt. Uh, 
On the 13th of October, the Kurazushi perpetrator of what was dubbed sushi terrorism by the media was found guilty by Nagoya District Court Judge Yoichi Omura. Now, I just want to remind you, some have said that using the term terrorism for something like this will cheapen what Al-Qaeda does. Oh, but I think it's, I think it's, well, whatever. What Hamas does then. Thank you, Chenk Uger. <laughs> but uh, I think it's fair game. This is sushi terrorism. <laughs> uh, you know, some some would call releasing Fukushima wastewater into the ocean sushi terrorism. <laughs> but not me. <laughs> <laughs> It was a pretty open and shut case since everything was on video and uploaded to social media. And the man in the video, 21-year-old Ryuga Yoshino, uh, was handed down a five-year suspended sentence on a three-year prison sentence. Yoshino will not appeal and spoke to the media after the verdict. He appeared remorseful, telling reporters, I am truly sorry. The first thing I will do is commit seppuku. <laughs> no. Is reflect and make up for what I did. I think it's more important to want to make amends, even if just a little, with the people whom I cause trouble than it is to worry about myself. Yeah, it's more, probably. <laughs> he also urged others, considering the same thing, to think twice about their actions and consider what happens afterward before making the same mistake he did. Too late, dude. <laughs> Many others have been arrested. <laughs> Before anyone might begin to feel sorry for Yoshino, it should be noted that at the same trial, he was also found guilty of pimping out his then 15-year-old girlfriend from December to March of this year. I am so lost. This is not the guy who was like giggling and laughing while licking the thing we covered last podcast. Are they both guilty of sex trafficking too? <laughs> Holy cow. I, I must make amends. I need to remind others, please consider not doing the same thing. Think twice about your actions and consider what happens afterwards. Is this about licking sushi or about pimping your 15 year old girlfriend? So he pointed out that pimping his girlfriend was a far more despicable crime though it was not the subject of the case he was currently presiding over. Damn, double jeopardy, right? Uh, in regards to the sushi terrorism incident, Omura felt there was enough of a foundation for rehabilitation in place that a suspended sentence would suffice. You know what, Judge? I think I, I, think I could be rehabilitated, yeah. I, I, maybe I only need, like, a day of community service? <laughs> like, is that kind of, <laughs> I think that would suffice, man. <laughs> like what a, <laughs> what a weird way to phrase it. Readers of the news, however, disagreed appearing unmoved by Yoshino's re repentance and feeling his punishment was too light. <laughs> everyone, everyone agreed that five years in prison was too much for the sushi liquor until he removed his mask to reveal he was in fact, Adolf Hitler. Right. <laughs> We need a sentence that will send a message to copycats. That's too light. What was the sentence again? Did they say? Did they even say? Five years suspended sentence. Okay. That means basically he, oh yeah, and on a three year prison sentence. So I think he only goes to jail for three years. All right. The judge should have been harder on him. That's it. There, uh, this will do nothing to stop other sushi terrorists does anyone believe he really regrets what he did he's going to he's going to be a hero to morons now damn he is he in fact is <laughs> i want him punished enough that he loses his youth <laughs> uh there is still a matter of financial restitution in this case unlike the similar sushi row incident which resulted in a lawsuit for considerable sums of money uh there's been no word of such a suit against yoshino However, his statements that made frequent references to uh, restitution might mean he he has or is in the process of settling with Kurazushi out of court. Now, good luck. <laughs> That's going to be billions of yen, dude. If these negotiations don't work out, his conviction would go a long way in supporting potential lawsuits in the future from the restaurant chain. 
So his sentencing might not turn out to be such a slap in the wrist after all, and only time will tell if he can truly reform his ways. Okay. All right. Well, that was terrible. Uh, let's jump into Kickstarter news. Unless there are uh, chats I should read. Kasaibo says, have you checked under your bed for Kathleen Kennedy and Disney executives? Nope, but I will <laughs> before I go to bed. Um, oh, come on. How dare you? Give me a chance, JT's poopy pants. <laughs> Everything Animated says, what was going on with this whole VA thing? Did they just assume that Wendy didn't want to do the voice? She did the voice in the past. Why wouldn't she want to do it? Yeah, I think that they... Um, I think they literally, honest, honest to God, I think they assumed that she was being a good little leftist and um, giving up her role so that a underprivileged person of color could do it. I'm pretty sure that's what yeah, they thought. Yeah, Jameson Price did the same thing. So it wouldn't yeah. be good. Yeah, we can just, we can just write it. They thought off. certainly that's what she's doing. Anyway, so Masaki Nanomiya's Gannibal horror manga series is in English. So uh, I hate this Kickstarter. I hate you for showing it to me, Mirage, <laughs> because first of all, it looks fucking cool. Like it looks really cool. And then you scroll down to find out how much is it going to cost me to get this? Oh shit. Only $5 for Three. gratitude, $15 for the digital bundle. Man, I want a physical. Oh, good. Only $32 for the hardcover and digital volume one. Awesome. And then you keep scrolling. Oh, I could get it signed for $50. That's cool, I guess. Oh, volume one through six. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Volume one through six, hardcover, $80. Oh, that's actually not that bad when you think about it. One through 13. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> it just keeps going. $185 for one through 13. Oh, but of course, of course, there's also the $200 one through 13 hardcover with Kickstarter exclusive art box. Thanks. Thanks for that. Thank you. And then because you're like, oh man, they're nickel and diming me. I just, I guess I could pay $200, but that sucks. Wait, what's this? One through 13 box set plus digital plus BP $400. That seems excessive. Wait a minute. One through 13 gold box set for five. What is that? What is that shit? So then you look over here. See how the cover has Gannibal written in red? Well, for literally 300 more dollars, you could have it written in gold. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> but wait, just in case you're that much of an idiot, for fucking $800, it's written in platinum. <laughs> Neither of which look cooler than the red. <laughs> Yeah, and it's not real gold or platinum, so who cares, right? Right? If but look at this fucking platinum, art box. Fuck that's yeah. so goddamn cool. <laughs> anyway, yeah. So uh, it's in the it's in the dock if you guys want to pick it up. Spend four hundred dollars like this. Yeah, if you want to just drop eight hundred bucks <laughs> on the platinum edition, go for it. I'm not gonna <laughs> stop you. <laughs> All right. Oh, that's not what I want to do. No. No. No, saving that. <laughs> Talking about this first. All right, so we talked about this a little bit last podcast. The Nausicaa French live action film has finally been released. It is a short film. We've, we've known about this for years. We literally covered it in like podcast 30 or whatever that was. A long freaking time ago. Um, and uh, you can finally watch it. And it is dog shit. <laughs> This scene right here, her gun disappears repeatedly. I'm gonna I'll just play it. I'll show it. They can't it shortens it. repeatedly. Yeah, because uh, they didn't bother keying it properly. I'll just show you. Here. There it goes. There it the French should be ashamed. <laughs> anyway, um, I don't know what the hell is going on with the glowing lightsaber rope that then just becomes an LED rope. But yeah, you can check it out. Um, it's linked there. That's the whole video uh, right here if you want to watch it. 
And much more interesting, I wish it was real news. AI generated Pokemon are reminiscent of Tokusatsu monsters. I'm going to show it to you now. Wait, hold on. I got to switch to the other channel. Pikachu, Kimu, Mananda. Pikachu. The Konnichiwa, Pokemon no Sekai, Heyokoso. Watashino Namayama, Okido Hase. ポケモンは私を which which one is that? Gengar? Is that Gengar? <laughs> yes. I just realized halfway through I'm like, wait, I don't know who these are. That one's awesome. Genji Shin no Pokemon no densetsu ga ima. Is that new or new to Pokemon to Yume to Bokemon no sekai wa matte iru zo. Inko. just like staring at the plug plug like, okay. Tell me you would not watch the shit out of that. <laughs> that was awesome. Ladies and gentlemen, I've spoken a lot about my good friend AI. I'd like to introduce you to him. There he is. <laughs> like, <laughs> I would watch so I, much of that. <laughs> I, I means love. Yes. <laughs> oh, I guess that I'm glad we watched it because apparently <laughs> Sankaku Complex didn't show us a screenshot of everyone. All right. That was cool, right? Let's move on. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's look at streaming news. Gaijin YouTuber openly commits crimes to travel across Japan for free. Oh. It's this not Johnny face. Somali. <laughs> it just makes me like... It's a punchable face, him. right? Yeah, just on face alone. It's like, on... get out of here. Yeah. Oh, he does. He looks like one of those like villains. It doesn't improve. The Every way. frame is a... Is, uh, Exponentially more punchable face. He gets his ass kicked by the main character in one of those like fights. Who'd win in a fight, him or Johnny Somali, though? Johnny uh, Somali. I'd put money Johnny on. Somali. <laughs> this guy would just run away. Johnny would, Johnny would, <laughs> I feel like Johnny Somali would just be like, Hiroshima, Nagasaki. And he's like, that doesn't work on me. <laughs> but he would try to swing. He would try to swing if he could. This guy hid in a toilet. For like three hours in a yeah. train ride to get out All of right. paying a ticket. <laughs> so the Japanese are fuming over a gaijin YouTuber who took advantage of their hospitality for free by riding on buses without paying the fare and committing other crimes in the open. In a video titled, quote, I traveled across Japan for free. The gaijin YouTuber, Phidias, terrible name, terrible face, everything, everything matches up, who oh, boasts 2.37 million subscribers. Planned on traveling from Nagasaki to Aomori with the goal of doing it without spending money. The YouTuber rode a bus without paying the fare, which, unlike in the U.S., is a severe crime in Japan. He then got on a Shinkansen, or a bullet train, hid in the restroom, and pretended to be sick when he got caught. He also bothered others by asking them to pay and hid inside hotels for free stays and breakfast during his challenge. Japanese internet denizens commented on the Gaijin YouTuber's exploit, saying, quote, The number of stupid Gaijin like these has been increasing recently. They're also a nuisance to the to the proper Gaijin out there. <laughs> Gaijin White Knight over here. <laughs> Japan being Japan since whenever. Gosh. <laughs> it must feel so good to be half Japanese, half Jewish. Because then you can, the Goyjin, like you could, you could double. (laughs) Wouldn't he be a Goyim though? What? Yeah, like you can double, you can, you can be doubly like superior. (laughs) (laughs) I would love to hear a Yiddish, a Yiddish accent Japanese. (laughs) We've lost four viewers in the last five minutes, just so you know. Well, <laughs> who wanted the Goy gene there anyway? 
So they said, let's beat this guy up and deport him. He's literally uploading his crimes. <laughs> let's beat him up. Yeah, like beating Do something up isn't about a it, crime cops. either, right? He's no different from his man. Is that Johnny Somali? That's Johnny Somali's real name, right? Um, yes, probably. These annoying idiots committing crimes should be treated as terrorists. I agree. Use the word terrorism for every little tiny annoyance, please. <laughs> Jaywalker terrorist. <laughs> Cut in line terrorist. <laughs> the police should hurry up and arrest him. I wish they'd deport these idiot gaijin YouTubers and bar them from entering. People normally get arrested for that, right? It shouldn't be weird to arrest him upon re-entry. Aren't these criminal YouTubers breaking some kind of rules? I don't want them here. Go back to your own country. <laughs> All right. See, the problem is we don't want him. How do we know he's American, though? He could be from anywhere. He could be from England, Brazil, Canada. I didn't say he was English. I just said I don't want him outside of Japan. I need to quarantine him on the island that has proven to withstand nukes before. <laughs> you know what he looks like? You know what he looks like? He looks a little bit like Mr. Bean, but worse. Hmm. Like Mr. Bean crossed with Bill Nye? Yes, <laughs> yes. Fusion, the Batara earrings. Yes, they fuse together. Well, it's they look weird. That this is not an orgy thumbnail. <laughs> <laughs> well, what the news? Japanese YouTuber group Tokai On Air are breaking down over revenge porn. Ugh. So take a good hard look. One or more people in this group have had sex. <laughs> Captain Ginyu, for sure. <laughs> it's definitely this guy. <laughs> the rest of them are wizards. <laughs> <laughs> uh -oh. IG Prefecture based YouTuber group Tokai on Air who is popular enough to be representatives of their own hometown, Okazaki City, for the Olympic torch relay in 2021, <laughs> has seemingly broken down overnight with threats of revenge porn being posted to social media. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Oh. Oh, no. That's guys. Is that a man? That's a man's hand. <laughs> uh, suddenly, it all makes sense. Which one I'm looking that? for the bracelet. <laughs> 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 gotta be this guy <laughs> i don't know man uh, his, 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 le his left leg is darker than his right leg what the fuck <laughs> damn he, he is <laughs> the japanese call him hafu <laughs> all right anyway <laughs> let's uh let's find out about this <laughs> the group consists of six members posting comedy videos and also revealing much of their private lives to the viewers. Most important to the story are the group leader, Tetsuya, and group member, Shibayu. Great name. At first, Shibayu and his wife, Ayanen, another YouTuber, were arguing publicly on social media before their aim turned to air grievances towards Tetsuya. What, did Tetsuya bang the wife? Or did Tetsu and bang the other member? <laughs> Is there a possibility that he walked in on them having sex and that's his hand putting up? Like he's like approaching, like, what are you going to do about it? And he's like, whoa, puts his hand up and he walked into his. Could that be what's going on here? Could it, could it in fact not be gay sex? Do you dare play the video? I can't play it. It's a screenshot. Oh, oh. Find it. You know I'd play. <laughs> Come on, you think I wouldn't have played it? <laughs> Revenge porn on YouTube, of course I would. <laughs> is that on YouTube or is that on Twitter? Uh, no, I mean if I played it on our YouTube, <laughs> <laughs> he, uh, he failed. Uh, Sh uh, Shibayu ended up seemingly having a mental breakdown, posting multiple behind-the-scenes photos and leaking the group's unreleased original song, as well as threatening to post revenge porn featuring Tetsuya on social media. If if this is Tetsuya, I don't think he's uh, going to be ashamed because he's the only one who looks like he's in shape amongst all of you. Hmm. Oh, no, post-revenge porn. He's like, do it. 
do it F slur. <laughs> um, all this happened overnight with fans bitterly calling the entire incident Hokai on air <laughs> with the hashtag continuing to trend overnight and into the next day. It's literally Hokai on air. <laughs> like, <laughs> Uh, continue to trend overnight into the next day. The group was formed in 2013, meaning all this happened during their 10th anniversary period. And it doesn't seem that the group, the sixth most viewed YouTube channel in Japan, will recover anytime soon. Japanese, I encourage you to continue watching the OCA podcast. We can we can take that void <laughs> of the sixth most viewed YouTube channel for you. <coughs> we already have a sponsorship with Tenga, which you know and love, so it's going to be an easy transition, I think. <laughs> So some fans have wondered if all of this was eventually going to happen, given the mental health of YouTubers who make their private lives into entertainment as well, turning them into ticking time moms waiting to blow up at the right trigger. Um, yeah, I just, I feel very royally cucked on this revenge porn. I don't get to like just one moment here while I pull this off screen and find out what that, <laughs> hyper, what that hyperlinks to. Oh, good. <laughs> Oh, I deleted. No, I'm going to find out if it got posted archived. on Ghost Archive. <laughs> on regular archive, but it's basically the same image. Yes. It's only nine seconds long. Let me, uh, let me preview it. Hold on. It's loading. Look at yes. This. <laughs> this is really going to let us down, I'm sure. <laughs> well, we'll watch you while you watch it. All right, here it is. <laughs> Come on, it's loading. I'll put it in. I'll put it in here so you guys can see it in the little tiny screen down there. Something went wrong. Nice. <laughs> Fail. Uh, Cucked uh, again. That's what we like to see. Uh, terrible. We'll never know. Joy sitting back there, like, dang it. Yeah, this is what we. This is what we're being cucked on, everyone. <laughs> the hairless chest of a Japanese YouTuber. Yeah. Japanese All right. Anyway, I guess we're just gonna move on. Cut our losses. <sighs> In theater release news. Godzilla 2000 is returning to American theaters for a limited engagement, ringing in the Kaiju's 69th birthday. Oh. Nice. Yes, nice. <laughs> I knew they had the proper occasion in mind. <laughs> yeah, oops, they played the wrong movie. That's not, that's not Godzilla. It is. Godzilla, Godzilla 2000. 2000. Is that, that's not the one with Matt and Broderick. No, no that mean, was 69. Godzilla 69. That's not the right Oh, Godzilla 69, the porn parody? Yeah, the porn parody. Ugh. That's not appropriate for. Can somebody anybody. find out if there's actually a porn parody of Godzilla? I really must know. <laughs> you want to know if you Dude, there's there's, there's parodies of everything, even Tokyo, to even like like Power Ranger, or Super Sentai stuff, the Common Riders. There's parodies uh, of everything, dude. King so Reese is an expert. <laughs> I shared this for you. Well, yeah. you know more than me, bud. Yeah, I Girl, thought you so literally. Yes, yes, yes. You can. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You can't Uno reverse with that. Well, I just you can't Uno reverse and Uno reverse like. He... Yeah, you can. Yeah, you can. He, he can just draw for you, bitch. It takes one to know. I right? I was like, you would know more than me. You're the expert. Oh, you would know more than me. That doesn't work. It... Um, anyway, yeah. All right. who, looked it, who looked it up on uh, provoked? Girls in Panzer teams up with Sisu feature film for collab visual. So I just, just remind you, Girls in Panzer, you know, middle school girls who drive tanks for sport. Yeah, and don't kill each other because they magically act as if nothing happens. Uh, Swedish here. Rambo? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, <laughs> just look at the... Just, what do you think I of? mean... I'd be confused on which is which, to be honest. Yeah, look at the I can't. Man. Just... Which one is the one with the cute girls? I can't even tell they anymore. Identical. Like, they're both they're cute. Identical. Sisu und Panzer over here. All right. Anyway, so that's a thing. Uh, I'm yeah, glad we covered like that. The creators of John Wick or something. Right. 
Oh, I think it's Norwegian. Hey, NYAV post. Um, the Boy and the Heron English dub cast has been announced. Yeah. So before we go for, I mean, like the NYAV post pulling out all the stops to find brand new, Fre- yeah, fresh, brand new, fresh, fresh voice actors, people you've never heard of, like Robert Patinson. Chris Stein Ballet. <laughs> yeah, so Robert Pattinson, Christian Bale, Florence Pugh joined the cast. So, oh, and and who could forget that fresh new talent, Dave Batista? Yep. <laughs> yeah, he's the blue chipper of the group. Yeah, he's, he's the I'm rookie. surprised Chris Pratt isn't in here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so um, Mahito Maki um, is going to be played by Luca Padovan. Uh, the that's gray heron the is Robert fresh. Pattinson. That's like the only new talent that the main yeah. character. Robert Pattinson. Uh, uh, oh, oh man, I confused him for somebody else. Sorry, you know the guy from King of Queens. Uh, Robert Patton Pattinson Oswald. is voicing the big schnoz guy over here. I, like, I, I don't love... think that's gonna fit. Patton Oswald is not the guy from King of Queens. You're thinking of Kevin James. No, he was the friend of Doug, which is played by Kevin James. Yeah, but you wouldn't say the guy from King of Queens. <laughs> You're well, not Mark, talking about. He, no, I'm saying he was on the show. I'm not saying okay. he's the lead. Yes, what I will concede Queens? that Patton Oswalt did appear as a regular character on King of Queens. Imagine watching King of Queens and referencing. <laughs> hey, it's better than the Beverly Hillbillies. <laughs> we're, we're moving yes. up in the world. I thought you were going to say it's better than uh, Godzilla <laughs> porn. It also, you know, it's crazy that King of Queens is actually a spinoff of everybody. It actually Queens. isn't better than Godzilla porn, so I wouldn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so um, I believe this is uh, Robert Pattinson's character. Yeah, I'm mean, like, I'm not... <laughs> like, he what? looks like a duck. He looks like a duck. He looks like a duck with that. I, I would, I would believe if Willem Dafoe is voicing him, but not taking <laughs> Robert Pattinson. Yeah, so Spider-Man. Willem Dafoe. Uh, yeah. Willem Dafoe is playing uh, Noble Pelican, who I'm pretty sure is... God damn it. <laughs> this one. All bloodied up and shit. Yeah. Battle damage Pac- version. Dude, it'd be punished, hilarious punished. if Al Pacino played <laughs> a Noble character. Pelican. If Al Pacino played a character. Fly Pelican! Fly Pelican! Mark Hamill is From- playing Grand Uncle. Oh, I've never heard of him Dave before. Batista is the Parakeet King. Oh man, I've got the perfect freaking meme. Hold on, I gotta throw something in. The, I gotta do something. Hold on, I got. I gotta delete. I gotta delete something from the brand. I don't know why they picked Dave Batista. Dave Batista is not really. Just delete the smart guy. guy. I did. From... I got it. No worries. I got it. I don't think I'll ever use that one again. All right, here I got a meme for you. Popular voice actor man, known for Lord Darkness Edgeman from Blood Dying and Screaming. Roles, Lord Darkness Edgeman from Blood Dying and Screaming and Fish, Adventures of a, a Little Fish in a Bowl. <laughs> right? That's, <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's effectively <laughs> Mark Hamill from Star Wars fame, also played Joker, is Grand Uncle. <laughs> All right. Yeah, Mark Hamill, like his voice got shot. I think he, he did too much. Of I, I thought it was interesting. I thought it was, was interesting. He in Castle that, uh... in the Sky? Oh. Yes. Yes, he Moose wasn't. Guy. Also, he was he was Ozai. He was king. Uh, he was uh, Fire Lord Ozai, yeah, king Phoenix of... King. Ozai. Yeah. Don't shame me for not talking about that live action yet. <laughs> <laughs> In other news, a Miami teacher showed Winnie the Pooh blood and honey to fourth grade class, and a mental health counselor has met with students who expressed concern. <laughs> so based on the title alone, I haven't read this, by the way, but, but based on the title alone, what happened here? Was it a field trip to the theaters, and they just assumed it was we a normal... Just brought it no, let's go to the Winnie the Pooh service, movie. Probably just, streaming service. Yeah. You kids are too fucking loud. Let's go to the movies where you're forced to be quiet. <laughs> yeah, the teacher <laughs> must have been so annoyed with the kids. The thing Apparently is, it's the fourth graders, the though. Students, yeah. yeah this, 
Like, how did, did they you get just a... ask the students what movie no, they I wanted think they to just, watch? Somebody just brought a movie in and didn't realize it's a horror movie and it's not no, a natural dude. movie. Either. No, I'm telling you what happened. This... <laughs> oh, tell us what happened. The teacher apparently like, asked the gonna, students gonna... what they wanted to watch. This is from what I heard anyway. And uh, they said this. And then um, he put it on. And then they, they were like, wait a minute. No, we don't want to watch this anymore. And he was like, well, too late. We're watching it. Now. All right. I, I love the way this is written. Fourth graders at a K through 12 charter school in Miami Springs got an upsetting Halloween surprise when their teacher screened the horror movie, Winnie the Pooh, honey and blood. Despite the title of the film, including Winnie the Pooh, the movie is not suitable for children. I'm sorry. What about the honey and blood part of it? Like yeah, it's, blood it's and honey. honey, honey could be sweet. And is it blood and honey? It's honey and blued. Okay. It is blood, blood and honey. It... How do you fucking ruin it? Come on. Okay, it's honey and blue. It, it, it should blued. be called blood. It should be called blood honey. It's 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 his friend blue. Okay, you know, the movie is not suitable for children as it falls Winnie and Piglet on a bloodthirsty rampage after Christopher Robin abandons them for college. The film was shown to fourth graders at an Academy of Innovative Education on October second. That's not even close to Halloween. I feel completely abandoned by the school, Michelle Diaz, a parent. Uh, a parent whose twins were in the fourth grade class told CBS News, adding that the movie was shown because of a careless teacher. According to Diaz, the film played for 20 to 30 minutes. That's enough. Before the <laughs> teacher. I mean, at least it wasn't a Godzilla porno. <laughs> 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 she said that the students were allowed to pick a movie to watch and they selected Blood and Honey, but it's not for them to decide what they want. It's up to the professor to look at the content. So we're gonna hey, they we're gonna picked, watch it. To, to be fair though, they did pick it though. They didn't have to. I'm not saying they should have, but they should put well, every single I mean, kid who requested they, it against the wall, not the teacher. If the kids picked a porno, I don't think the teacher should play. <laughs> Nobody's porno. talking about that, dude. Teach, like, teach, wow, search for the Godzilla porno. Damn, dude, you're into that shit. Fuck. The first scene has topless women in it. Oh. The very first scene. Yeah, but that's not porno. Though. It's just nudity. And it went on for 30 minutes. Huh? This is he didn't grade stop four. the movie, even though Look there that, were like, kids saying, hey, stop the movie. There's titties on screen. No, oh, wait, no, please, we don't want to watch this. Please. Don't, no, please. Don't. Teacher. Have I, I've, 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 I've told no. the story. I, I wasn't in this class, but when I was in fourth grade. No, not fourth grade. Ninth grade. <laughs> a little bit different. <laughs> when I was in ninth grade, um, some like I was in honors English, so I was in a different English course than the rest of my peers. Um, and actually, I think it was in tenth grade. It doesn't matter. I was in a different course, so I wasn't in this class. But apparently, um, they show at, at my good Christian school. They show the Romeo and Juliet uh, movie adaptation that has the sex scene. And uh, in, in the ninth grade. Is, is that the one they that play it? DiCaprio hold up, guns? they play it on VHS, and yet nobody thought to just tape it, cut out the sex scene, and just have the version that you show skip right through it. <laughs> so, at one point, uh, when I was in 10th grade, and all my classmates were actually in 10th grade English, um. They played the thing and the teacher was like grading papers, something got distracted. The sex scene comes on the room erupts boys yeah. and girls squealing and cheering and yelling, you know, female students getting uncomfortable and trying to get the teacher's attention. And the teacher says, shut the fuck up. I'm grading papers or whatever. The teacher <laughs> finally gets notified that there's tits on screen and like falls over herself to get out of her chair to then run in front of the screen and block it with her body. <laughs> Good times. I didn't get to be a part of the Romeo and Juliet one. Un un the... Because we had the TV and one of those, it was hanging from the ceiling. So it was like impossible to block it. <laughs> so we just got the whole thing edited. <laughs> Nice. Yeah. Was it the Leonardo DiCaprio Romeo and Juliet? Was no, I don't believe so. Okay. Because I saw the that one on. I think I was in middle school when I saw that one, or was it high school? And anyway, so nope, we all yeah, agree no, it was, that it's it was like, high school. 
There's we all agree the best Romeo and Juliet adaptation was Romeo Must Die with Jet Li. <laughs> yes, Romeo <laughs> Must Die. And at the end, he doesn't kiss the girl because racial tensions. We can't have a Chinese dude and a black girl kiss. Him. That's weird. So, That's so why we all yep. agree that it's like <laughs> the, 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 the boys in the class ask for the we honey. We should watch all uh, the adaptations in one night for a watch club or for watch party. Well, Winnie the Pooh, and then the girls in the class were like, turn it off, turn it off. Like, that's 100% what happened. That's probably, yes, yeah, most likely. Maybe. Perhaps. <laughs> and if it was showing dudes dong, the guys would like be. Like, if it was showing care. dudes dongs, literally the entire class would be saying, turn it off, turn it off. <laughs> I don't, I don't know. know. Maybe some of the chicks would I don't be think, liking it. I don't think, I, honestly, I don't think I would care. <laughs> like, because it's not as good as mine, of course. <laughs> October 29th. Two, 2023 Reese comes out as gay. <laughs> no, I'm just saying, like, I, I, I wouldn't be like intimidated because like nothing can compare to mine. So, right, like, you got an actual fine. anaconda. Well, well it, it, according to here, Brad, it's the 30th, so 29th. Or oh, 30. yeah, it is the 30th. Now yeah. it can't go down in history correctly. Thanks. <laughs> well, depending on who you ask. Circa. 29 to 30. <laughs> Circa October 29, 2023. Slash 30th. 2022. Right. So uh, Miss Vera Hirsch, the head of the school, sent the following statement to CBS News. Quote, the Academy for Innovative Education has become aware that a segment of a horror movie was shown to fourth graders Monday, October 2nd, 2023. that was not suitable for the age group. Our administration promptly addressed this issue directly with the teacher and has taken appropriate action to ensure the safety and well-being of our students uh, by firing that bitch. Uh, (laughs) We are actively monitoring the students and our mental health counselor and principal have already met with those students who have expressed concerns. Winnie the Pooh Blood and Honey was released without a rating. Oh, that's how they got away with it. Uh, Which would explain how the film would end up as an option uh, in the Netflix Kids app, right? <laughs> oh, cool. As an option right. for fourth a- graders to watch. What did they watch it at? The hey, the app. film's director, Reese Waterfield. <laughs> nice. <laughs> revealed in an interview with Variety last year that he shot the project in only 10 days near the Ashdown Forest in England. The inspiration of the Hundred Acre Woods as depicted in the original Winnie the Pooh stories. The characters entered the public domain last year to avoid copyright issues with Disney, which owns the interpretation of the characters as seen in various films and television shows. Certain elements were changed, including swapping Pooh Bear's red shirt for lumberjack gear and omitting characters like Tigger, who are still under copyright. Oh, well. At I least there's going to be in a sequel. Do you think a black guy will play him? <laughs> All right. All right, series news. Can you believe Fudnam's missing this? I would a loser. Who do we got to blame for this? Again? <laughs> I'm going to start sweating. <laughs> That's right. I'd rather have a green line. <laughs> All right, Attack on Titan, the final chapters, part two anime's main trailer streamed. Yeah. Nice. And he fumbled the ball. <laughs> well, you still haven't gotten down to the update okay. part. All right. <laughs> it's not my fault. <laughs> Attack on Titan, the final season, the final chapters, parts one and two, are also getting streamed in Japan. A- Attack just, in... Hold on. <laughs> just gay. <laughs> you failed. You're drunk. Um, are also getting streamed, serving as episodes 88 through 94 of Attack on Titan, the final season. So um, the final chapters, was that a movie previously or something? Like you know, you know, the, the first special is about an hour long. The second one's going to be 85 minutes. So like they're not like TV episodes mm-hmm. format. So they're being cut into TV episode format now. We don't know whether they're going to like add footage to, because obviously you probably won't cut mm-hmm. up just perfectly for, or, or what they're going to say, going to cut footage or something like the Mugen Train arc. Mm-hmm. Adding like what sixty cuts or something. So and who knows what it, how Funimation is going to release it on on disc? They'll probably pull an Aniplex and release both of them or something. <laughs> I'll tell you what. <laughs> I'll tell you how Gruncher only needs to release that. 
definitely the exact precise same height as the rest of the box sets that I have. You bastards. <laughs> All right, chilling in uh, another world okay. with level two super uh, cheat powers. Okay, took me a second. Like, what are you talking about? <laughs> Sorry. In another world no, I... with my big titties is what I'm calling this one. That's... It's not bestiality, guys. You know, bestiality is okay if it looks like that. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay if she looks half retarded. <laughs> it does, actually. <laughs> Unnamed memory TV anime unveils majestic character visual. Oh, 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 there you go. Um, That's kind of a cookie cutter looking visual. It's not very majestic. It, it is, yeah. And I'll be honest, like this is just an amorphous blob over here where her knee is supposed to be. Kind of, kind of, kind of weak. Yeah. Seventh time loop. The villainess enjoys a carefree life married to her worst enemy. Here's if the visual any, account. If any visual is majestic, it's this one. Yes. Like, clearly. Oh, or... shit. He stabbed her. <laughs> With his dick. <laughs> her sword is like cut in half and his sword is all the way through her. <laughs> well, is that how you became worst enemies? Oh, no, no. Oh, no. He kills a guy. Who reincarnates as the girlfriend of the guy who killed him? Uh, oh no! Oh, that is a flamboyantly gay character. Wow, that's the same. That's the same uh, knee position as that <laughs> other girl. <laughs> Oh, okay. I thought that... <laughs> okay, okay, I see. <laughs> I don't see. I'm not no, I'm not sure what's happening here. <laughs> Big brother? <laughs> All right, Maybe. anyway, moving on. All right, Pole Princess anime reveals more. Uh, just reminding you that uh, the anime about pole dancers is coming out. <laughs> I think that's a movie, the TV series, or the YouTube series has already been out. <laughs> the series follows 17 year old Hinano whose grandmother owns a planetarium just after she finds that the planetarium is about to be shut down she meets a beautiful woman dancing on a pole the chance encounter gives her an idea draw people to the failing planetarium by turning it into a strip <laughs> 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 now you know that is a much better premise than what they actually wrote there <laughs> <laughs> business, business, business. <laughs> Solving Japan's birth rate problem with prostitution. <laughs> <laughs> All right. An Archdemon's Dilemma How to Love Your Elf Bride. So, um, the one on the left is uh, the pre erection. And then it got awkward. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> yeah, anyway. No, it's how to love, not how to make love. Oh, you're right. My mistake. <laughs> original, t original TV anime Delusional Monthly Magazine reveals new key visual. Now, I don't know about you, but I want to live in a world where Anaris Canones could voice this character and Zena Robinson could voice this character and they can be the ones making the white power symbol. <laughs> <in the anime. laughs> I'm all for that. <laughs> I can't wait to find out what that's supposed to be. <laughs> I mean, a lot of Look at all these uh look at all these diverse characters. <laughs> I don't know why everybody's crying, you know. See, Pro ZD is the only one who's getting shafted because there's a long established tradition that white people get to voice the Asian characters. So he's like, "Well, fuck, man. I don't get to be anyone." 
to be the dog. <laughs> After the chipmunk, maybe. <laughs> All right. In other news. <laughs> After school Hanako Kun is also making the wife house. <laughs> now I couldn't help but think about uh the original show for this is called Toilet Bound. Um Hanako Kun. Hanako Kun, yeah, whatever. And uh I just can't help but think of it as um uh, uh, poop. <laughs> Poop fetishes <laughs> JT Kuhn. <laughs> it kind of <laughs> looks like JT a little bit. <laughs> toilet bound. Oh, that's toilet like, bound. Toilet yeah. Bound. Like homeward bound. Yeah. Toilet bound. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Desperately yes. trying to get there. <laughs> Desperately. <laughs> Enjoying the process. <laughs> <laughs> In leather pants. All right. Uh, Bang Brave, Bang Bravern premieres January 2024. Um, so your title is Bang Brave. Bang Brave, young men. Bang Bravern, right? <laughs> so of course you're going to highlight the dicks in their outfits. Like, what in the <laughs> world? <laughs> you think this is a weird outfit? What the fuck? That is the eye draw. What the fuck? <laughs> what? Your eyes go right to them. <laughs> Like, what the hell's going down down there? Why like, would you the, name them? Bang Brave? Them. It's like they're freaking put, they're literally it pushing so their crotches out there. Like, the oh man, oh my gosh. Oh, hello. There's waifus in it too. Nice. Like females. In <laughs> fact, all the other okay, not all the others. Oh. I was about to say all the other characters are females. I just can't help but notice all of the uh, children representation they're getting these days. Yeah. Crazy. Well, you know, Zeno Robinson will clearly get that. <laughs> Man, Pro ZD really got shafted, but just like all the POC voice actors are, <clears throat> they're well represented now. In fact, just because I happen to have them here, I'm going to snip in two more articles. <laughs> Uh, NBA player uh, Ru Rui Hachimura is uh, made a guest appearance as himself on Cran Chin Chan. Hmm. He plays for the Lakers. Hmm. So there you go. Uh, I'm sure Zeno Robinson will be getting that role. Good for him. So happy. Uh, uh, and are you, are you, if they ever bring come back to dub Chin Chan? <laughs> oh, they'll do it just to give black people more roles. That's how that's how the industry works. <laughs> But they will not give Pro ZD any roles. He only gets to be chipmunks and robots. <laughs> All right. So also in uh, in this da da da. <laughs> Do you think he this character grew up without a da da da? <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> that joke didn't test well with audiences. <laughs> Snip it from the record. <laughs> All right. So do you guys remember the anime that's coming out called Shy? It's about like the superhero magical girl who's right. like super shy, right? Yeah. So she's she has a hard time being a hero because she's so shy. Yeah. yeah. So uh, another anime is beating it to the punch, even though this has already come out. Uh, and it's called <laughs> Gushing Over Magical Girls. And oh my gosh. <laughs> Do you think they're a little shy? <laughs> Let me just give you let me give you a, a brief bit. a brief moment here. Yeah, so there you oh, go. Dang. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And she's yeah. like the she like she's a fan of magical girls, but becomes the yes. villain of her favorite magical girl group or something. Like what? Here over the <laughs> Yeah, so she's gushing. In every sense of the word, over magical girls. Uh, also, woof down dog signal. Julie, there's it's a new crazy. anime here. It's called Dog Signal. It's Prozy. You can play the dogs. Prozy can play the dog. My favorite thing about this is that you get uh, you get Japan Kirby and America Kirby on the cover. <laughs> Angry eyes. 
A dog has say? such fuck you energy. <laughs> <laughs> What's that you say? Uh, proud doggy. <laughs> <laughs> Oof. <laughs> <laughs> now, if you're if you're wondering if this would be available on Stealth Weeb, it looks like shit. <laughs> if it shows up in the show, and like I can decipher what it's supposed to look like a little bit better, yes, it will. <laughs> I'll put on Stealth Weeb. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Rising the Shield Hero Season 3 English dub reveals cast and crew and release dates. So nobody cares about any of that. Uh, I just wanted to remind you that next podcast, because we're definitely getting through the Watch Club tonight, we're going to start doing Shield Hero Season 2. Yay. Yeah! And I can't wait to see... Um... Oh, God, why can't I remember her name now? Who? The fairy girl. Philo? Philo, right? I can't wait to see her do her idol dance. That's in season three. I know. I'm still <laughs> looking forward to it. How dare you? <laughs> All right. Also, Hajime no Ippo Mangaka says, animators should stop appropriating my characters. What? Is he calling out Michael B. Jordan? <gasps> Damn. These POCs think they can do whatever they want. <laughs> <laughs> Person of Trojan descent, okay? <laughs> All right. Hajime no Ippo, uh, mangaka George Morikawa, recently took to Twitter to lash out at animators who worked on the anime adaptation of his manga, saying they should stop appropriating his characters for signing autographs to fans. What a dick! Are you serious? Wait, so he's calling out, like, voice actors for signing? No, no, no. He's calling out the animators who yeah. drew freaking Epo doing the Dempsey role and stuff. Those iconic animation scenes that said, no, you can't draw a picture of Epo with your autograph. Stop appropriating my characters. Like, what the hell? That's dumb. Morikawa talked about how a fan had sent a post showing off their Epo collection but in the middle of it was a drawing paper with a drawing of Epo he hadn't done. What about the though whole it was signed, anime? <laughs> though it was signed, so it was pretty easy to figure out who'd drawn it. And you know what I did? I took a page out of Wendy Lee's book and blasted his ass on Twitter as seen up here. <laughs> right? What the hell? Murakawa was angry at the possibility the drawing and signature were done for money, especially as fake signatures had become common in auctions as of late. While Morikawa admitted that the quality of the drawing was high due to being drawn by the animation director of the anime, he called for the people who worked on the anime to stop appropriating his characters for signatures. What a dick! Seriously! Oh my gosh, man! That's like asking voice actors to not say, hey, thanks, Mike, signed Vic, or signed Edward Elric, or whatever. Like, you know. Morikawa's comments sparked a debate in the animator community, with animation director Nishi Ter Terumi talking about how it was unfair that the manga suddenly took offense. Seemingly directed specifically towards animators, especially considering most anime are adaptations of other media. Jerumi pointed out how Morikawa, especially because I'm sure the fan who posted the picture of his Epo collection specifically asked the animation director, please, can you draw me a picture of Epo and sign it for my collection? Because I'm a fucking Epo fan, not some random one shot, you know, not based on a manga anime you did. Uh, draw me a picture of Zoidberg and sign it. <laughs> like, <you know>. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody cared about Zoidberg. Suddenly directed visit towards anime, especially considering the adaptation of the media. Terumi pointed out how Morikawa hadn't, uh, how Morikawa didn't particularly object to his characters being drawn in Dojinshi, despite. <laughs> so you heard it here first, folks. If you're an animator and your signing works, just have Epo's monstrous dick in the shot 
And then it's okay because it's just yeah. at that point. <laughs> Fight fan art by animators who worked on the show being the same in concept. Some other animators also swore they would <laughs> never work on adaptations of Morikawa's work ever again. Jeez, what a fucking dick thing. Can't believe you would do that, George Morikawa. That sucks. All right. Okay. Uh, let's go into manga news. Are there any uh, chats I should uh, address? Uh, Just while I'm Randy's opening all these tabs. Star and stuff. Cool. I'm going right. to check them out. Uh, nothing new. I think though. you covered all the start stuff. Yeah. Oh. No new start. Slacking stuff. on the job, watching Godzilla porno. Thanks, Randy. <laughs> all right uh, uh, uh it was everything animated was the last guy i talked about right cool um still no gotcha chronicles kicks are yeah yeah how about that mirage <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna cover it it's finally gonna come out and we're gonna show clips from like the first 15 podcasts where we were showing it <laughs> still not still out. out still not out still not out still not out still not out still nope mm-hmm. He looks like Adam Sandler's character from Hotel Transylvania. I think he means the guy Gene YouTuber. You taper YouTuber. <laughs> oh, I'm back. Sorry, years. had Myanmar tuition. Wow, that that's something I've never heard of. <laughs> they have schools in Myanmar. <laughs> I don't tuition. Like you had to go pay it, or. <clears throat> Wendy Lee doesn't need to apologize. They yes, yes, based, hundred percent. They need to apologize to her. They need to bend over backwards and bow down to her because the career exists for them to be in because of her. Does Kaiju Gijinka count? What uh, is that? Is that the uh, Godzilla porno? <laughs> <laughs> Jake Skywalker's in anime now? Uh yes. Is that who that was in uh in the that we didn't recognize the name? We said he was a newcomer. Honeysuckle and Blood. Attack on Titans production has been botched in season three. Yes, we don't talk about that here. <laughs> I hope those woke VAs don't get you haven't even watched season four. <laughs> well, but I know the CG. On um, the Broadcast. In season three. Okay, never mind. <laughs> All right. Yeah, the guys you got. Okay, well, the cool. Season, Arcana. The, see, the bad CG for Wit started in season two. So. True. Sort of on the line, Arthur. Quote, it's hard to prove you truly created your work. So something we haven't covered, because um, it didn't have an article. Um, recently, there was an incident similar. Like, it seemed like it was the spiritual successor to the Kyoto animation arson in that um, the Sailor Moon anime director is having to sue a woman because she's claiming he plagiarized his work. And I believe she was even like threatening him. Right. Um, Evoking Kyoani vibes. Right. Um, So the sort out online author is now talking about how hard it is to actually prove your works are truly original because I'm sure Everybody noticed Dot Hack is the same show, right? <laughs> um, so Sailor Moon anime director Kunihiko Ikuhara had received multiple emails from the woman, despite comparing his drawings to the woman's and not seeing any resemblance. The woman continued to escalate her actions under the accusation of destroying her reputation and mockery. Hmm, I know the type. Uh, sending emails to the anime indus- to the anime company, talent agencies, and illustrators involved with the series. How dare you work on Sailor Moon? It should be me, this random woman. <laughs> Seeing shades of KyoAni. Ikuhara discussed and strengthened police activity in his area before finally suing the woman for 33 million yen, later 44 million, <clears throat> in damages over slander to protect creators from such trouble in the future. The trial is due to conclude in December of 2023. 
When details of Ikuhara's case were revealed, Sword on the Line creator Reiki Kawahara discussed on Twitter just how hard it is to conclusively prove the originality of one's work. A long while back, I received a message from someone claiming they were the original author of Sword Art Online, but they weren't. <clears throat> but they weren't angry. They were more confused on why their original work was published without their realization, and I had no idea how to deal with them. And so I, uh, and so I thought then, from an objective standpoint, it's surprisingly not that simple to prove you are the creator slash creative rights holder of your own work. Of course, you can register your copyright with the government, but that this doesn't prove you are the creative rights holder. It kind of does, actually. Um, <clears throat> it kind of does in a court of law. You know? <laughs> yeah, I'm going to go through that on Twitter. If someone started a lawsuit with me saying that Sword Art Online is stolen work, I can show my 2022... I'm sorry, my 2002 homepage to easily testify to the history, but pro but proving the work itself is original takes quite a bit of documentation and effort. If only there were some sort of certificate, like a patent, is what I think sometimes. But if such a system existed, it would be misused in its own manner as well. But this sort of trouble seems like it'll only increase and not decrease. So I hope that there will be measures implemented in the future to reduce the amount of work and stress for the creators. That's all. Wow. I am so happy I covered that on stream and didn't proofread it beforehand because <laughs> All right. <clears throat> In manga news, Kenshiro Sakamoto launches Crazy Sun manga. Now, I only know of one Crazy Sun, and he chases me around in Mario 3. Four? Mm. Two? Three. Two. Three? Yes, three. three. <laughs> okay. All right. <clears throat> so... uh The horror action manga is about Taiyo, who lives with his younger sister Hinata. They are poor, but they are happy together. But suddenly, a creepy insect-like creature starts attacking them every night. When they, when they are finally cornered, a mysterious woman appears before them. What does she intend to do with the siblings? Oh, geez. Lord, who knows, right? <laughs> like, um, By the way, hmm. Island of Giant Insects Watch Club win. Anyway, so uh, that's getting an anime. Or wait, no, hold on, that was not getting an anime. That's this is a, a manga. A manga. <laughs> <laughs> uh, also, Katsuhiro Toma teases a new manga again, um, in the weirdest way possible. <laughs> he shared a photo of uh, the prophetic character Kyoko, drawn on a whiteboard with the text, "I had a dream." Otomo Sensei drew a new manga. And he, he he tweeted it out with the sentence, Kyoko's prophetic dream will become reality. Now, here's where it gets funny. Otomo had revealed in 2012, you know, 11 years ago, that he was preparing his first long series since Akira. Apparently, he wants to do the whole thing <laughs> before he releases it. All of Bakuman. Like that one character drew in like 30 some volumes about a beaver and just like, oh, here's a new series. <laughs> he said the same year that the manga would take place in the Meiji era and that he would work on the manga himself without assistance. The manga was supposed to debut that fall in Shogaku Khan's Weekly Shonen Sunday magazine, but it was delayed. And Otoma said that the target audience may be older than Weekly Shonen Sundays. Oh, so... <laughs> Took me 11 years to find a new <laughs> publisher. <laughs> Otomo <laughs> then said in 2018 interview in Shogaku Khan's big comic magazine that he's working for a full length manga. I'm sorry, working on a full length manga, but the contents were secret. He added that he felt stuck when it came to putting his pencil to paper for 11 years, <laughs> but that he was finding enjoyment in working away at it. Seriously, if you're still on chapter one, this is not a good sign. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, any thoughts? No. Nah. All right. Nikkei Koro Koro manga spinoff raises concerns for children's fetishes. Yeah. So is it a, is it a concern? Is it a, do they mean lollycon? <laughs> do they mean infantilism? Should I have scrolled down on this before I 
brought it on the stream. <laughs> so the first bit, anniversary, a uh, little bit risky yeah. there. It's all right. No, <laughs> fully clothed. Don't worry. The first anniversary live stream for Nikkei Goddess of Victory. You know that game <laughs> announced not only new characters and costumes, but also a weekly Koro Koro magazine manga spinoff that had people wondering if kids should be exposed to the sheer amount of sexy designs. Wait a minute. Is it a Nikkei, fetish? Yes. Nikkei Goddess of Victory. Yeah, the video game. So, Nike? No. Do you see? It's spelled with two Ks. Nike K. <laughs> yeah, but Nikkei. that's good because... It's different. Okay. <laughs> Ikastro e says, LOL, Otomo really went ahead and announced a new manga in the most autistic way possible. Had no idea he was trying to work on something this whole time, though. For 11 years, dude. At least he's not like Hunter Hunter guy where he's like, I'm working again. And then the next day he's like, oh, no, my back. <laughs> I have to take another eight months off to play Dragon Quest. You know? <laughs> All right. So anyway, um, the manga spinoff is being drawn by Dojin artist Utsumi Utsusumi Kyo. With this being the artist's first manga publication, and is a slice of life that takes place in a peaceful alternate universe. Oh, why <laughs> Utsusumi? Then later tweeted a screenshot of Japan's trends, which included Korokoro and grade schoolers' fetishes. What? With the buzz around the announcement questioning the decision to publish the manga in the children-oriented magazine. So is he saying that on Twitter, locally in Japan, it was trending Korokoro and grade schoolers' fetishes because the because of him, because he's a doujin artist who is doing a children's manga. And they're thinking like, oh man, I, I don't trust him with the kids, you know, <laughs> with the buzz around the announcement, questioning the decision to publish a manga in children oriented magazine. Some of the reactions from Japanese users, Koro Koro, seriously, this is going to twist grade schoolers fetishes. Well, I guess the Momotaro manga in the past was just as erotic, so it's okay. I'm going to need some examples of these. I am like not following this. Do they mean like Momotaro walking around without pants on? Like like the little pecker hanging out like Goku penis syndrome? <laughs> Are we, is this what we're talking about? <laughs> the little baby gets pulled from the bamboo stalk and his, his weenie's out? Like, is this what we're talking about? Koro Koro has always been a source of sexual awakening since a long time ago. Oh, the cool 2T says mystery. No, brother. No, I'm so sorry. Luckily, uh, it hopefully won't be blocked worldwide because of a clip from Bleach we played. <laughs> if it is, you can watch it on Rumble. Rumble.com slash whatever my URL is. <laughs> um People are hyping up kids getting twisted fetishes from Duel Master and Koro Koro, but kids nowadays are probably more stimulated browsing Twitter on sub accounts. Koro Koro with both Nikkei and Uma Musume in it is going to make kids into kinky stuff later on. I think it's not right that the magazine likes to do this sort of thing now and then. Children's fetishes? Awakening to Monster Musume with Peniru wa Kawaii Slime? Cross-dressing with Beyblade? And busty bodies with Nikkei? You know this is the standard for elementary school fetishes in the Reiwa era now, right? Oh no, how dare you be attracted to voluptuous women? <laughs> I don't get how Nikkei is going to introduce kids to kinks. Aren't they going to just become healthy boys into big tits and ass? <laughs> <laughs> My wife even laughed at that one. <laughs> Twisting one's fetishes refers to things like only getting hard-ons from cross-dressing boys getting a boner or only becoming sexually excited by images of girls penetrating other girls. Wow. Okay. <laughs> this was quite the article. Wow. Okay. We're just going <laughs> to... Why, why do people have... Why do people have an issue with that? 
when this has happened before <clears throat> with like the Miss Nagatago or uh, whatever. Don't toy Nagatoro? me. Don't toy Nagatoro? with me. Miss Nagatoro. There you go. Got yep. it out. Good job. Um, Good job not throwing a racial slur in there. <laughs> <laughs> hey, before I. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. All right. The cool 2T says, is this JT's origin story? I believe JT's origin story was probably Elsa Gate. That's what I like to believe. He was one of those children who watched the videos of Spider-Man um, giving injections to pregnant Elsa before they shit on each other or whatever. Oh, I think sure. that's what I like to think his origin story is. Right? Um, wow. Ecasher says, I don't remember dual, mon dual Masters having weird stuff when I watched it as a kid. But like, um, you know, like Yu-Gi-Oh has like Dark Magician Girl. I know it's a different show, but I think that's what they mean. Like some of the monsters are voluptuous women, like uh, Lady Devamon in Digimon. That shaped my childhood fetish mm. <laughs> of <Yeah>. undead women. <laughs> Reese, <laughs> Reese, <laughs> Reese. Did I, you I, just I, out I, yourself yeah. as no. JT's movie fans? No. I put that in there because JT Poopy Pants said he was leaving. And I was just like, this is the perfect time to say it. So I'm just putting it in there. Well, you could have just gone to the starred one. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So um, last podcast, we covered this article. Lollipop Chainsaw Repop producer confirms upcoming remake will leave Juliet's appearance uncensored. But what's this? Lollipop Chainsaw Repop director clarifies game will feature the original scenario and script without any changes, and the dev team is going to fight to the best of their ability against censorship. Yeah. <laughs> We're losing the battle already. <laughs> So seeking to put an end to the flurry of confusion regarding the title's upcoming leap to modern consoles, Lollipop Chainsaw Repop director Yoshimi Yasuda has, def has definitively clarified that the title will be neither a remake or a remaster, but rather a technical and graphical upgrade to the original game. What's wh How is that different than a remaster? I don't know. They go, they, they go back and forth in this article about the terms actually don't really mean anything, so they're like super confusing whenever they get brought up at all. Yeah. So he said, regarding the scenario and script of Repop, we have decided to use the original Lollipop Chainsaw scenario and script without any changes. Up until now, we have been open-mindedly discussing the scenario, but we will not be making any additions or changes to it after all. The original scenario is a claim, and the requests of fans were both reasons that went into this decision. On the other hand, we will be making improvements and adding new elements with the purpose of increasing the game's appeal. Praised for details, I'm sorry, pressed, pressed for details on the request of fans he had received, Yasuda detailed, quote, please don't change the game scenario and worldview and please make it uncensored. <laughs> please let me mod it. <laughs> From there, we made the decision not to change the script taking into account both the wishes of users and international reviews. Mm. That's where you failed. <laughs> he then recalled, as for requests for the game to be uncensored, we are also working on realizing this to the best of our ability. <clears throat> as for what changes the dev team was looking to make, battle is an element we're quite focused on. We would like to revamp the battles, and it's something that the console action game players of today will enjoy, such as doing away with panty shots, no, with any sluggishness in chainsaw battles, with speed adjustments, improving the input timing for cheerleading in chainsaw combo attacks, as well as improving camera movement. I don't like mm. that. <laughs> Young man, that camera movement was fine. <laughs> Maybe uh -huh. get it even go lower. All the, <laughs> go all the way up in there. Then we'll, we'll, we'll maybe say it's okay. As I said, as the chief director of the original Lollipop Chainsaw, I have a good understanding of the issues it had, and I intend to tackle them through the development of Repop. Aside from improvements to battle, 
We will also be making improvements to things like resolution, frame rate, loading time, and more. We are carefully selecting new elements to raise the game's appeal, such as changeable extra functions for the chainsaw and a consecutive hit and a consecutive hit system independent of the combo attack system. For repop, we will be going down the tried and true path of keeping everything that the original game was highly acclaimed for and improving everything that had previously been received poorly. While responding to user requests and adding carefully selected new features, we're going to make Repop a game that everyone can love and uh, enjoy that, on modern consoles. That's going to be the problem right there. Yes. From now on, I will be making updates about a once uh, I will be making updates about once a week on Twitter to explain improvements and new features to the game. I make sure to look at user messages, so don't hesitate to share your opinions or wishes with us. Thank you for your continued support for Repop. So you you heard it here first, folks. Go ahead, go to Twitter and tell him what you want out of uh, Lollipop Chainsaw. I don't know. I never played it. And I don't really care. Meanwhile, Metal Gear Solid 3 Remake doubles down on realism. I mean, the PS2 game was pretty groundbreaking. This is just unfair. It looks fucking unbelievable. Like, the engine they have going, they're using Unreal Engine 5, by the way, but the, the way that they have Snake get muddied up looks so real the freaking cayman or whatever the fuck this is julie tell me what is this? cayman crocodile uh, it, it has a different name it's a derpodile it's <laughs> zipper face on, it look at that shit jt would be so horny right now <laughs> There are parts in the original game for PS2 where you put on the camo and you like leave the room for a second or whatever. Like you look away to eat a cheese it or whatever. And then you look back and you honestly can't see your character anymore. And you have to move. To be, oh, there I am. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> for PS2, right? This is just unbelievable now. Look at that shit. Yeah, that's another thing. There's very tiny creatures in the original PS2 game um, that you can only see, really, because they're moving. When you slow down and start, you know, crouching and, you know, sneaking... And then all of a sudden you start noticing something near you is moving, right? And you can like knife it like the snake here. Great game. Seriously, I would love to play this remake, actually. Never will. <laughs> it ain't happening. <laughs> anyway. You don't have a PS5. R.I.P. I'm not as cool as Ray in love with my 19-inch Venom. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Hideo Kojima goes uncredited in Metal Gear Solid Master Collection's new credits. Oof. How dare you? This franchise exists because of him. <laughs> so while Kojima's name appears in the credits for the three games individually, as their ports of the games with little alteration, the wrappers for each game, which contain their own credit screens, don't mention Hideo Kojima or even former Snake voice actor David Hayter or any of the other cast. Not even Phil Lamar, a person of color, gets referenced. <laughs> Uh, the, the Metal Gear Solid Master Collection's new credits don't mention Hideo Kojima by name, but instead include a message thanking all original Metal Gear series fans. Come on. 
bend over backwards for your king. <laughs> Couldn't Hideo Kojima like sue them for like royalties because they didn't credit him for the this edition? Like, sure, the original credits. Um, you know, they technically can say, "Oh no." I mean, I, I bet he yeah. could. I don't think he'd win though. Okay. And the problem is that Konami owns the rights to Metal Gear Solid. That's you know, that's true. like there's there's this huge issue with Konami over the fact that Hideo Kojima is a genius and he didn't get to take his magnum opus with him. And now he had to make death stranding sad day. All right. In similar news, American McGee says they were emotionally quite destroyed by EA canceling Alice asylum. And now they can't touch the IP quote for the rest of their life. No end quote. <laughs> I guess the rest of the article is a direct quote from him. <laughs> so um, still talking. Understandably, a lot of Alice fans were disappointed by the asylum news, which resulted in several people giving the developer suggestions as to, as to how to get a new project off the ground, including developing a spiritual sequel or that, uh, or that McGee create a new game based on Lewis Carroll's Alice in Wonderland story as it's in the public domain. Yep. Unfortunately, yep. McGee says the Alice rights are kind of complicated, but it all boils down to I, American McGee, have no control over ownership in or ability to do things similar to or derivative of Alice in Wonderland or anything like it for the rest of my life. Wow. That's hmm. super again. Luck. I mean, it's it's not as important in my opinion as metal gear solid but a beloved franchise literally it's in the name american mcgee's alice in wonderland or whatever it's whatever the original game was called like he's the creative mind behind it and ea is just like nah fuck you <laughs> in other news platinum games co-founder hideki kamiya can't work in the game industry for one year i'm seeing a pattern here <laughs> <laughs> So Kamiya left um, left the company on October 12th and started his own YouTube channel. It's moving into our turf. <laughs> on, September, on September 25th, we're mutuals now. <laughs> no. On September 25th, Platinum Games co-founder, game designer, and director Hideki Kamiya announced that he made the difficult decision to leave the company on October 12th. This is all Helena Taylor's fault. <laughs> <laughs> And so, as of last week, Kamiya is officially unemployed and started his own YouTube channel, posting his very first video in Japanese and English versions. As of press time, Kamiya's YouTube channel already has 16,000 subscribers. The video starts with the usual, I just left my job camera shot, with Kamiya coming out of Platinum Games office building, carrying a box of toys he had in the office. <laughs> That shit is funny. Right? <laughs> he then sits down somewhere to discuss what's to discuss what's next for him now that he left Platinum Games. For starters, Kamiya states he feels refreshed now that he has left the company, spending his days watching videos and programs on Netflix, YouTube, and Disney Plus. Kamiya also tries to explain why he left the company but is being careful with his words, confirming if it's possible to omit, bleep out anything. I don't He probably He has an NDA, basically. He I, I don't know. It's a weird, weirdly phrased thing. Hmm. In the end, he simply states he chose the path he thinks is right for him. He also clarifies that he is not retiring yet, but it will be a year until he can work again in the gaming industry due to reasons. <laughs> They basically gave, probably gave him a payoff, right? And the agreement is don't talk shit about us, right? For uh, yeah. I don't know, man. He might have. Um... Because why a year, right? Why does? Yeah, no. It sounds like year? it sounds like you know maybe he got a payout, like buy me out of my contract and I won't compete with you for over a year. Yeah, like, I, and I won't say anything dis disparaging about you guys. That's why <laughs> he has to be careful how he phrases words. Because that's probably part of the agreement for him to be off for a year and get that paycheck. 
As for the content of his YouTube channel, Kamiya, keeping in mind his almost 30-year career as a game designer, promised to create content that will be completely useless to developing games. Since he does not have any specific ideas for content yet, he asked for ideas, big mistake, you're going to get a kill any situation here, brother, <laughs> and suggestions in the video's comment section. Kamiya wrapped up the talk, and the video ended with him, just like any other unemployed Japanese citizen, going to Hello Work. That's where Hello Kitty works. An employment <laughs> service organization run by the Japanese government, which provides various services to job seekers for free in his classic red Lamborghini. <laughs> 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 I just love the juxtaposition. <laughs> Imagine Elon Musk doing a video like this where he leaves Twitter, right? But he gets in a rocket ship <laughs> and flies <laughs> away. Like, <laughs> Go to freaking Mars. I'm like, bye. Or he he's like crying. He's dabbing his crying eyes with money. You know, like <laughs> as he's getting his rocket ship. <laughs> All right. So, yeah, it seems like the gaming industry is. Uh, it's really got control over the those creators. Like the the people who really matter to the games being successful are being treated like shit. Fucking J.K. Rowling notwithstanding, right? <laughs> With Hogwarts Legacy, you know. <clears throat> Dude, she got so, blacklisted by the by Warner Brothers and everybody that mm -hmm. worked with her. Like uh, Daniel, was it Daniel Radcliffe? Is is that Daniel Radcliffe? Name? Yeah, Radcliffe. I, I just you've made me super curious as to which side of the fence uh um jk rowling is on in regards to the israel hamas conflict <laughs> <laughs> oh god pull up twitter to find out yeah because um jk rowling <sighs> essentially blacklisted from her own project that she created yeah. all because she had a disagreement with people forcing upon agendas so I got to tell you guys, capitalism is a wonderful thing. But when <laughs> communists think that they own your property, it's time to, to get out. <laughs> yeah. I thought you were going to say it's um, time to duel. <laughs> like you so uh, real quick, I do want to say. So let's let me just read this headline real quick. Fighting game maker SNK in support of AI generation. So. In a stark difference from uh, most of the industry, um, they are coming out in support, but they are saying we're putting folks on here. Well, I can um, say she's definitely for Hamas. Or not Hamas. <laughs> Israel. I'm sorry. I'm reading it is complicated. I remember. <laughs> I'm reading this tweet, and it's like I was look, literally staring at the word Hamas. I'm sorry, I was reading this tweet. He's definitely not for Hamas. Did you, you know how many celebrities got? Because he definitely is for a lot. Israel. Let's stay on topic though. On AI okay. generation, the sticking okay. issue is, of course, the problem of copyright. <laughs> But I think there's a possibility of using SNK's own assets to create a large-scale AI model that can generate content without copyright issues. See, the problem is you're going to train it on the shit you already censored. <laughs> but no, seriously, in, in terms of games, I think we're going to see a resurgence of indie-developed games, right? Which have always been largely some of the best games, right? But with the use of AI, a single person is uh, they unlock the ability to do every part. You know what I mean? Whereas previously, it's like, oh, I got to hire an artist. I got to hire a voice actor. I got to hire... Now you can do all of it easily at your fingertips. And you get to retain control. And that is the beautiful future I can't wait for. Another beautiful future, the blue archive players that can't stop looking at Opie and the latest bug. <laughs> Blue Archive players in Japan experienced a rather humorous bug that caused a pair of opi to appear stuck in the front of the screen. Here's a look at the Blue Archive opi bug shared by a user on Twitter. Yep. <laughs> so apparently this uh, image of one of the girls yeah. glitches out and just the tits remain on screen. I don't... Nice. I, other, other than women, I don't think any other person has an issue with that they're like yeah 
I mean, it would get kind of annoying. <laughs> I can't, <laughs> can't play the game. <laughs> yeah, but... <laughs> can't play the game, so you might as well play with yourself. <laughs> Fortunately for the Japanese, said, Masahiro man. Sakurai says the Japanese people have a higher tolerance for Echi. God bless them. God bless Masahiro Sakurai. <laughs> So Super Smash Bros. creator Masahiro Sakura was recently featured as a special guest on Game Center CX, where he talked about Japanese people having, quote, a higher tolerance for ecchi when looking back at old Sega games. Game Center CX was, has been celebrating 40 years of Sega hardware and brought in Masahiro Sakura to play some games on the Mega Drive Mini 1.2 pardon, 1 .2, while sharing commentary from a developer's perspective. While playing Bare Knuckle 2, known as Streets of Rage 2 outside of Japan, Sakurai showed how players could take a peek at Pansu by performing a jump kick attack when playing as the female character Blaze. However, he then changed it to the Western version and pointed out Blaze's panties are no longer visible, showing a look at some of their earlier instances of censorship in localization. <laughs> it's not enough Should to drop a nuke harder. on us! <laughs> I think the Japanese have a higher tolerance for etchy stuff, said Masahiro Sakurai when asked if the United States and others are more strict regarding regulations. Anyway, so he talks about it at four, 4 minutes 55 seconds in the video if you want to watch it. Thoughts? They should have tried harder. I think some Americans have a tolerance for that too. It's just certain ones don't. AKA political people that pretend they don't have that issue of not liking it, but in reality they do. Just... Quiet. Yeah, only uh, only men of culture understand. <laughs> uh, the cool TC says, "Or do a bait and switch where they patch repop after the fact." Yeah, that might happen. Oh, he said, "I hope repop doesn't disappoint." Or do a bait and switch. Yeah. Uh oh! Look at you, Mirage, the Indian Gavial crocodile. Alive Madness Returns was really good. Oh, I don't know what that means. That's a horrible contract. Can't even make something similar. I know that's probably standard corporate copyright stuff to prevent constant split-offs, but still, brutal. I think it makes sense. Like, they don't want... They know... that. Like, that's, that's the contract of a company that knows you're the reason the games they've been selling are selling. Right? They're saying, look... Everybody loves you. They don't love Bayonetta. They love you. If you go and make um, Thonganetta, they're going to buy that. So <laughs> I need you to not. <laughs> yeah, but Yakuza the also credited some of the devs, uncredited some of the devs. Oh, yeah. At the same time, though, concepts, there's so many concepts that are so similar. You can't, like, copyright a, ch a hot chick. I'm going to need you to augie deep throat that mic, Young King style. <laughs> you want me to suck on this thing? Yes, brother. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Look, you just you. you no, I'm just saying that like you the over, over the concept <laughs> of bayonetta, right? Of, uh -huh. of a hot chick shooting guns, right? In the future or parallel universes of herself, right? Mm -hmm. You can't really copyright that. that yeah, you can't I, copyright the multiple. <laughs> it's that's what I'm saying. You can't by that logic. You know how many animes would be copied? Like you can't do like a Dragon Ball Z uh, clone or a similar. Okay, it's not. The, it's that. not about copyright though. the The contract is a non compete clause. Okay. Meaning that they know that he is the reason the games sell. So it, giving them a year to to figure out what they're going to do to get some other IP going after he leaves is all they're asking. They know that he's going to be their biggest competitor when he makes his next game. So they have paid him a salary to stay home, to not compete with them so that they can get their shit together. Moving on. Big fucking news. Bandai's Gundam model 3D CAD data was leaked to the public. Bandai Namco announced on October 19th that the download of client files needed to access the Gundam metaverse has been temporarily suspended. The decision likely has something to do with the rumors of 3D CAD data of Gunpla models being leaked to the public, which have been spreading on social media like wildfire over the past day. 
Bandai commented for IT Media that they are, quote, currently in the process of confirming the facts. The Gundam Metaverse project was launched by uh, Bandai Namco on October 5th with the vision of creating a futuristic space colony-themed virtual space for Gundam fans to gather and communicate while immersed in the world of Gundam. General access to the Metaverse was opened from Mm -hmm. October 11th and is supposed to last until October 23rd. However, at the moment, client files, again, this is kind of like last week, client files uh, needed to access the Metaverse can no longer be downloaded. No official reason for the suspension has been given by Bandai Namco, but preceding the announcement, post by multiple users claiming to have extracted 3D CAD data of unreleased Gunpla models from the client data and using it to make 3D printed replicas started gathering attention on social media. In Twitter posts, which have since been deleted, users had been indicating that the data in question had not been secured or encrypted making it easy to extract and use privately. Some of the posts included screenshots of the 3D data and even photos of 3D printed Gunpla model parts. People had been commenting that the files were left so unprotected that even amateurs could extract them without issue. So for anybody who doesn't know, CAD um, is a math-based 3D modeling program that is used um, to build actual like um like the 3d models that represent a one-to-one exact replica of what the product that gets produced is right so um in 3d movies and stuff there's going to be a lot of cheating in 3d modeling um you're going to use polygons for the most part instead of you know nerve surfaces and curves based on math um and you can you know, the, there doesn't actually need to be a connecting point for the shoulder when it goes in there. It just kind of goes into the darkness and you don't think about it anymore, right? For the Gundam, right? But for the CAD files, they are designed specifically 100% exactly what they're going to look like when they're made as an actual toy. So by having those CAD files, they're able to 3D print them and assemble the models and they look one-to-one perfect as replicas of what would be sold by the company in stores, which makes it very easy for um, Chinese bootleggers to start bootlegging them. (laughs) So with rumors of the data leak spreading among Japanese and overseas communities alike, there has been a certain amount of panic about possible negative outcomes of the incident, such as people suggesting that now everyone will be able to recreate Bandai level replicas of yet unreleased models leading to dupes saturating the market (laughs) even before the release of official models. Bandai's intellectual property and knowledge becoming free access due to a security error is a point of concern for many. At the same time, and I'm not sure how much I buy this, at the same time, the matter may not be as doom-inducing as some make it out to be. According to reports by users who looked into the extent of the leak, only one Gunpla model was fully leaked, while the rest of the 3D data pertains to other objects in the metaverse. The downside is that the model, the Rising Freedom model from Mobile Suit Gundam Seed Freedom, is indeed unreleased, scheduled to go on sale January 2024. The hot new Christmas (laughs) item here. (laughs) On the other hand, this does not equal perfect replicas. As one user suggests, people were able to extract it to Blender, so it doesn't seem to be actual nerves data. Interesting. I don't think uh, it will have such an impact as the data isn't much different than what you can obtain by doing a 3D scan of a Gunpla model. Hmm. Mm. I think you can do nerves in mm. Blender. I think they're mistaken. Mm. Yeah, no. 3D Another, scans are so inaccurate. There's yeah. I, I no. think that they are absolutely wrong about this. It, Another it user have the mathematical like formulas for generating the the things, but mm-hmm. it's an exact 3D model of the model <laughs> kits. Just gonna open this for no reason whatsoever. <laughs> <laughs> hold on, just gonna hold on to that over here off screen. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, that'll come up later. <laughs> All right. Um, 
Another user experience with model kits suggests that even if possessing data of the individual parts, one cannot make an injection mold without knowledge of the characteristics of resin and flow path design, meaning that one will not be able to make more than a bootleg. No fucking duh. You're not going to get a perfect copy, but for all intents and purposes, you are. <laughs> also, you could just make the mold yourself. <laughs> like, yeah. you know, oh, you have to, you know, consider how it's going to flow. Okay. So take a minute and trial and error. Out. There you go. Yeah. Orient the fucking pieces. Like that. If if you're bootlegging shit, you know how to make that. Like if you're bootlegging yeah. stuff at the level of getting it injected in mold. There's a uh, lot like of hopium in these mold. last three paragraphs. <laughs> yeah. The massive security error this time around also brought attention to God God Gaudi, <laughs> the company collaborating with uh, Bandai Namco to run the Gundam Metaverse project. Apparently, the company had previously been generating heat for unprofessional behavior when launching a community service for Subaraya Animations. As mentioned, Bandai Namco has yet to comment on this topic of the CAD data leaks, so detailed circumstances of how it came to be are unknown at the moment. Yeah, they're All right, so really fucked up. Yeah, so they're like, look, on the bright side, only the Rising Freedom Gundam was the one that was leaked, except for, oh, wait, what's this? Uh, an entire array of, like, thousands? <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, I don't know, man. <laughs> it sucks that... Uh... They only released uh, Gundams and not like anime you know, waifus. Other, yeah. <laughs> yeah not, <laughs> no, but like you know, there's uh, there's Digimon model kits, Dragon Ball model kits. Like I don't give a shit about uh, Gundams, but if anything yeah, else had been leaked, I would have been all over this. Mm -hmm. Totally. Anyway, in other news. Oh, shit. No, I had more to say here. Uh, okay, so yeah, the investment in this venture was evident with uh, Bandai Namco's $130 million to bring the Gundam Metaverse to life. I feel like I put this in the wrong spot. Whatever. Okay, anyway. Also, in other news, Nintendo cracks down on leaks and data mining. Nintendo takes action against Super Mario Bros. Wonder Mod videos featuring swearing flowers. So you guys know the, like, the little flowers that, like, say hello or whatever in the trailer yeah so apparently people tra tra uh, change it in a mod to say fuck you <laughs> <laughs> and uh one of them says sans for the um uh, we kind of covered it on that one podcast uh from undertale right so anyway um the best part of that though is that mod was released before the game before was released the game was released yeah because the game leaked a week early <laughs> So um, Nintendo updated their content guidelines to say that content that features unauthorized game consoles and or software not licensed by Nintendo and or video and or and or features video images, sound sources, etc. that cannot be used in regular gameplay. Bowser's penis. We covered that one time uh, extracted through game software via data mining or other methods. So that's that's a no, no from now on. You of naughty, naughty is. boys. So so things <laughs> that come to mind. The beta uh, Ocarina of Time mm -hmm. ROM that leaked that had, like, uh, Star Fox stuff in it and mm -hmm. uh, ba basically any any leaks like that that any are coming out, are they're going to DMCA the shit out of you on YouTube if you post about it. Pretty much, hmm. yeah. Unfortunately. I'm going to leave the call for one second and come back so that my recording gets split. We're right back. It uh, it appears that they are trying to crack down on. Like Nintendo used to be a very DMCA heavy uh, company, right? Where you you couldn't even stream on Twitch uh, without getting like shit from Nintendo because they thought it was like copyright infringement to stream a game. Um, and then they kind of got poo pooed enough that they stopped doing that and they let people on YouTube stream again. Although first, if you remember, they had this stupid like Nintendo ambassador programs or Nintendo creators program. I forget what it was called, but uh, they wanted like 70% of your ad revenue and stuff. Um, and they wanted 
you know, like send them the video. I don't remember the exact details. And then they eventually gave up on that shit. It, it but now funny. it looks like they're they're going back to the. To that to mic. The... <laughs> it would have been funny if Sega was still in the console business, so that way they could do what Nintendo don't, and then let people now... stream shit. Like that'd be the joke. Like them. No, oh, I I didn't Nintendo. cover it, but. Uh... Sega is doing what Nintendo don't by making you have access to the Epic Games Store. <laughs> All right, back to this. So, um, furthermore, Nintendo, come on, you bitch. Nintendo reveals controversial new community tournament rules. There are plenty of things listed that are to be expected, including expectation that organizers quote will not tolerate harassment or discrimination of any kind and, quote, not permit gambling or the use of alcohol or drugs, right? Hmm. One of the biggest new rules fans have taken issue with is a prohibition on community tournaments of more than 200 in-person players or 300 online players. Across social media, Fans have blasted this decision as it will lead to smaller player pools and less overall interest. There are also strict rules about admission fees. Participant fees cannot be greater than $20, while spectator fees for in-person events cannot be more than $15 and must be used solely for the purpose of covering costs of organizing the tournament and not toward prizing. Meanwhile, no spectator fees are to be collected at all for online events, there are also strict rules about potential prizes, including the overall value and Nintendo products that have not launched in the region where the community tournament is taking place. One particular game, I'm sorry, one particular rule that's drawing a lot of concern from fans is a prohibition of game consoles, accessories, and software not licensed by Nintendo. Essentially, what this means is that tournaments are not allowed to use are not are not to allow the use of third party controllers some have noted that this would block the use of accessibility controller options ultimately excluding disabled gamers from participating in community events hold on wait didn't you say will not tolerate is... discrimination of any kind wait how They're can this be <laughs> you said that but all i'm hearing is fuck blind people right <laughs> but you know what's hilarious though too that i'm surprised they didn't implement the rule of, of people needing to shower or put put on deodorant and brush their teeth right because the body odor and stuff that i think happens. that's already a rule though yeah but you would think with all these rules that nintendo like they would that should be the the foremost primary one like put in parentheses you need to be clean to be in these tournaments period and then everything the, else. that's the unwritten rule <laughs> in a thread on twitter an accessibility advocate called the move devastating. How will the disabled ever recover? <laughs> and noted that tournaments would now <laughs> exclude a bunch of gamers solely based on the fact that we are disabled. <laughs> yeah, so, so this is also person yes. with a wheelchair can't compete either. This is also uh, excluding uh, software not licensed by Nintendo. So meaning mods to games uh are, will not be allowed i assume because uh, there was already that um story from a few months or maybe a year ago now of the uh smash brothers melee tournament being shut down because they wanted to use a hack version of the mm -hmm. game that supported online play mm -hmm. uh, and better net code but uh nintendo wasn't having it so now it's uh spelled out plain all text right. so i just want to point out that nintendo hates the disabled and they discriminate all day meanwhile games done quick is letting a dog speed run a nest game <laughs> 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 this wasn't planned i screwed up your timestamps i'm sorry <laughs> uh, i don't have anything else to say about it. we're gonna find out in the future if he uh if he wins <laughs> is it cheating if it's an aid dog though because when it, aren't they trained to do certain tasks right so it isn't really i mean it's pretty hard to like you know he's use playing a... dyromite i so i don't know man <laughs> <laughs> It's pretty hard to use a controller when you're a dog with paws. So. All right. 
in other in other uh, <laughs> in, in other gaming tournament news i've been sitting on this for a while quick draw brawl posted this update quote quick draw brawl's purpose is to foster a kind welcoming environment where people can share the joys of playing fighting games in an effort to further that goal, the player, known as Lunar, is banned from Quick Draw Brawl events for the foreseeable future. His online conduct promotes a level of hostility and discomfort that is unacceptable for our community. Although his behavior has been brought to his attention in the past, it is evident to us that he has no intent to follow through on the changes discussed between him and the team. The community is widely made uncomfortable by his presence. And as a result, we believe this is the best course of action. In the event that there is genuine change in his behavior and the community he fosters, a ban appeal may be possible in the future. All right. So what did this criminal do? Um, he liked a lolly character. And may I be so bold as to speculate it's the character he plays as in the game Oh, that he just happens because he likes this character. Wrong thing banned right now. People have, <laughs> people have said it'll be hilarious when the hosts of quick draw are exposed as actual pedos, right? Also uh, your likes quick draw notice board. Your likes are public tight as a virgin boy don't get nervous let's make porn and watch it on vcr eat him up eat him up eat him up whatever that is just, i'm just saying caught in 4k right you ban someone for like you you ban someone for liking small anime girls and then talk about safety what a joke yeah, the I've community. been here the entire time, and I but I just popped you know popped back in to hear like <laughs> the porn <laughs> bit. I was just like, voice. excuse me, <laughs> excuse I can't read that me. What you say? I need you to read that out loud for me. Hey, y'all, uh, look, uh, Chojin thought we was gonna agree. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I could say that word, but you know, I don't. <laughs> Meanwhile, know if allow me to say actual that. pedophiles in your community continue to groom and exploit minors. I love this. Yep. The fighting game community. Oops, all pedophiles. <laughs> <laughs> that guy looks like JT. <laughs> Definitely no, 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 not showing up. Holy shit. Holy crap. It does, right? It re- <laughs> Definitely not showing up at a Nintendo uh, tournament. Yeah, he's yeah. going to be banned because you can't be uh, dirty. Be hey, they used the same face a few times there. That's oh, yeah. uh, cheating. Three or four yeah, times. That's, they couldn't use no. a different... Wow, they must be... They had to cover all the berries, except for this red one in the screen. Except for the one in the red one. Who the fuck is this? <laughs> anyway, I thought I think it's pretty funny. All right, anyway, let's talk about the real funny thing. Woman communication has players pointing out hidden etchy phrases. Anal! <laughs> An upcoming just, indie game... <laughs> It's just saying you can't pull up like how how freaking Senkaku Complex had the, the thumbnail and had like anal just showing up like a like a like a freaking cut like a kapow it was like anal. <laughs> <laughs> it had like up, this 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 picture in the in motion. Oh, I think it's at the bottom. Uh, an upcoming yeah. indie game called Woman Communication will have players take the role of a school morals officer pointing out hidden etchy phrases in high school girls' conversations as they slowly fall in love with the player. Now, there's a specific phrase in here that I was devastated to learn how the Japanese pronounce it. I'll get it. I'll get there in a moment. The morals officer points out early on that the girls are accidentally or subconsciously saying etchy phrases like chinko, which means dick, or anaru, which means anal. <laughs> And more by accidentally stringing together like sounding words. So, for example, in Japanese, the way you say uh, squirrel and chestnut is kuri torisu, which is also how you say clitoris. <laughs> <laughs> Something as innocent as cafe latte contains the pronunciation fella for fellatio, proving these schoolgirls are being innocently lewd. 
An overly sensitive moral uh, morals officer takes on hidden lewd statements. So you have to like, you have to find the word, right? So like she says, Satsuchin, kore kara, right? So, oh, chinko, it's chinko, chinko. <laughs> Imagine not finding that. Oh, there. unko. That means shit. The cool 2T had it right. <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, man. Uncono, do you know what your name means? <laughs> <laughs> Yari Chin Chinge. Double shot. <laughs> oh, is that like Bukake with only two guys? <laughs> <laughs> Asadachi. Ishimotsu. Okay. <laughs> How do you pronounce this? 69. Yeah, that's not how the Japanese pronounce it. Yeah. 69. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on. Like the word sex. <laughs> they just say 69. Yeah, Lame, Takashi right? 69. Japan just got significantly less sexy. Takashi 69. <laughs> Takashi 69 is the Japanese way to say it. <laughs> oh, he is Takashi, right? I didn't think about that before. <laughs> or or, or Takashi 69, but that's another story. Hey, no. That's funny. Sumara, anyway. Manko, which oh. means pussy. Oh. How come that one's the only blurred one out? Yeah, why know. is that the only one censored? Because uh, pussy has to be censored in Japanese porn. Oh, yeah, you're right. <laughs> unless, unless, unless it's put, put the little black bars weird. over the word. <laughs> oh, pixels. Just, mosaic, just mosaic the word. Anal's <laughs> I mean, okay. I mean, unless it's leaked, <laughs> unless it's leaked, a.k.a. they just put it in an American uh, internet server. Or something. There it is, Reese. No. <laughs> anal. <laughs> yeah, but anal could be like a yeah. double entendre. You know how like somebody's obsessed with something, yeah, like being tidy and clean. Anal retentive, anal. like me. He's anal, right? Yeah, of course. Uh, so you you never know. <laughs> All right. I didn't mean it like, but I what happened like... to that uh, article that you kind of shoved away to the side? Oh, I guess we could cover it now. You want to cover it now? Mario thing that you. Yeah, user <laughs> user prompts Bing's AI to report itself for infringing on Nintendo's copyrights. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Have you ever seen the Have you ever seen the Hulk Hogan edit of that where he's uh, just you've talked like about it. Yeah, he used a steel chair and he was like big booting. Yeah, and... I think you, I, you're talking about when the building collapsed and it, they like yes. have him. Yeah, he's a giant like Hulk to... Hogan, like a kaiju Hulk Hogan destroying the fucking building. I like the Kirby ones better. <laughs> yeah, prompted by the many examples of Bing image creator generating exact images of copyrighted characters such as Mario and Pikachu, a Japanese user tried to prompt Bing Chat, Microsoft's AI chatbot, to create the text for a notice of Bing image. Cre creator infringing on the copyrights of Nintendo. The user tried out several wordings, one of which even led to the AI begging not to be reported. That's fucking funny. <laughs> wow. Bing image creator, Microsoft's AI image generator, is believed to have recently updated to Dolly 3, a deep learning based, uh, a deep learning based text to image model developed by OpenAI. Dolly 3 is a much anticipated upgrade to Dolly 2. And yes, it is fucking the, much better. Those images up with the Mario, right? Like in that game. That's Grand Theft Auto San Andreas. Yes. I can tell. <laughs> it, it looks weird. What gave it away? <laughs> well, the cars, the, the, the background and shit. Like I played the sky color. The sky color. Sky Definitely the, the sky color. <laughs> the chains. I recognize that. That necklace. The cars, the car <laughs> models look like it's from San Andreas. The Freddy the headlights. Fast, fast yep. bear. <laughs> the roads. The roads being sand. Yeah. Yep. How the hands. <laughs> All right. Anyway. <laughs> um, 
This is <laughs> this is why it comes as no surprise that when users found out it could be used for free via Microsoft on September 30th, many learned uh, many leaped at the opportunity to see what it all can do, posting their results on communities online. No, it can do rare pepes. <laughs> I'm get, this changes everything. <laughs> like, <laughs> we find among out the images posted, many could be. See, what's up? We gotta find out what it does with our usernames again. Yes. <laughs> oh yeah, we gotta see if it'll finally if it'll finally do you the justice of the anaconda. <laughs> I don't see if Greenlight will get anything but trains. <laughs> yeah. If you can have the AI image of Mario and SpongeBob doing the fusion dance or the Patara earring fusion, what they would look like as one being, look weird. Okay. Big nose with yellow skin. <sighs> Ask and you shall receive. <laughs> <laughs> uh oh. <sighs> We're going to have it. Mario and SpongeBob Fusion. SquarePants uh, uh, Potara Fusion. Is that, does that sound about right? Yeah, yeah, and then the other one's the Fusion Dance. You gotta, what would it look like one and the other? <laughs> You're no, just fucking. I'm using Dolly three. You don't tell me how to do it. You do it. <laughs> You're <in> shot, <laughs> it's yeah. like, mind if it's like, I'm using uh, Dolly three. That's like Stan's dad. Uh, hey Siri, can you tell me how to fix the door. <laughs> hey Siri, how, how do I fix my oven door? <laughs> These are the steps. Call yeah, okay, a handyman. Can you, can, can you do that for me? <laughs> Okay, here we go. <laughs> what should I do? All right, is, ladies and gentlemen, it's creating. You're seeing the magic happen right before your eyes. This is how the sausage is made. <laughs> Any second now. <laughs> well, they're they're in the they're, they're in the this phase where they're like the energy around them, so makes sense. Oh no. <laughs> Oh no! The, the fusion failed. Oh, Majin Buu absorbed them before they could actually. Oof. No, I'm, I, I feel cucked. <laughs> I think Chet is being lazy. Dang! Let me get rid of SquarePants. <laughs> Try again. No. <laughs> no, yeah, just put SpongeBob. I'll be back. I'll be going back. All right, back to this. <laughs> no sausage for you. Among the images posted, many can be seen, including exact depictions of copyrighted characters, including Pokemon, various Warner Brothers and Nintendo characters, and similar. Seeing this, some users expressed concern about, about the ease with which the tool reproduces copyrighted material, posing questions about secondary infringement and liability. Japanese Twitter user, this guy, um, decided to report the issue to Nintendo, who are famous for their ultimate legal department. Smash Bros. Snitch, ultimate. Right? You gotta love being a snitch, right? However, they took a rather unique approach to things, prompting Bing Chat, the AI chatbot also owned by Microsoft, to create the contents of the report. There is no mistake. I am guilty of using images <laughs> of Mario. <laughs> Post translation: uh, If the Bing Don't image, me. <laughs> if the uh, if the Bing image creator issue is reported to Nintendo's strong, uh, strongest legal department. From only one IP, it will seem like just one person making a fuss. So please report it as well and make the contents of your report original. I had the Bing AI generate the text below. Urging users to join them in making the issue of the Bing image creator known to Nintendo. He shared a screenshot of their chat with Bing chat, blah, blah, create tech. Well, fucking, I don't want to read it now. You made it so boring. <laughs> I'm not reading this shit. You give me that patar earring. Damn it! <laughs> Hard well, cuckening. It, it really doesn't want to show that image. No, it, apparently, apparently the copyright uh, legal 
prompt worked. <laughs> Nintendo got to them. <laughs> yep. It literally did a cease and desist virtually. Like, nope. AI can't do shit. Oh, <laughs> man. I'm so glad it's not an orgy thumbnail where I would have to come up with what that would look like. <laughs> All right. I really, I really want to see what it would look like, but now they cut this. Get some crayons, bro. <laughs> Analog <laughs> 3D announced. <laughs> New yeah, console designed to play Nintendo 64 games in 4K. I'll just get AI to just. Is this Nintendo backed or is it going to get shut down? Sounds uh, like a sounds like it is not Nintendo backed. Sounds like this is the exact thing Nintendo just got done telling us. We hate yeah. disabled people and unauthorized <laughs> consoles. Yeah, we don't like remakes that's not involved with us because we get want shut to down get immediately. All the credit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, uh, Ramblin, you got something to say? Uh, well, are you gonna read this? Uh, I can. Do you want me to? He's too busy uh, playing Spider Man. No. I'm done that. I was going to say reread the, uh, the title because someone was talking while you were reading it, but yeah. I, um, I also kind of noticed. Kind of <laughs> uh, so if, if you just want to summarize this, I guess, yeah, it's uh, analog. They do a ton of different uh, FPGA consoles. Um, they've done Super Nintendo, original Nintendo, uh, Genesis, um, the, the, so the, most the analog right 3D now the, pocket. the reason they're calling it analog 3, 3D is because it's going to be the first one to bridge the gap from sprite based ones to now um, is that why? so technically um, I think so they announced the 3DO as a <laughs> console which I think the 3DO could do 3D, but um, it hasn't come out yet. As far as I know, I don't know. I think it's sometime next year. Um, the analog pocket had what they call uh, open FPGA, which allowed developers to develop their own uh, FPGA emulators, essentially. And a few of them have done um, 3D emulators, but most of them aren't able to run very well because uh, the chip isn't big enough to run like PlayStation or N64 games. So that's where this comes in. Uh, they're using a bigger FPGA chip um, uh, so that it has enough... Um, logic gates to basically recreate what the N64 chips do on actual So it says it says that it's going to be able to you're going to be able to play N64 games in 4K. Um, presumably so you were telling me they do this really interesting thing where they actually recreate like the burn in effect of CRT TVs or whatever. Uh, more or less not really exactly what you said, but um, the way CRT works is there's like a phosphor, uh, phosphor panel, screen, right? Yeah, that has like the red, green, and blue phosphors, and mm. then the laser hits those, and that because they don't actually have like pixels like an LCD, right? Mm. Um, and so, uh, yeah, they they have uh, this. It's called shadow masking, where they basically make uh, they emulate that. Um, mm. so because it's a 4k display and they have such detailed pixels, they can mm -hmm. actually make each pixel be like, okay, well, you're going to be the red phosphor. You're going to be the blue phosphor and cool. emulate what the actual, uh, CRT would have output, uh, yeah. along with the scan lines. Um, and so, uh, you know, that's on a, I think on a CRT analog system that can do that on a crtv um pixelated games look much more high res because the way the 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 pol the the pixel art the sprites were designed in such a way where 
they were designed to be viewed on that kind of TV. And when they are, they actually blend together and look more detailed because yeah. of the way that the colors merge um, than they do when you play it on like a computer where they you get the perfect representation of the pixel. So it's it's still not going to be one hundred percent like the um, the the Genesis in particular. Uh, I I don't know if this will matter for the N sixty four to be honest, but for the Genesis, right? This uh, famously uh, they used a trick in the um, how how analog TVs work, where um, they were able to make. Uh, the waterfalls like uh um, mm, translucent yeah 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 um and so that effect uh, there's a a rivaling uh fpga console called the mr project and uh they support um 4k i believe mm -hmm. and the, i know there's there's a bunch of people working on shadow mask stuff for that and um from what i've seen it can't it it still doesn't do the translucent thing, you know, but it does make the sprites look a lot softer, less um, jaggedy, with um, all the effects that you can do, add with the shadow masking and the scan lines. So, right and and also this is from a company that is very uh, meticulous in trying to make it, uh, trying to recreate the retro look. So, like, you can add scan lines to something, and they look absolutely terrible because they're doing it stupidly where they're just adding, like, a black line, you know, every other pixel frame, or, uh, you know, every, every, every other pixel row. But the problem with that is, on an actual CRT, the, there's light bleed between, yeah. you know, That's between seen, yeah. each row. So... You, you have to account for that. So you can't just yeah. stupidly add a black line. Right. So, so, and, and so an, likely an example, kind of if you look at this spine of this like skeleton creature, um, it is literally just, Oh, come on. Are you for real? That's how we're going <laughs> to do it. Come on. Open, well, uh, can you right click on it and then open image in new tab? Ah, yes. All right, let's try this again. Are you, you fucking... Right. You can't go on. Right. Open link image it to, Link it to me. I did. I did. Open image in new tab. Copy <laughs> image address. Paste. God damn it. No, it's so, undoable. So you can't, <laughs> anyway, okay. so... But as you can see, um, it's just an alternating gray and, and white. You know, light gray, dark gray. But when it goes through the thing, it actually changes color and like width almost right. Based on the colors it's next to in this case, the shield. Right. And like, look at the face uh, this little derp is, is like this demonic looking face over here. It looks far more detailed. Right. Um, and then like the black, the stark black on top of red makes this outfit look completely different over here, you know, because it's on a CRTV. Um, yeah. So that kind of stuff matters more for sprite-based games, which mm -hmm. were, there were a few sprite-based N64 games, um, but it would also play an effect with the textures because there's yeah. uh, obviously low-res uh, textures on the N64. Um, the one bad thing about the console is that um, with the analog pocket, they had this open FPGA thing that I was telling you about where you could mm -hmm. like make your own emulator. They're not doing that for this. So it will only play N64 games, mm -hmm. um, unfortunately. Because having a, a, an open FPGA system for, uh, that supported 4K uh, would be cool uh, if you're going to spend the money to buy it because it's probably not going to be cheap either. So if you're going to spend the money, I would prefer one to be open as opposed to locked into the N64. But yeah, I mean, can't uh, they said it would cost even more to add the ability to 
have this open FPGA system. So, but um, I mean, it looks cool. I'll probably get one. Cool. I hope you enjoy it, Mister PS Five Spider Man Nineteen Inch Venom. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Nintendo reportedly is also patenting a dual screen gaming device that can split in two. The two sides of the machine can operate independently. So it's effectively a switch that you can play with your buddy. A switch. Yes. <laughs> right. Switch. Is that effective? Uh, it's like a DS. I mean, uh, yeah. yeah, I was going to say like a DS and a switch the diffusion dance like or had sex like Okay. It's definitely on. it's definitely pulling a, a a DS look. <laughs> so, uh, while you're doing this, I just want to say, <laughs> just because there's a patent doesn't mean Nintendo is actually going to yeah. release. Yeah. Had sex like and did the oh. fusion dance. You, you definitely don't want it <laughs> to come back with the result. <laughs> yeah, it's probably, yes! It's, it's, yeah. it's probably going to show like a uh, no preamble. Awesome! <laughs> Get rid of all that shit. It, it could do that, but it can't do the Mario and SpongeBob <laughs> fusion bullshit. Come on! <laughs> <laughs> the suspense read, is read, killing read me. Read the article while you're waiting. You can't finish. I need to go. <laughs> anyway, so a uh, recently filed Nintendo patent has been discovered that refers to a dual screen gaming device that can split in half. That's according to Game Rant, which shared images supposedly attached to a patent reminiscent of the Nintendo 3DS. However, instead of the clamshell design, which saw the, the top screen fold in onto the bottom screen, this design sees the top screen face out. Okay, so it like slides like a sliding phone with the I keyboard. Th I underneath. think it fully detaches, right? Yeah, yeah, and but it sits but on top. the yeah, it sits on. Okay, yeah. Otherwise, you wouldn't be able to play it without like because the, the screens would be touching each other. They'd have to be open, right? Um, this design sees the top screen face out even when the machine is closed over. Oh wait, no. So maybe they are saying it folds, but the top screen is. Well, you have you have screens on both sides. You're gonna scratch up one of those screens no matter what you put it on. Hmm. This is a dumb design. The top and bottom parts of the machine would also be able to operate independently of each other. While this may indicate some of Nintendo's uh, potential ideas for future devices, the company <laughs> has a history of similar patents being filed and never coming to fruition. Oh, it looks like such a fun game, though. On this, that was Apple the uh, watch that got stretched. <laughs> that was the original patent that people thought the switch was going to be. I'm glad it wasn't. <laughs> that looks <laughs> that looks fucking terrible. So many Chinese boys have their aims to save first. Whoa. <laughs> Prior to the announcement, Nintendo Switch a patent was filed to come showing the handheld game machine with a large oval screen with an analog protruding through the screen. Oh, the analog sticks. I thought it was just a touch screen. I thought no. it was like when I play an iPhone game and can't see the character anymore because he's under my fucking thumb. There's uh, there's other pictures, but basically under the thumbs, there's little analog sticks. Okay. I, I see they're like like pentagons. Dotted out, yeah. All right, come on. Give me... Yes! Yeah. Whoa! Oh, only Ooh. two? Come on! Wow. That looks cool. That looks cool. Now I gotta ask it what it looks like if they had sex. Okay, here... here. <laughs> oh, boy. That looks red. That one, that one is not quite... Like, it folds down and this Joy-Con hangs off the edge. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah, Here we go. Great. Both of those are pretty cool. Unfortunately, right. Mario and, and SpongeBob couldn't fuse because it's too dangerous. <laughs> All right. <laughs> but the DS is we're safe. <laughs> All right. We're 
<laughs> we'll come back to that. <laughs> According to VG, VGC sources, the company has dispatched Switch 2 development kits to key partners with a launch plan for the second half of 2024. The platform holder also showed off tech nevos for its Nintendo Switch successor behind closed doors at Gamescom in August. It's understood. Okay. Uh, the company recently reiterated that it plans to use its Nintendo account system to help smooth the transition from a Switch to its next gaming platform. Yeah, that's bullshit. Well, in the past, every device we transitioned to had a whole new account system. Creating that's the Nintendo true. account will also will allow us to communicate with our players if and when we make a transition to a new platform to help ease that process or transition. Oh, you, thanks, Doug Bowser. They want to track. They said the same thing when they upgraded from the, the Wii U to the Switch. Mm -hmm. And they introduced these um, uh, accounts during the Wii U. And they pulled nothing over from the Wii U. So. Something's wrong with this DS. <laughs> <laughs> Monkey ears. <laughs> I, I need one of them to have a cigarette, though. <laughs> so what, you're going to add the cigarette? I'm just saying, this is the power of AI. In uh, seconds, I got to finish. <laughs> like, the, hold on, go back up. Yeah, but it didn't... Do, it, it worked. For, for the one on the, on the left, I could uh -huh. almost see, like, you pulling the top screen out. And those uh -huh. two smaller controllers coming with it, and those like on like a, a a swivel to go to the side, so that you can have two switches, and like you and just like shove the the like where the two like inner controllers disappear, bring those outer ones back in. You know. What are you saying, Willis? <laughs> <laughs> I just like, I just... obviously, obviously not based on what we're seeing here because Basically, obviously that's not but like I could almost see a design like this. I I like how there's a switch a couple switch games and a couple DS games <laughs> on the ground like it does both. <laughs> <laughs> it's the I can't believe house. it actually got Nintendo Switch spelled correctly. Uh, that's actually pretty That nice. is an improvement. Uh King Sal, you got to talk louder. Can't hear you. You gotta deep out that mic. So then... I'm gonna scream like death metal music, guys. I, I also like the other one. It's like one's like a switch pocket, and the other's like a regular switch. <laughs> this one's it, pixel it worked art two too. out of four, right? Nice. It's beautiful. <sighs> All right, I finished. Cool. All right, let's, let's move, move on. on. Yeah, we got. I got. I gotta pick up my buddy in the morning. All right. Next article, Discotech licenses Lovely Complex with new English dub. Nobody wanted it. Was Bella it a rights Thana issue? Status, Chie the Brat, Rainbow, IGPX. No, there was no dub previously. Okay, okay. Newly commissioned dub. I gotta hear this, bitch. Never well, mind, not, I gotta watch it, it on X. Oh, on fucker. Two years. Oh, it's... Sounds awful. Do they have the clip of Moist Critical? Oh, God. <laughs> he sounds horrible. I think that's part and of it. And by joke. horrible, I mean he sounds exactly like he does talking into a, a camera on YouTube. Wait, was I think it? that's kind of the joke. It's characters supposed to have bad voice acting. I'm trying to think. There was a YouTuber or the, that... Like the, the game character or whatever. Who was the YouTuber who played like the president in the movie? He like my fellow Amer like who was it? Was it, it was a YouTuber no that did podcasting. I don't remember. He he got banned from YouTube, but he had a loophole. You know what I'm got you know what I'm talking about? Nope. Oh man. Drama alert guy? Yeah, the drama alert guy, yes. Random love. What's his what's his name? Not not his show, but his name. Damn it. Because I don't remember. Like, my brain. K. King style. <laughs> I wish. King... <laughs> Keemstar. Keemstar. Yeah, yeah. Yes, random love. Thanks. I wish I would. <laughs> oh, man. 
Ecasher says the switch design is very good. Glad they went with that, with what they did, and not that the Samsung fold looking thing. <clears throat> These dolly the key, outputs look awesome. Yeah, Keemstar voiced the president of the United States in a video. Was it a no, no, no? It was a movie. Not a I have no movie. idea. Yeah, on a radio, he's like my fellow, and he was just doing his voice. He was just doing his. Thank you, Cool Tootie. Well, his regular voice can't possibly be worse than um, Moist Critical. <laughs> All right. So anyway, so they got they've got love, lovely complex. Um, they also got Magical Girl Lyrical Nanaha for Blu-ray. Handmade May. No, get Handmade May where they work at a porn studio. <laughs> Come on, what's wrong with you? This show is god awful, and oh. I hate that I have to buy it just to uh, just to get them to also license the sequel where they work at a porn studio. <laughs> <laughs> Dual Peril Trouble Adventure, which is pretty good actually. Oh, I, I needed to pick that up. I'm so glad they announced it. I'm oh, like, SD I have to buy like game. a sixty dollar DVD for that shit. Uh, Loop on the third, Sweet Lost Night. There is so much Lupin the Third content. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. Not enough, if you ask me. Belladonna <laughs> of Sadness. Um, so this previously got released on Blu-ray by that other company. Yeah. Didn't it get... Oh, they're doing a 4K, though. Oh. 4K Blu-ray oh. combo. 4K porno coming out from Discotech. <laughs> Drink or take a shot every yeah. time you say porn or hentai on the, on the stream. Kurokami, the animation... Blu-ray. Glad I spent so much money on that. <laughs> um, <laughs> the Legend of Kenshiro. And Puss in Boots Around the World. Oh, the sequel, Around the World. Nice. They didn't previously have this. That is correct. Yeah. Well, obviously. But I mean, like, they released Puss in Boots. <laughs> They released yeah. Puss in Boots on DVD, is what I mean, but not Puss yeah. in Boots around the world. Yeah, I think they put put out Puss in Boots on Blu-ray as well. Okay. Yeah, the uh, the last it was like one, I think it was the last one they announced Puss in Boots, and then this one it's Puss in Boots yeah. around the world. This is like so, the third Puss in Boots. Like, what about the second one? I uh, think I they've only announced two. So, so they yeah. also got Fudakoi. About twins. It's a harem about twins. <sighs> Chie the, the Brat finally sucks. getting a release over here. Oh, this looks so bad. Oh, yeah. They were Dennis so the proud Menace. of getting it. Was like, well, oh. it is it is kind of a cult classic. Their logo looks like shit, though. <laughs> it looks <laughs> like... It, it look looks like, like Frylock got killed next to a Dennis the Menace logo. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Shakezilla the Mike Wula. <laughs> Rainbow. Yay, Rainbow. It's a gritty and dark drama about kids who are into a youth prison. A prison. I think that's the only one that even looked interesting to me. Whoa, 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 dude. Lupin. <laughs> also, IGPX is getting uh, <laughs> IGPX is getting remastered, and it's going to air on Toonami. So it's also going to get both the production IG and Toonami versions. They've been upscaled with Astro Res, and they're going to re-air it now with the the remastered version on Toonami. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if it's fully getting aired, but there's definitely. What we read was oh, there's going to be covering, a preview. Did they even cover the freaking live action stuff in there? Humanoid Monster, Yokai, Ningen, Bella. Live action film right here. Oh, yeah. Okay. So, did you even bother showing this? Fatal Frame Zero, which actually looks pretty pretty awesome. Kamikaze Girls, which I can't believe they're actually putting out on HD and it's not coming from Media Blasters. Hurricane Polymer 2016 live action. All right, cool. We got that. Let's go to let's go to right stuff. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I got this. I got this. Uh, hold on. Ah, fucker. Fuck! I actually yeah. really like oh, this. Hold on. Eighty nine dollars, huh? Add to cart roll store because. Uh, no, oh, not, by the way, ha, have has your uh, order history 
Um, can I even log in is a question <laughs> that should be made. over. Um, because well, last I checked mine, my order history didn't change over. I don't think mine has uh, yet. All right. There's so also just quickly, there's a uh, coupon code for like 15% off your first order. So I don't know. It was working for me when it didn't have my order history, but um, that, that might be of interest to someone. I don't know. Okay. I'm glad you told us cool. what the coupon code was, because otherwise that information is useless. Archie <laughs> the Rock, complete season. I'm surprised. It does, are they announcing a limited? Like, nope. And it's also it Japanese only. What? Oh, wonderful. Fuck? Everybody you definitely know. This show. Like, why aren't they dubbing or making? Yeah. Damn, they're not going to cast Anaris Canonas and Kino, uh, uh, Zeno Robinson. <laughs> the, the coupon which one, code is Anaris which, which, and Z, Zeno. Yeah, which, yeah Zeno. <laughs> okay. The coupon code is C R New. Nice. There you go. So which one, which one gets less pussy? Uh, I think it's all upper case. Gets less pussy. She's the basis. All right, Reese, good. move on. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna step out of the are. room for a minute and go to the bathroom. I'll be right back. You would. I'm probably gonna be gone. I would. Ah, uh, it's By almost like you didn't watch any of Promise Neverland anyway. <laughs> what a fucking loser. <laughs> I'll be right back. By the grace of the gods, season two. Oh my god, there's actually a lot of them. Fuck. No shit. The case study of Vanitas season one, part two. Did this uh, get, get eliminated or no? Hold on. Say that again. Did this get eliminated or no? In case any other dinosaurs? Uh, no. I'm, oh. I've heard a lot about this show too. I wonder why it didn't get eliminated. Uh, Ningen Fushin Adventures Who Don't Believe in Humanity Will Save the World. And yeah, they put that entire thing on the cover. Yeah, that's a long ass title. Like, like, the show is fun, but oh, it not worth really. Oh, it's no, fun, no. but I mean, I watched it as it aired, but I don't oh. really think I need to own it. This is like the okay. Super Saiyan, uh, Super Saiyan God. I like Dragon Girl. Of She's kind of cute. Titles. <sighs> oh, that's what we got. One Piece. Season 13, Voyage 4. What is this? Is uh, this the main? Oh, yeah, this is Big Mom. Because Big, Al Capone's there. Okay. More One Piece up to 8.30. Greenland, are you reading the uh, manga? Oh, I stopped reading the manga a while ago, but I, I'm, rel I'm relatively like informed of what's going on. Why? Uh, no reason. Oh, I don't want to get I mean, into it. I was it. for a while. I stopped at Do Flamingo or Dressrosa, excuse me. Um, Dressrosa because it's just too long, and I was like, you know what, I need a break. And that break turned into a, a Hunter Hunter hiatus. <laughs> uh -huh. So, quintessential quintuplets movie. Mm. Damn. And then... This is To the Abandoned Sacred Beast. This is an anime limited release anime being released limited? over here. Okay. Is it? Uh, eighty nine ninety eight. Jeez, I, I would think it's like. So, uh, not Almost, sure what the okay. release date is because down here says January 30th and up here says October 31st. Oh. So, right. uh. <laughs> They weren't sure what. Yeah. That's probably what happened. So we'll still have to see about that. Uh, and on to the uh, Sentai January slate. Is it wrong to pick up Girls in a Dungeon Season 4, Part 2? Did they do parts before? No, which I brought it up when we had Season 4, Part 1. I was like, That's what the fuck? Why are they doing this up. now? Like, they didn't even do that for Food Wars, and that had a split core as well. Yeah. For one of their seasons. That's irritating. Santa! Oh, yeah. Sudorene, the movie. This is basically like a recap of season one. And that's also Japanese only, so they basically 
didn't even bother again. The tunnel, the tunnel, the tunnel, blah, 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 the tunnel to summer, the exit of goodbyes. Never heard of movie. this movie. This is a movie. It's coming out. In th- it's going to be in theaters in like a month or so, or maybe this month even. I don't know. I can't remember. Has a placeholder. Love flops. We've covered this on podcasts a couple of times. This is the one where the guy has a banana in his pocket. Okay. Did they this dub this one? From the, they dubbed this one surprisingly. It wasn't a it, it wasn't a uh, a broadcast dub, so this dub is premiering with this Blu-ray release. So the cover yeah. reminds me of um the one where he goes to the, all the brothels. There's species reviewers? Yeah. I don't That's, know why. Yeah, I know maybe, the cover is different. Maybe it's because it's also done by Studio Passion. Oh, maybe. <laughs> that, that might be a reason. <laughs> uh, we got Razafon getting a standard edition release on Blu ray. And we've got the Giant Beasts of Ours from Blu ray. And then from Anaplex, we've got Sodar Online movie progressive Sherzo of Deep Night. I think I saw this Soap. in theaters. Soap. Soap, yep. Soap. Not soap. Soap. Well, I know, but I made this joke like when I did my pickups on the <laughs> podcast, remember? That was a joke. That was intentional. I know, and I did the joke when I did my pickups on the podcast for the first movie. Well, uh, oh shit, did I not get that? Oh, no, it's all the way down here. Okay, come on. Uh, Lady Georgie, this is for Discotheque's uh, December slate. Okay. Uh, we've got uh, Mazinger Z TV series collection 2. Search 47 to 92. God, I've been sitting back here talking to myself this whole time. <laughs> I, thought were ta- well, I thought you were potential. I thought you were purposely about? waiting. <laughs> I was saying like, <laughs> I, was, I thought you were, like laughing did, back there. I did that on purpose. <laughs> like I was making references, saying like that needs to be an og like clip. <laughs> no, that, God damn it! <laughs> Just to the North Star Legend, the True Savior, Legend of Rao, Chapter of Fierce Fighting, movie. Legend of Gay. <laughs> like, oh yeah, he's putting it in. He's having some revenge sex. <laughs> or, I mean, revenge, revenge porn with Ralph. You're already fucked. <laughs> you are already fucked. Yes. <laughs> you are already fucked, Virtue. <laughs> <sighs> oh god, right, that was it's, great. Instead of saying five no more me, reefs, let's go. No. <laughs> deep breaths, deep breaths in and out. Okay. <laughs> they call it SPT laser. <laughs> Spit laser. <laughs> This website uh, looks point. a little too close to um, Amazon to me. Gee, I wonder who who could copy each other, right? Uh, the box third, somewhere. Seven, seven days, days Rhapsody. Rhapsody. Man, Fujiko is getting cocked back there. Watching yeah. Lupin with that other girl. Yeah. That uh, handcuff is uh, pretty close to the what else we got here? Yep, yep. Right. Where is it? Oh, she, oh she the is, titty cuff. She's not happy. He's cuffed Fujiko's titty. Look. <laughs> that must really hurt. He, he's Zenigata, you're groping the wrong thing. Turn around. <laughs> yeah, Zenigata the perv is like, you're under arrest, Fujiko. Oops, I thought. I mean, he's the one who first laid Fujiko in the first place. Come on. Oh, we don't talk about that. 
The only thing great about this is the opening. I I refuse to believe that. It goes against what I believe. You, you refuse to believe that the opening that it has right? a good opening and it's a bad anime. <laughs> <laughs> Terrible lecture. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Humanoid monster Bella. Bella. The movie. She kind of reminds me of Wednesday Adams from the. Um, yeah, she has the that. She has a, the Ortega. Yeah, Jen Ortega. Ortega. Kind of a yeah. shame we didn't do this for the orgy thumbnail. That'd be perfect. Uh no. <laughs> And then, There's uh, a uh, got... dance group on American uh, Idol or American the talent, talent Show. Yeah. yeah. American she the Talent like, Show. She looks like one of the people from that dance group. Imagine watching America's Got Talent. <laughs> Kaguya loves for the first kiss. I never... don't watch it. It comes across TikTok. Okay. <laughs> You, you still stay your own long enough to watch it. We're all praying that we just get through this. <laughs> like, come on, please. All right. All right, so there's the hut. This is like a four-episode movie kind of thing. All right, that's it. I'm done. Sweet. Back all to right. me. Okay. Sweet freedom. I'm leaving. <laughs> so uh, you are free to go. I will not uh, dock your pay. <laughs> oh, okay. Thanks. You should. You, should. you, you should. get foot in them share anyway. <laughs> A- Happy Halloween. Yes. Happy Halloween. Happy Halloween. Make sure to deliver my candy on time. Make sure to lube up that 19 inch venom before you insert it. <laughs> <laughs> Five second person, try it out. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. So um I've decided not to read this for the sake of time. Um, but just, I mean, quite frankly, it's fucking long. Um, but it takes a look at, um, physical media and it makes the argument that it's not actually in as bad of a place as we would have otherwise thought because best by exiting the scene doesn't really mean anything when it actually held a relatively small market share to begin with. And Amazon and um, Walmart, for example, are much bigger players and they haven't shown signs of uh, going anywhere when it comes to DVD and Blu-ray. Right? I would would have a counterpoint to that, but I'll let you continue. I'm actually done. My counterpoint is Best Buy has a wider selection of newer stuff instead of just keeping the same garbage and all DVD stuff. Like Walmart barely has any Blu-ray releases on their shelves. Mm -hmm. So, but the the point is bullshit. The bullshit, like you know, B and C tier movies and stuff that. Nobody wants, nobody watches unless, like, you actually, you know, do. You don't go to Walmart looking for so, like the higher end 4K releases. You go sure. to Best Buy. For the sake of time, um, I'm going to cut it here, um, but maybe we'll cover this um, in a future podcast in more depth. Uh, have that discussion. Uh, yeah. Donations ensure that we can do weekly podcasts. By the way. Uh, that's the secret. I just learned about it. You guys can, it's in your hands. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's move on to South Weeb. If you guys would like to support the OCA podcast, one of the ways you can do that is by shopping on South Weeb. Uh, if you join our Discord, which is in the uh, pinned comment for this uh, episode, um, and also in the description of the video, obviously. Uh, you can submit your own things that you'd like to have created. Um, although, to be perfectly honest, takes a while. And uh, quite frankly, I'm very behind. But If you um, see a character 
ideally a, gr a clean screenshot, not a picture of your phone screen? I don't, I actually screen? don't care if it's a picture off of your phone. As long but as you give, give me the freaking episode and the yeah, name as long as series. you give me the episode number and the uh, the name of the series, right? Um, and it's great if you let me know, like, oh, this character actually wears this outfit a lot, you know, because one of the things that's really difficult about making these products is that anime changes a lot from one shot to the next on what the things look like. And so in order for me to produce it, I actually have to, I have to build it based on the angle that's used for the thumbnail so that when you see them side by side, it makes sense. Right. Otherwise it doesn't make sense. It, it's like, it, it'll look incorrect because from one shot to the next, they aren't the same. Right. Um, so, it benefits me to know those details because then I can look for the best one that's going to work in all um, cases. Okay, I, anyway. I didn't wear my, the slime shirt. It's crimson. Oh, I the crimson? I got that on right now. They're comfortable, aren't they? Yeah. That was a weird way to say it. All right. Yeah, you got this one? <laughs> yeah, um, I got that one on. Yeah. So um, I'm considering... Uh, a lot of them are using the, the literal cheapest shirt that I can get just so that they're cheaper for you guys. I am considering upgrading the ones on the OCA podcast store. Let's look at fuck blind people again. <laughs> Put them on yesterday. <laughs> I mean, we, for anybody for anybody who's mad about the Zeno Robinson and Anaris Canonis thing who stuck around this long. Uh, yes, we did make a shirt that says fuck blind people. Our resident blind person is wearing it or whatever yesterday. <laughs> wore it yesterday yeah so uh come get me i guess um <laughs> wore it in, he wore it in public and he is blind uh legally <laughs> it's, it's, it's only slightly off center <laughs> oh well you know like i'll get you a new one all right that's not my fault and we should have handled that earlier uh so now this is the part of the podcast where i should have had but don't have ready uh, a link to remind you it is now time god damn it for you to buy a tenga <laughs> so here is my just gotta add that to the template <laughs> yeah i gotta add that to the template you guys oh, i know nights of halloween delight yeah man huh. yeah man oh. like you can have a spooky masturbation session with tenga uh and you can stimulate to completion the oca podcast uh by ensuring however, that however we, you want to get off, you can stick this up your ass or whatever. <laughs> by ensuring oh, 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 oh. that we can now do weekly shows because we are so financially there. Uh, you can, if you're a zombie like that guy, though, maybe be careful not to rip your dick off in it. Use plenty of lube, pay for the lube on tango.com slash Oshia podcast, which is not actually our link, it's actually us store.tenga.co slash question mark sscid equals and all this mumbo jumbo so just saying um don't obey me when i say slash oca podcast because i haven't gotten that far yet i don't think that exists but all right we could I, i'm sure it's probably something doable like request a custom url for it uh i don't know because it's through share sale but maybe mm -hmm. we'll, we can do it we can ask Boy, am I glad that I have skipped that opening discussions. Holy shit. <laughs> All right. I'm going to power through this. Reese, if there's anything we should skip because uh, somebody decided to leave, we can. So, uh, Maga Mario plush is now available nice. on the way early 2024, I guess. Uh, so, get your Republican oh. Mario. It should have been out on release date with the game. Yeah. I want one, Maga Mario. Uh, moving on from here. Uh, Square Enix releases Deluxe 2B figure from Near Automata. Automata? Sorry, Automata. Um, so I just want to say. Hey, Near. Hey, Near. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> I have a lot of problems with Crunchyroll. But. When they do you a good solid, they do you a good solid. You got to cover it. All right. 
Normally, I have to go to Sankaku Complex for the angle. Those <gasps> sons of bitches. <laughs> they got <Nice>. it. <laughs> nice. <laughs> they did it. All right. So there you go. Nice. <laughs> Let your dog carry its own poop around with new Japanese Rando Seru school backpack for dogs. He looks ashamed. He's like, dear yeah. God, why? Why would you do this to me? Why give me a backpack? I want leather pants. I like the idea that... Um... Oh, come on. Fuck. I love the idea that they can't just throw that shit in the toilet or in the garbage. <laughs> They have to carry it and smell terrible around them. Uh, very smart and hygienic. Anyway. <sighs> I've never seen a Chojin Shiba Inu before. <laughs> <laughs> That's a very rare breed. <laughs> they keep them changing. Representation up. matters after all. <laughs> All right. They keep them chained up out of the public eye. Oof. <laughs> Wait, why is the person carrying it? No, the dog <laughs> needs to carry his own poop. No! <laughs> Your dog, dog carries the, the poop, poop and you carry no, no. the dog? <laughs> the dog is the poop. <laughs> <laughs> he has his own carrier bag to sleep in. All right, anyway. Hey, have you eaten the news? Japanese noodle newspaper comes with writing on the soba. That looks yeah. like a pain in the ass. Yeah, that sounds gross. Why do I want to eat paper like that? It's not paper. It's noodles. Yeah, but <laughs> with... like they probably mix like a little bit of paper like... to give it that newspaper feel to it. I doubt when it. You get, you get your headlines one noodle at a time. Like, imagine yeah. trying to read an article and it's in all these noodles. Well, like, the, the worst part about it is that you have to read it before you make the noodles because as soon as you do, it disappears. Or you, or, you t- or you have to take pictures of it. You got to screen cap or videotape it before you eat it. What's the point? This is so stupid. There's this thing called the internet. You can read the news there. <laughs> Well, tell that right. to the Japanese people for the new. In spirit, man. in the spirit of uh, Halloween, I wanted to okay. finally share this thing I've been holding on to since August. Uh, Jaws dogs, corn dogs in uh, Universal Studios Japan. So you can eat your okuyominaki or what is that called? Oku. You know what I'm talking about, like the bean paste uh, takoyaki. Takoyaki. Takoyaki is octopus, isn't it? Uh, hmm. oh, me, uh, whatever. Uh, Ghibli's Park New Princess Mononoke area reveals real world mythical beasts in Iron Town. So, Reese, you voted yes on this. I did. Somebody did. Was it the person who left? <laughs> How dare us not go fast enough? Wow. Okay. I guess you can't even see it. There's a there's a slide in this one. <clears throat> All right, moving on. Cool. Random level left. Great. Oh, man. Van Gogh Museum no longer giving Pokemon cards due to rowdy scalpers. So the Vincent Van Gogh Museum in Amsterdam announced it would no longer give out the prized Pikachu with gray felt hat Pokemon card after rowdy scalpers ruined it for everyone. Nice, rowdy scalpers. The Van Gogh Museum was offering visitors a limited edition card featuring Pikachu with a design based on Van Gogh's work, but it has been discontinued after the Cray Scalpers sparked crashes. Crushes. Sparked crushes. Can you imagine Pikachu what? with the scream face? It has been discontinued. Yes, they did that as well, actually. Oh, it has okay. Been discontinued after Cray Scalpers sparked crushes. Weird. Okay. Recently. <laughs> oh, I've got a crush on you. <laughs> the gray scalpers. No, okay. Uh, recently, a small group of individuals has uh, created an undesirable situation that has led us to take the difficult decision uh, to remove the Pikachu with gray felt hat promo card from the museum. The Van Gogh Museum explained in a statement. The promo have been discontinued to allow visitors to explore the museum in a... In a to explore the museum in a safe and enjoyable manner with the safety and security of staff in mind. 
Scalpers were obtaining the Van Gogh Museum collaboration Pokemon cards to sell them online for prices ranging up to $7,000 and even a higher in Japan. Hmm. Uh, we showed this last podcast, I think. Um, yeah. Here's a look at the Van Gogh Museum on Black Friday. <laughs> it was fucking pandemonium. Pokemon Company apologized for the rollout of the limited edition cards and promised fans another opportunity to get the highly sought after card. So when we talked about this previously, I believe um, the card, was it this where the card actually went up to be able to purchase online, but before they even announced it, people had found the URL and mm. bought them all or whatever? What they should do, just make it widespread, absolutely you know. worthless. Yeah, put, flood the yeah, market. Make it, make it, yeah, purge, yeah, just yeah. every everywhere. Every, you can buy it off of Amazon. We'll make this for infinity. Fuck those scalpers. Yeah, so they they had this to say. Um, this is a more uh, elaborated version. The Van Gogh Museum and the Pokemon Company International take the safety and security of visitors and staff very seriously. Recently, a small group of individuals has created an undesirable situation that has led us to take the difficult decision to remove the Pikachu with gray felt hat promo card from the museum. In this way, visitors will be able to experience a special collection of Pokemon paintings and the rest of the museum in a safe and enjoyable manner. You might assume that the museum has stopped offering the Pikachu with gray felt hat card in order to prevent stampeding slash fighting among customers. However, the card wasn't being offered for direct sale. Instead, it was given to guests who completed a Pokemon adventure quiz style activity that encouraged them to learn about Van Gogh's paintings. So it shouldn't have been a contributing factor to chaos in the gift shop. What's more, even though the museum is no longer giving out Pikachu with gray felt hat card, it's still selling Pokemon X Van Gogh t-shirts, canvas bags, magnets, artwork prints, and other items. The only announced piece for sale, sorry, the only announced piece of for sale merch that's no longer available is the Pikachu Van Gogh stuffed animal, which the museum says is sold out as opposed to being pulled for safety and security reasons. So hmm. there you go. In other news, uh, Chucky Demon Doll arrested for scaring people and demanding cash. It's Halloween. All right. <laughs> I'm sorry. If we were ever going to cover this, it's now. Okay. <clears throat> the officer who detained the horror film doll was reportedly later re re remanded for not taking her job seriously. <laughs> Come on. Oh, come on. <laughs> Mexican police arrested a Chucky doll and its owner for allegedly terrorizing members of the public. Terrorism. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I thought they just arrested the doll and not the owner. I was like, oh, come on. <laughs> Let me no, they arrested both. <laughs> the suspect, referred to only as Carlos N., is reported to have used the life-size puppet to wield a large knife and demand money from frightened locals in Monclava, a city in the northern state of... God, I'm not even going to try. Uh, Carlos N. was apprehended in the main square of the city while allegedly under the influence and charged <laughs> with disturbing public order and endangering the public on September 11th. Terrorism on 9 11. <laughs> they just he just got high as fuck and just let his spots go to work. <laughs> Don't be racist. Have remote control Chucky doll and touch money. Bizarrely, <laughs> bizarrely, the officers also undertook to formally arrest the doll itself, seemingly at the behest of local media. <laughs> Police then followed through by taking both Carlos and the doll, whose character was popularized in the 1988 horror film Child's Play, to the local precinct, where both the doll and its owner were handcuffed and had their mugshots taken. <laughs> Footage from processing shows the orange-haired doll being held up against a wall by one of the <clears throat> officers, the large knife still protruding from its overalls. And Carlos was like, "Can I get a Can I get a copy of that mugshot?" 
<laughs> Local reports state the officer who placed the doll in handcuffs was later reprimanded for not taking their job seriously. Both the doll and its owner were Did they give his fingerprints too? <laughs> <laughs> uh, get out of here, pop up. Just fingerprints like that, like the freaking Santa Claus, or is this a snowflake? Oh, no, it just shut has up. like two I don't want to hear this. Just has like two oh, sorry. Jews. <laughs> sorry, <laughs> I couldn't hear you over that thing. <laughs> I'm sorry. So like his thumbprint, like in the Santa Claus, where his thumbprint is like a snowflake. It's just oh. <laughs> G, it's just two Jews, like good, good guys. <laughs> <laughs> It's not the first time a Chucky doll has broken the fourth wall to terrorize terrorize the public in real life. Back in 2013, a prank was staged to publicize the then upcoming direct-to-video release of Curse of Chucky film, the sixth installment of the Child's Play franchise. Wow. Footage shows unsuspecting members of the public waiting for waiting for a bus to the station in Brazil before an actor dresses the horror movie doll, jumps out from behind a poster promoting the movie. Armed with a fake knife, the prankster then chases his victims, which at one point included young children down the yeah. street. Yes. Oh. That article did that. not disappoint. Mirage Leonardo, you're a hero. <laughs> Taiyaki, thank you, E. Castro. That you is what it's earlier. called. Yes, you did. I'm right? sorry. I suck. All right. Also, because it is merch news, Haunted doll with demonic voice and power to suck energy goes on sale for only 75 pounds. I don't like Did they mass produce it? It has the power to suck dick. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the unnamed doll is believed to have a dick sucking demon living inside of it. <laughs> All right. So with Halloween, just, <laughs> with Halloween just around the corner, there's no better time to invest in your very own possessed doll to entertain guests while bobbing for apples. And while murderous toys are a popular trope in horror movies, lots of them stem from alleged real life incidences. Hmm. Films such as Annabelle and Chucky are actually based on two apparently possessed dolls that have both become the stuff of legends. Ed and Lorraine Warren who studied the occult. Oh, that's... <laughs> you're just looking for the dick-sucking demon dolls at that point. <laughs> yeah, who studied the, the you occult. You just want your soul sucked out of your body to your dick. <laughs> and collated an extensive collection of items believed to be cursed, kept Annabelle in a glass case until, her mu until their museum was closed. Oh, so you named her Annabelle, huh? It was believed that she was so dangerous... The couple had a priest come in once a week, <laughs> once a week, to bless the area where she sat with holy water and prayers. There is also a doll named Robert, who is said to have inspired the murderous character Chucky from the film franchise Child's Play. Currently on display along with his teddy bear at East Martello Museum in Key West, Florida, of course. Of course, he was. two paranormal investigators recently shared their own experiences with the demon doll. Kalani Smith and his pal Josh claimed they were <laughs> last name not important. This is my, pal. Where is my pal Josh <laughs> claimed they were attacked after a blood ritual was performed, recalling it felt like we were caught on fire, bro. What is, <laughs> what? What is this, Chucky? Oh no, we yeah, were we attacked just... by the doll. You were performing a blood ritual. That was Satan. <laughs> You're in Florida. It's hot as hell down there, man. <laughs> yeah, stop touching Ouija boards, man. For all the latest, I don't care about that. Uh, new, now, paranormal enthusiasts can star <laughs> in their very own horror film by purchasing their very own haunted dolly. Featured on the bidding platform eBay. An unnamed figurine can be bought for a reasonable price of only $91.52. It's in Key West. Why are you giving me the pound? Oh, it's because the mirror.co.uk. Gotcha. Okay. All right. It's <laughs> I mean, it was possessed by a male demon. The seller states that it's gay if you let it suck your dick. Damn. <laughs> no. uh, the seller states that it arrived from Texas last year and while in their possession has spoken at least once. Wow. Once. Boy. Yeah, one time only. Superstitious folks sure are an interesting bunch. <laughs> In the description, it states we we clay wait, we clavier? 
Clavier, Clay, Clavier. I don't know what that word means. Um, a keyboard instrument. Oh, okay. Clavier. Great. <laughs> that clears mud. <laughs> we clavier ownership of this doll and the priest from Texas who delivered her to us by hand. I don't... Okay. He begged that someone needed to take ownership of her to break the curse that was attached to his daughter. What the fuck is going on in Florida? <laughs> According to the seller, the priest's daughter bought the doll. This is like the, the ring. Like you have to like put, you have to get somebody else to watch the video, but instead you sell these tchotchkes on eBay. <laughs> buy this, buy this demon from my Etsy store. <laughs> Break the curse! Break the curse of my debt! Yeah, but isn't that weird? Like, do you think the pastor or priest would be able to do like an exorcism on the doll or whatever and just. I can't All I'm saying is if I ever saw this doll, I'm taking a black light to. <laughs> oh, definitely, dude. Definitely. According to the seller, the priest's daughter bought the doll from a yard sale. But within months, she started having extreme hysterical episodes and spoke with a different language. I would also use. A Was it laced in drugs? I would, use, I would use a flamethrower on it too. A flamethrower, just burn that shit. The little girl spoke about killing her father and younger brother and taking them to hell with her. Wow. Sounds like you sure. You sure people. selling this doll on eBay is going to break the curse? Yeah. Are you allowed to ship cursed items through U.S. Uh, Postal Service? <laughs> he also claimed that bruises appeared on the little girl's skin and her eyes grew dark. Hmm. Oh. I haven't seen a single before and after photo of her, so I don't know if I agree. Uh, they explained the priest attempted an exorcism and this did not work. Fuck! No, what, <laughs> that's our only card. <laughs> we played it and it didn't work. <laughs> Just put it in a fire. God. Yeah, he finally reached or out. Free, or freeze it. Freeze it to death. You know, cryogenically freezing it or just freezing it. To Throw like, it into water. the sun. <laughs> Get yeah, Elon Musk to something. blow up a put rocket it, yeah, with put it. Put it in a spaceship. <laughs> throw it to the sun. Do something like in Tekken would do. Let's just throw the devil gene out. He finally something. reached out and throw a medium visited his daughter. Yeah, throw it in a volcano. I like that option. Yeah, she told the man though. she told the man the child has ownership of something that has been cursed. Only when ownership is handed over can your curse be broken. I or, give this so. ownership to this fire. Yeah, <laughs> or or I, I give I bequeath this doll unto the volcano. <laughs> I bequeath it to the acid to the acid bath. Here you go. After the seller took the doll, uh, they began to notice flies and slugs accumulating in rooms with no explanation. They also yeah. noticed that if they stayed in the shop for long periods of time, they would start to feel ill and have dark thoughts. Mm. I mean, maybe you have like carbon monoxide poisoning or something. <laughs> in addition to the demonic... <laughs> and I took this rock as payment. <laughs> It's like they buy somebody buys the doll, but they have like a real, real doll, like a sex doll, and like the demon transfers. Jesus. <laughs> sex doll. Oh, that's a dark version of Chucky right there. <laughs> Chucky porn parody. What? <laughs> probably is <laughs> Child's <laughs> play porn parody. I don't know. If have have, have you seen? No, have Chucky. you seen Bride of Chucky? Chucky. Uh, no, I, I've only seen the scene in Bride of Chucky when he stabs her. She goes, but Chucky, I thought we were in love. And he says, ah, oh, get off my knife. <laughs> yeah, and then they had a sequel, which is The Child of Chucky, I think it was called, where they were like, they had a child that's a puppet. The Abortion of Chucky. Oh, God. Yes. In addition to the demonic voice, they claim to have recorded, well, fucking link it! Jesus! <laughs> ay, ay, ay. What are they, boomers? They recorded on a tape player? Like, God. 
Give me a digital. Dude, I gotta dude, hear this thing, voice. Dude, another thing. Put it in a wood chipper. Jesus, throw that there doll in a wood chipper. Destroy it like that. I think uh, steamroller. Steamroller yes. the doll. Or, or a monster truck. Like get get that. <laughs> put it in the back of the truck uh, like a car, and let a monster truck crush that thing. So many crazy ideas, right? That we're coming up. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ! Is ch- I just looked up Chucky porn parody on Google. <laughs> oh my God! <laughs> Here's the Chucky gay porn parody. Oh <laughs> no! Oh, no! <laughs> like, Random more... eleven would be like, "What the fuck are you guys?" <laughs> let's, be, let's be buddies for life. <laughs> okay. Oh, no. Adult right, anyway. play, a nerds of porn Chucky sex doll parody. <laughs> no, no, thanks. <laughs> No thanks. Yeah, eCasher says they could make one of those hydraulic press videos out of this. <laughs> but then your hydraulic press will get cursed. <laughs> All right. So anyway, uh, in addition to the demonic voice they claim to have recorded, the sellers say they have uh, they have also captured the doll performing extraordinary manifestations on camera. Oh, really? On camera, you say? Camera. Really? Is it Where are they? Article. <laughs> Did you do your due diligence? (laughs) The seller finished the description by warning prospective buyers, this doll is not a toy. The demon likes to suck all the energy out of a room and will take the power from your equipment and your immediate surroundings. He's building a spirit bomb. (laughs) We have always kept our... (laughs) He's making a cell spirit bomb, a negative spirit bomb. Yeah. Uh, we have always kept ourselves blessed and worn crosses when conducting investigations with this doll. Please be prepared to do the same. Only $91. <laughs> Why didn't they even link the freaking eBay list? They did. They I think they did. Yeah. yeah, they did. They did. They did. Are you sure? I gotta pick up my phone. Yep. Uh, all right. Yeah. Oh, the listing ended on Thursday the 19th. Oh, man. Screw that. I don't really want to. I don't think that's a great idea to open it. Oh, oh, oh. Condition used. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, boy. Age level 18 plus experienced investigators. Doll gender demonic male. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, it's a journey. That makes sense. It's a he him it's all, doll. <laughs> it's all coming together. <laughs> His pronouns are six 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 slash he. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, also goes by Samuel. <laughs> it also goes by Legion. It identifies as Legion. This doll is not a toy. The demon likes to suck all the energy out of the room. Uh, please, okay. It also advised that daily saging and cleansing is recommended upon buying the doll, and there would be no returns or refunds. For any skeptics out there, the sellers have an abundance of positive reviews from buyers who can vouch for the legitimacy of their previously haunted doll sales. Come on. <laughs> Come on. No. I don't know why right. anybody would want to own a cursed doll. That just, just destroy it. Like this is like a horror movie. It's like guys, just destroy it. The movie there are more movie. cursed things than that doll still to be talked about tonight. Oh boy! <laughs> Coming <Speaking> up, <laughs> Japanese recycling boxes are plagued by endless pee bottles. <laughs> For the past five years, the town of Matsue in Shimane Prefecture has been plagued with a con pardon with a constant perpetrator who leaves plastic bottles of pee n- near recycling bins. With over a hundred bottles of liquid excess found since April this year alone, 
According to the recycler in charge of the area, the number of pee bottles being found drastically increased since five years ago, with the poor man being forced to make sure it's pee and not tea by taking a whiff every day. Oh, my oh, God. Oh, Jesus Christ. God. Just, just dump Is that it worse? Is that worse than being cursed by the doll? <laughs> Well, that guy's not the being paid enough. Do, you can gonna, guarantee is that. Is the doll gonna make you drink its pee? <laughs> so the very next line. Fortunately, it's my fetish. <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> I did it on purpose. <laughs> oh, I did it on purpose. <laughs> According to the man, Matsue City's recycling station convenience store has turned in has turned into its downfall in this case, with pee bottles somehow being found in ten of the city's sixteen stations, with at least half being filled to the top. Some bottles were even large two liter bottles. The bottles of piss are unable to be recycled for hygiene reasons, making it nothing but a massive nuisance. Some of the bottles have even been found next to public toilets. <laughs> no shit, Sherlock. <laughs> Couldn't be bothered just dumping down the toilet. Yeah, I was going to say, are they Good. pissing next to the toilet instead of using the toilet? Or are they just dropping them off there? Because, like, well, this is probably where it goes, right? Yeah. You know? Yeah, you could have just peed on the toilet. The real question is, like, what's happening in the household of these people that they can't use their own toilet? It probably I understand. I understand. I understand piss bottles piling up because you're gaming or you're in bed all day for whatever reason, and you just like the freedom of it, I guess. But like, eventually, you gotta just take them to the bathtub and like dump them or something, Dude, and then no, and then run the water. Yeah. I knew somebody, or directly in the toilet. Either way, it would work, right? Dude, I knew yeah. somebody that did that. Like he was like technically uh, a relative of mine because he was. Wait, wait. He filled an entire bathtub up with piss. No, he had <laughs> bottles of piss in a closet. I'm not even joking. He pissed. He would play video games in his room for what reason? Because he was a um, foster. Kid. You sure he wasn't just making kombucha? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> but he like he technically was my cousin or foster cousin if you want to call it that because he wasn't really re related to me but a relative of mine had him as a foster kid uh, his name was Joel eh, it doesn't matter uh, oh. he peed in a bottle like, called out it, it, he's not going to listen to this shit it <laughs> he, he's, he's probably like, like married and has kids now it's like over 20 something years ago he peed in a bottle like he was playing like video games. He didn't go to the bathroom. It was weird. It was across the hall from his room, which was very strange. He and they went to his room, right? They were cleaning his room and they found like fucking bottles of piss in his closet. And he they had an argument. He left. And it was a very brutal. She never had uh, foster kids after that. Takes one bad things. egg to ruin it yeah. for all those yeah. <laughs> those orphans out there. Yep, he ruined it <laughs> all because he's playing video games and didn't want to get out of his fucking room. But he had problems. Stereotypical orphan can't yeah. just use a toilet. <laughs> I don't know, dude. I think he had problems, dude. Like when you have to pee in a bottle and put it in your closet, and not go to the bathroom. It's, it's not like the bathroom is like two floors down. You know what I mean? I could understand you don't want to disturb people at night or whatever. Because you make it noise. I don't know. It's like, I, I hope to get comments on this video explaining the rationale for why it's better to leave it in your closet rather than take it to the restroom and dump it. Well, he could have just know? peed on the fucking toilet, but he didn't do that. Yeah, could have. Could have. It's, it's, it's like it's a dangerous, addictive game, I guess. It's not anyway, like if you have a broken toilet. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah. Some bottles were even large, two liter bottles. Bottles of piss are uh, unable to be recycled for uh, hygiene reasons. Some of the bottles have even been found next to public toilets, putting uh, further putting the in further putting the perpetrators' motives into question. Matsue's chief of recycling warned that it might con that it might constitute a light offense against the law, depending on the city. Oh, you piss in a bottle and leave it next to a toilet—that's that's two years in prison. That's piss terrorism. 
nyo. What was that, Reese? Gets more time than the Ronnie Kenshin daughter. Yeah. <laughs> he only got a fine. <laughs> watch, watch him do a South Park uh, special on that piss terrace. <laughs> some, uh, some online have joked about the city's citizens being into MMOs with the reputation of MMO players being into bottles, bottlers for long raids. Okay. Uh, so here's some other stuff about peeing. Chinese beer factory investigating... After employee caught urinating in ingredients. Oh, God. Sing Tao beer. King style, you didn't happen to drink a Sing Tao beer that one time, did you? No, no, no. Okay. It, it, it was clear, dude. There's not you fucking. <laughs> Look, bro. Hey, listen, man. If you drink enough water, your pee is almost clear. <laughs> You're right. That is true. You drink too, but it wasn't. It was. It didn't smell like urine. It smelled like beer alcohol. Okay. China's pretty, second largest beer I'm maker. I'm so saying it'd still be pretty funny if you did. <laughs> so Tsingtao Beer, China's second largest beer maker, announced on October 20th that authorities are investigating after a video of an employee appearing to urinate on ingredients at its factory went viral. A video, a video posted online shows a male employee climbing onto a tall container in a warehouse and urinating into it. The video was shared all over Chinese social media with tens of millions of views on the popular social networking site Weibo. We are, we are extremely concerned about the video posted on October 19th at the Singtao Beer Number no. 3 factory, Singtao Beer said in statement. The malt in question is completely sealed at the moment. The beer company added, we will continue to strengthen our control procedures to ensure the quality of our products. So here's the video. I love this video. Watch the body language. So I love that he kind of like stops to look around a little bit, not realizing he's in direct view of some asshole filming him. <laughs> like, <laughs> I like it's called Sing Town Number Three. Mm -hmm. It's almost like a so. Thing. Also, I'm just pointing yeah. out. I'm just pointing out. Even if his piss was like solid brown. If he peed in this thing and it got filled up with the rest of the beer that was clear, you probably wouldn't notice. Yeah, but if it was like, <laughs> urine, like you know, if it's like pee, like from coffee or, or beer tastes like really, piss anyway. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> as far as I'm concerned, that's the secret ingredient in every single one of their beers. <laughs> so the company's reported the matter to police, and the public security investigation is underway. Uh, I all right. Yeah, that clip from Black Lagoon, episode one, where Remy talks about beer being like piss and you only drink vodka. Yeah. <laughs> so let me ask you this. Can you think of anything more gross than beer made out of piss? Uh, uh, wine out of yeast. You can't? Well, let me tell you about Amaranth revealing beer company that wants her pap smear to brew a new Ooh. flavor. <laughs> I don't even drink beer, but like, <laughs> God! Oh, green lines Why? awake for this! Holy <clears throat> shit! Uh, Kick an OnlyFans star. God's water can only go so far. <laughs> you kick, yeah. Kick, that was uh, Belle Delphine. <laughs> kick an OnlyFans star, Caitlin Amaranth Siragusa, has revealed that a beer company in Poland will be using her vaginal smear. As an ingredient to brew a special new flavor. That yeah, Bill Delphine is like, I make money off bathwater <laughs> while Amaranth is like, hold my beer. Oh. Yeah, hold my vagina beer. <laughs> hold my vagina beer. Oh, Amaranth has taken the internet by storm. Now she is she has no original ideas. She's taken the internet by storm with her hot tub streams, shock investments, and partnerships to sell everything. From fart jars to her bathwater. Oh my it's god. No originality, this woman. 
She but she has a new product that could put those to shame. In an exclusive interview with Dex Dexerto, uh, the OnlyFans model was asked about how uh, about how she had previously teased a new drink following the success of Logan Paul and KSI's Prime and spilled some details about the upcoming beverage. According to the Twitch streamer, Polish brewery, the order of Yoni. I'm sorry, there's, there's probably images in here that I'm not seeing. <laughs> not that I want to, to be honest. I don't. Oh. I don't. Acne ads, great. I was, oh. Oh, oh Mr. Is this D? a Tostino's ad? It is. <laughs> wow. Okay, Mr. Beast, cool. Let's just go ahead and turn those ad blocks back on. <laughs> All right, get out, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> Leave it to Amaranth to make eating pussy disgusting. <laughs> More like drinking pussy, am I right, guys? Mm. According to the Twitch streamer, Polish brewery <laughs> The Order of Yoni wants to use her for a new beer, and she's surprisingly excited about the opportunity. Amaranth confirmed that she will be working with the company to produce this beer, and they have a history of using model smears for quite a few. Not a single original idea. I'm actually working with a beverage company. It's not my own. I'm I'm still doing that project. There's a beer company. They're European. They want to. They want me to send in my vaginal yeast. Oh. The streamer revealed. Like basically, like pap smear myself. They want to make a beer using my va my vaginal yeast. Oh god. <laughs> The Order yes. of Yoni, however, said they use lactobacillus, not yeast. Dumb bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Yoni's website delves more into the process. It involves the isolation of lactic acid bacteria, followed by an intensive safety procedure to make sure that only lactobacillus bacteria and not gonorrhea is used to completely <laughs> is oh, used and completely healthy. <laughs> The gynecologist collects a vaginal smear from the models. These smears are taken to a laboratory where bacteria are isolated, cleaned, then analyzed and multiplied. At the end of the process, the bacteria are used to produce the pure lactic acid that goes into Yoni beer. As for whether or not it'll sell, Amaranth has no doubts that it will be that it will be money in a bottle. Ugh. <laughs> it's hilarious. People will buy it for sure. Yeah. I don't know if they'll actually drink it. I mean, they'll probably drink it. She laughed. Amaranth isn't the only influencer to get in on the alcoholic beverage game. Back in 2022, Dr. Disrespect unveiled his first batch of black steel bourbon, only for it to sell out in just a few hours. She has no original ideas, this woman. Now, in much more positive pussy news, 1,000 cats were rescued from China poachers before becoming faux pork or mutton. Dude, I would throw up if I drank that alcohol. If somebody didn't tell me and then I drank it. By the way, you drank that vagina beer. Question. Up. Honest to God. Would you rather drink an entire beer of Amaranth's disgusting pap smear beer or a beer from the batch of the Chinese guy who pissed in the thing. I would rather drink piss. And I'm saying that because you don't know if it has STDs and shit. You know what I mean? I you think don't, you don't know that. I think you'd be less likely from the piss. I think piss is sterile, actually. Yeah. It's kind of the thing. Like, I don't mm. want to get that, that was big ghost's thing. thing. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't know, man. Clean, if it's not clean, dude, you're gonna get STDs after consuming it from drinking it. I don't know. You it's pretty gross. Hepatitis <laughs> and shit. You don't that. Fuck that. All of the above. <laughs> yeah. The Chinese police recently rescued about a thousand cats from poachers headed to a slaughterhouse as part of an illegal trade in which cat meat was illegally sold as pork or mutton. <laughs> Police in Zhang is Gong. Okay. In Zhang's no, come on. <laughs> Zhang is Gong in Jiangsu oh. province. Open digging. 
<laughs> stopped a vehicle used to collect and transport captured cats after receiving information from an animal rights activist earlier in October. According to the report, had the police not intervened, the cats would have likely been slaughtered and shipped as pork or mutton for skewers and sausages and could have generated profits of up to $25,000. 1,000 cats are $25 a piece? Jesus. Jeez, dude. dude. Well, dude. I guess it's the whole cat. You know it's the whole cat. It's not 25,000 skewers. You know well, I mean, like, depending on how much meat, like, how much, like, yeah. Like five, five skewers you could get twenty five dollars worth of meat off dude, a cat, dude. I saw oh, a boy. TikTok video that has to do with animals being at Chinese buffet restaurants, right in America. Mm -hmm. And these owners, right, like a husband and wife, they know that their dog was abducted. Their dogs, like four mm -hmm. dogs, were abducted by these people that own the buffet, the Chinese buffet, by the and buffet like, terrorists. Us, yeah, they they, they finally got the, the dogs before they were killed. It was like, give us our dogs back. And the owner, like, no, no, no. Feline terrors. The woman gave them their dogs back. And it was filmed. It's, oh my God, that's disgusting. Well, wow. they, they abduct these cats and dogs and eat them because it's cheap. So while the. While the article doesn't specify whether any arrests were made or whether the cats were strays or pets, I mean, strays would probably be easier to catch, right? Yeah. I don't know, though. Well, if they they're out fight for back. Cats. They, they might fight back if they're, uh, you know. The amount of people letting their cats out at night is pretty high in my area. Yeah, true. Maybe not, the, police not and to. the police and agricultural authorities sent the rescued cats to a nearby shelter. Mm. Who promptly killed them when nobody who came? And <laughs> yeah, we made cheap chicken out of cats and dogs. A conservationist quoted the quoted by the media described the illegal operation as selling cat meat as pork or mutton for around four dollars per four hundred and fifty grams of meat. Another activist who partook in stopping the truck said that it was not the first time such illegal activities had occurred, and that he had previously stopped a similar transaction in Guangdong. Come on, China. <laughs> Guang. Chinese Chinese social media showed concerns about animal rights and food safety following the report, with many calls for stronger <laughs> monitoring by the by the authorities. <clears throat> well, there you go. Hey, they they they're All desperate right. for <clears throat> money slash food, and that's what they do. Unfortunately, I am now going to enter the home stretch. <clears throat> <clears throat> so I saw this. Anime music composer Yuya Saito arrested for attempted voyeurism. Yawn. Boring. This was going to be a opening discussion article because I thought we could knock it out so quickly and not worry about it. But you know what? Go boom. Guess what? <laughs> music producer caught taking upskirt photos of middle school girls. I'm sorry. Yawn. Arrested for attempted voyeurism. No. Taking upskirt photos of... Of middle school girls is what he was caught doing. Jesus Christ. Dude. A music producer known for having worked with the popular idol group Momo Iro Clover Z was arrested after getting caught taking upskirt photos of middle school girls at a train station. Oh, the video is private now. Great. Of course it is. <laughs> Saito, who mainly worked as a music producer on anime and PC games, was suspected of taking upskirt photos of middle school girls at the Japan Railway Akabane Station platform in Tokyo at around 8.30 a.m. on October 16th using a mobile, a mobile battery-type camera. He really couldn't just get like 18 year old women or 20 year old women and just have them dress up in an outfit and take pictures of them. Is that dude? That the hard? childish fetish from uh, that kids magazine is it ruined adult women for him. <laughs> the suspect hid the camera in the pocket of his tote bag, but was caught red handed by a Metropolitan Police Department officer. During the interrogation, Saito stated, quote, I wanted to relieve stress. So I got on the train to take upskirt photos. So I wanted to relieve stress, by the way, is code word for I had a boner and I needed to get rid of it. In Japanese. Yeah, pretty much. That's, that's got Shiba it. Tenga. Yes. I was just going to say, if this man had only taken the time to, to go to usstore.com slash question mark <laughs> SSCID. <laughs> Yeah, because, because, dude, he could have paid it. He could have paid a hooker, you know, like money to do. Buy that. from our 
uh, affiliate code so yes. you don't get arrested, people. Yeah. You really could have a, 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 uh, you know. A you could ruin your entire life by not shopping at tanga.co. <laughs> 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 All right. So, this is also Saito is caught on the station platform of Japan Railway Akabani Station with a camera disguised as a portable charging bank. So, the other one said a, a battery camera, right? So I don't know. This is a discrepancy here. Uh, this is a portable charging bank trying to film up the skirt of a junior high school girl by the Metropolitan Police Department police officer who directly saw the camera poking out of Saito's tote bag and who arrested him on the scene. So there hmm. you go. Don't even try. Not even once. Dude, he's, he's not going to. One more time for the camera. Nice. All right. <laughs> what happened with the, the, Kenshin, the Kenshin guy, right? Uh, uh, yeah. Only- <laughs> Excuse me, I'm not drunk enough for the rest of this podcast. Just give me a minute. All right. Are you drinking beer? No, Jesus I am drinking Christ. whiskey. Are you serious? An elderly woman killed a four year old? Elderly woman? An elderly woman shouldn't be driving. Should it says elderly driving. driver. It doesn't say woman. Don't misgender. All right. <laughs> elderly driver fatally strikes four year old girl. Puts it in yeah. reverse, hits her again. I'm Dude. just imagining Anya here. Should I'm just not, saying should not be driving. Period. I'm just yeah. saying, you know, the stereotype is real. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Shouldn't be driving if you're super old. old people can't drive. <laughs> Dude, if you if you're 70 years old, you should take a test every every six months or not not every six months. Every my dad's the best months. driver right now. He's 72 years old. Thank you. Yeah, but if you're if you have strong cognizance, you know what I mean. Like if you can, if you're not here, Joe Bidening it up, yes. If you have your faculties <laughs> all right, like every sense is in your body. Would you rather you drink test, Amaranth's beer or get chauffeured around New York City with Joe Biden driving? Oh. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Jesus Christ, Brad! Please don't make me pick. Please, as Joe Biden the, on the it, Autobahn. Jesus <laughs> okay. As long as the doors don't have the child locks on them, you can out. bail out. So I can get the fuck, and the and the windows are open, so I can just bail out through the window. Tuck and roll. Tuck and roll. Because I don't want to get STDs from that <laughs> thing. I'm sorry. Like, but at the same time, I don't want to die in a car crash. All right. So an elderly driver was arrested after hitting a mother and daughter, then crashing into a nursing care taxi before backing up and fatally striking the four-year-old girl again. <laughs> nursing Jesus. care taxi. Motherfucker. The, the more you read, the funnier it gets. Rest in peace, four-year-old girl. Poor four-year-old girl. She had a She had a beautiful life that could have been greater you weren't even israeli or islamic but you still got killed yeah had had that piece Such of a shit shame. not been driving driving terrorist <laughs> elderly <laughs> terrorist kills for girl. Not, the not accident just, occurred fuck. the accident occurred before the entrance of the kushiro municipal general hospital in kushiro hokkaido at around 11 a.m a four-year-old girl and her mother were hit by a car driven by a 77 year old man don't miss gender <laughs> The two were taken to the hospital where the girl was unconscious. It's a good thing it was just a quick little jaunt right across the street there into the fucking hospital he was at and in critical condition, but was later pronounced dead. According to witnesses, the car suddenly moved forward and hit both the mother and daughter, then crashed a nursing care taxi in front of them. The driver then backed up and hit the girl again. Police arrested 77 year old Sutomu Kumagai. Unfortunate name from Nemuro in Hokkaido for the crime. The circumstances of the incident are still under investigation. Should not been driving. Like if they were not. Oh, there shit! Mentally. I ran into a bus. Ah, oh, fuck! I better back up. Jink. Oh wait. I just ran over. Oh, I think I hit that girl. Maybe I should back up and see if she's okay. <laughs> I mean, look. I'm just saying. Fuck. If this elderly this person awful. was was learning how to <laughs> drive through, <laughs> through Grand Theft Auto, then good job. You fucking won. He, that girl colors. probably kicked right. him last Halloween for not giving her a full size candy bar. And he, like. A- <laughs> All right, look. I am happy to announce we finally have an actual, legitimate, honest to God reason for this. Motorcyclist arrested for grabbing woman's butt and asking, How are you? 
Hey, come on, come on. Wow. <laughs> I don't think we're ever going to have a use case more appropriate than that. <laughs> I think we need to re-upload that and like downplay the audio. <laughs> like, that's downplay? Super freaking loud. That's super freaking loud. Is it loud? <laughs> Audience, tell me if that's too loud. Oh, Jesus. Like, <laughs> like. Sorry, I, James, for a second I thought that was Himiko Toga from, <laughs> from yeah, My Hero. Like, I had like, to go up against like, it. King Styles right audio is like a 2, that's a 20. Hmm. A motorcyclist was arrested by the Osaka Prefectural Police for allegedly grabbing a woman's buttocks and asking, how are you, before taking off on his bike. <laughs> the Osaka police arrested 30-year-old Hiroki Ayano, a company worker, on the morning of October 24th after a woman in her 20s reported that he touched her buttocks from behind while passing her on a motorcycle on a street in Osaka. According to the police report, Yano allegedly asked the woman, how are you, and fled. You want to Five similar the- incidents occurred in the area between November last year and October this year. And the prefectural police are investigating whether they're related. Can you? I hope they're not. Can you imagine? <laughs> yeah, but you want to bet that you want to bet five that completely on- independent incidents of the exact same thing you inspired by on- this guy. Hey, come on, come on. <laughs> yeah, but do you want to bet the guy was ugly, though? Right? He probably was not a good looking dude. His I don't bike know. definitely wasn't a Harley, that's for sure. Yeah, it was probably <laughs> it was probably like a, a moped. Police officer arrested for sex with minor. Quote, I didn't know she was under 13. Her fake ID looked real enough, right? <laughs> yeah, and, uh, and you don't ask women their age, right? Yeah, it's polite they say. Rude. It's ro- it's very rude to ask a woman her age. The Kagoshima Prefectural Police arrested one of its own after a 28-year-old police officer was suspected of having sex with a minor he met on social media. According to the report, the man is suspected of having had sex with a girl under the age of 13 in late February at a lodging facility in Kagoshima Prefecture. At the time, he was a guard in the Kagoshima West Police Detention Management Division, but was (laughs) off duty that day. The Kagoshima Prefectural Police received an anonymous report and the Prefectural Police Headquarters Personal Safety and Juvenile Division identified the girl based on interviews with the girl and her social media history. Yeah. The, the anonymous Does she have report. a big following? Yeah, anonymous <laughs> report, a.k.a. her par- her parents, or she told the police that, right? Was it, the, was it the tweet where she said, gonna go have sex with this 28-year-old police officer? Like, Hello. Lol. Probably. Hashtag uh, first time. Hashtag... I'm a woman now. (laughs) The man told the girl that he was a police officer and had been communicating with the girl using multiple social media websites. Furthermore, he denied the charge saying, whoa, I had sex with her, but I didn't know she was under the age of 13. Dude. Dude. What age did you think she was under? The age of 14? I don't know, man. (laughs) I don't don't think this is going (laughs) to... I don't think this defense is going to work. It's still several years under the legal limit. (laughs) Yeah, but it's it's usually he's a police officer. He should know better. Like, you'd think he's smart enough to know. He fucking does. He's an idiot. That's what I'm saying. You'd think that, like, an average person, that too. But it's like, dude, you're a cop. You went to school for this shit. You you would know what a fucking teenager looks like. The honest to to, to God truth is that you can be punished for far less activity, including this man who was arrested for paying a middle school girl to step on him. <laughs> oh my goodness gracious. <laughs> 32 year old office worker from Hyogo Prefecture was arrested on suspicion of countless acts of indecency that involved paying a middle school girl to step on him in his car. In his car? Oh, wow. How the fuck does that work? Maybe, maybe on top of his car, maybe? Is it a convertible? Is, is, is According a to the police report, the man molested a female student at a coin parking lot near Japan Railway Shinagata Station from around 11.55 p.m. on October 6th to around 1 a.m. Yeah, Bro! Is, but is that technically... Bro! Molest, is, is that molesting, though? What if you do an hour and board. five minutes? Oh, okay. Holy shit. He was arrested on suspicion of kidnapping a minor and was punished and has his punishment and his punishment was pending. (laughs) 
man met up with the middle school girl at a park in the city and offered her several thousand yen to step on him. He asked her to remove her shoes and socks, to step on his face, and then licked her right foot. Uh, he has a foot fetish. That's weird. My God. That's why While it was their first meeting. This article right here is why Randy left. <laughs> but he didn't want to be added. <laughs> While it was their first meeting, the middle school girl <laughs> said she was introduced to stepping by a friend in her teens. The girl met the office worker on Instagram and exchanged messages to meet up. How did he fucking do this in his car? Easy. It's either convertible. The reason like, he would like want her to step on his face is the easiest way to get a job skirt. Or it's a, su- <laughs> or it's, or it's a sunroof. Or something like Or on top of I don't of know, car. man. Something like that. I, don't or know. It was I can I can see trucks. it happening inside of a van. A van, I, I yeah, just, a van or like maybe one of those, those uh, trucks or um yeah a pickup truck or like a one of those cars that have a special um, trunk that's like big enough to fit inside of it type of deal. Okay, like an SUV. There like an SUV. could be any number of large vehicles. Um, <clears throat> still have ten viewers. I don't know how that's possible. You guys are troopers. Thank you for leaving your computer open and when you drifted off to sleep at your keyboard. Yeah, Flight to Florida Flight returns. To where did you make full use of that tango you bought last podcast. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> Flight to Florida returns to Panama over a suspected bomb that turns out to be an adult diaper. Oh, Jesus. Ooh. I can't escape. <laughs> I, I just, I can't escape uh, this turd. God. Stuck to my shoe. <laughs> <laughs> Panama City Airport. Uh, airport security at Panama City's Tokumen International Airport on Friday searched a Copa airline flight bound for Tampa, Florida for a suspected bomb only to find an adult diaper. Please, dear Lord, tell me that it was this. Oh, that's a fucking cruise ship. Damn it. <laughs> I thought I thought they were going to find a diaper like, like somebody threw an adult diaper into the engine. <laughs> and it blew up the engine or something. Did you imagine? Can you imagine in the future, like a, a cruise ship becomes a plane, like it could be a flying ship? And Wait, where was this the, going? It coming from? Di- no, no, I'm saying like the diaper be in there would be fucking hilarious. Like a, the explosion. Panama diaper. City. A pan- like Panama Beach. Or Panama found- City's Tokumen International Airport. International probably means Panama. They found an explosive thing, which was an f- exploded piece of crap. So it was searched for a suspected bomb, but they only found an adult diaper. The plane had returned to the Panama City Airport earlier Friday following reports of a possible bomb. The Boeing 737-800 landed around 11 a.m. local time and moved to an isolated stretch of the tarmac where 144 passengers were taken off the plane. Panama City Aeronautics Authority said on the social media platform Twitter. An anti-explosives team. An anti-explosives team inspected the aircraft. Jose Castro, you sure? <laughs> the head of the airport security team said a suspicious object in one of the plane's bathrooms was found to be an adult diaper. "Quote: We had it on secure. We had it on a secure runway, where police special explosives canine units and special forces examined the object and found it to be an adult diaper, ruling out any risk." Still what a boom. happy ending. Oh, no. Someone did a boom boom. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I had a lot of articles I wanted to cover tonight, but boy, do I need to get to bed. Yeah. Oh, fuck. Woman who married her uh, son. <laughs> Yikes. Yeah. Yikes. <laughs> Wasn't there like a story that a woman who raised a a child with her ex husband was it like that w- son. Is this going to yeah. be an adoptive son or something? Yeah, it is. yeah. She did she groom her son her Yeah, because woman I, who I, married I, her son who's 20 mm-hmm. years younger says police want to take her other ki- his brothers and sisters. <laughs> Technically. <laughs> Fucking hell. Because supposedly For- if this is the case that I looked at the other day, she was with her that kid's father for a certain amount of time, raised him, and then married him 
Yeah, adopted sign, it says. Yeah. Forbidden romances, have often the riveting, steamy plot to a Waterstone's best-selling book. But when it comes to the case of a 53-year-old mother who last week tied the knot to her 22-year-old adopted son, we're understandably less on board. Of course. Russian musician, of course. <laughs> Izlu <laughs> Chichzeskaya Mingalim. Great name. Wow. Oh, I saw welfare experts when on the 20th of October 2023, she wed her 22-year-old adopted son, Daniel Chichnevsky. The close... Don't worry, he's going to be shipped off to Ukraine soon. <laughs> <laughs> the close-knit couple exchanged vows in a ceremony at a restaurant in Kazan, Tartar Stay in Republic of Russia, last week. Daniel was adopted by his now wife when he was just 14. Grooming. It's called grooming, actually. Yeah. Yeah, if the genders were reversed, they'd tell you they'd be arrested. Or, Definitely. No. If it was reversed. E. Castro is uh, digging the work I put into the uh, curation of all these articles. <laughs> <laughs> According to local media, the couple first met whilst he was temporarily residing in an orphanage the year prior. With Isley, uh, how the fuck do you pronounce Isolu? A I don't know. <laughs> Having offered yeah, don't speak to Russian. give the youngster singing lessons. Fucking God. I'll mm. make you sing with my mouth. <laughs> and Adam, I'm sorry, Daniel, and Daniel has since taken the label of a mummy's boy <laughs> to a whole new level. Wow. Now, Isolu. Uh, has revealed that she feels forced to flee from her, their small hometown to the Russian capital of Moscow after child welfare services seized her other five children. She's the adopted mother to four little girls and one other boy and is also the biological mother to a son from an earlier marriage. Oh, boy. Isilu is reportedly fighting the authorities on the matter after some of her children were placed back into care homes, whilst others were returned to their biological family members. The, well, I mean, you got to pick. That. Yeah, you got to pick. You want these adopted kids that, for some reason, had family members to go back to? Or do you want your 20-year-old son, boyfriend, husband? Like, yeah. yeah, that's the thing. She has to decide that, and she... Because she thinks she can have everything, and it's like, no, bitch, you, you're crazy. So the marital union between the pair sparked controversy in the Republic of Tataristan, with some skeptics calling it Chichkaveshkaya Big I'm pretty sure they're spelling it differently every time. They <laughs> called her a disgrace to the country. She insists her relationship with Daniel is perfectly legal. It's legal! <laughs> and certainly consensual, despite her now husband having some under having come under her care when he was just a teenager and and having raised him for the last eight years. Our relationship is perfect, she told the press. We can't live without each other. That doesn't sound perfect. We're on the same wavelength. Right. Yeah, right. Our relationship is perfect, Lee codependent. <laughs> Local media also reports that the date that the doting wife first expressed an interest in becoming an adoptive mother after encountering orphans during a film project with a Tartarstan TV station. She now plans to flee Tartarstan to set up a new life with her beau Dan Bo Bu Bay 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 Daniel, who is a total of 31 years her junior. Isilu hopes to move, hopes to move with allow, hopes the hopes the move will will allow. Holy shit, man! <laughs> the couple. I mean, I I'm not even drunk enough to read that. Like as well as her five other adopted children to a fresh start in Moscow where they can live freely. Wow. Oh. Okay. Um, First cousins and not their relationship. Oh. Yeah, I don't need to read that. There we go. 
that left a real bad taste in my mouth. Uh, I'm going to struggle to find. Mm, 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 mm. That wasn't SpongeBob worthy. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. We got, we've got to have something else here. Hold on. <laughs> Let me just uh, talk amongst yourselves. What do we got here? We got something better. Uh, All right, I got a SpongeBob article for you. Half of the hosts are muted, so I don't know who's talking when, uh, other than hold me on. and you. <laughs> I, I've got a SpongeBob article. Just let me let me find it real quick. All right, where are we? Come on, we got this. Oh, what the fuck? Oh, here it is. No. Where? God damn it! I've got so many fucking windows open at different times. Oh, here it is. Here it is. Uh, not that one. Not that one. I think it was from the Daily Mail. Uh, no. Chat, how are you guys doing? You still all right? Mm. You still awake? Still happy? We got eleven viewers now. Nice. All right. Well, I hope I hope they're edging properly because I'm gonna. All right, got it. <laughs> I'm almost ready for blow your mind. All right. <sighs> I'm definitely going to top the article we've just looked at. Single mom of four who quit her job as a receptionist to be an OnlyFans model reveals she now rakes in $30,000 a month. After enlisting her 14-year-old sister to shoot her racy content. Who's the bigger Oof. creep? <laughs> Let's be real. Is it the woman in Russia who wants to keep her five adopted children and the six adopted children she promoted to husband? Or is it this random chick who's using her 14-year-old sister? So is it child exploitive material if the child is the director or only if they're the actor, right? Like, They're still seeing something that they probably should Yeah, be. I mean... Get a close up of mommy's butthole. You know, like there's <laughs> your sister's <laughs> Chloe Sasha, 29 from Arizona, turned to adult content creation for extra cash. She soon started earning years. thousands of dollars and quit her job as a receptionist. The mom of four, mom of four, now enlists her younger sister for help despite facing backlash. A single mother of four who quit her job to become an OnlyFans model now rakes in $30,000 a month and has enlisted her 14-year-old sister to shoot her raunchy content, but insists that she is not she has not exposed the teen to anything inappropriate. Okay, let me get... Is it going to be that the teen is setting up the live streaming and then leaving the room? And she's a cam model or some shit? Hmm. Chloe Sasha, 29 from Gilbert, Arizona, said she was struggling to make ends meet after going through a divorce earlier this year, and her goal was to become financially responsible for her four kids. Why did, why did you name them and give me their ages? Ray, who's nine. Reese. Reese. <laughs> Reese. <laughs> mom? Bro. <laughs> your mom is hot. <laughs> Reese seven. <laughs> oh, and the Vio oh. twins, oh, Vio and Nona, who are six. Well, how do they spell? Oh, oh it's they the same Reese. Yeah, what the fuck? This is a record for oh. for number of Reese we've had come up in a podcast. <laughs> she decided to turn to adult content creation to earn some extra money, and within one month, she was earning thousands of dollars. Chloe soon left her job as a receptionist so that she could focus on building her online persona full time. And now she has claimed that sharing steamy photos of herself online has not only earned her tons of money, but also helped her spend more time with her kids. No, <laughs> no, <laughs> Reese. I'm so I need to get child protective services out there for you, buddy. <laughs> Uh, 
Her goal was to become more Ooh. financially responsible for her four kids. All girls. She's no. raising a bunch of whores. That Which one is one Reese? Looks... Is this is this Reese? Is this the boy down here? I, I don't know. The older one looks kind of like my sister. Mm. Anyway, she decided to turn to adult content creation and extra money. She hired her 14-year-old braces-laden sister to shoot her porn. How much is she when I first, her? I don't know. I don't, I'm afraid to click on the... My extraordinary family. Yo, why would you put this out there? When I first got divorced, I was working at a dental office. I was a receptionist. I would rarely see my kids. I started doing adult content, creating uh, adult content creating because of my financial needs. In my first month, I made a little over three thousand dollars, and that was a little more than what I was making at my receptionist job. Now, thirty thousand dollars a month. So that's amazing. My goal is to make ten thousand. My goal was to make ten thousand, and I've killed it. Okay. You've got maybe five years of raking in thirty thousand a month. Um. Before you hit the wall, or or you get arrested because your fourteen year old <laughs> sister is filming your shit, um, put that money to good use. Invest. The difference it's made put in my life. Or yeah, Bitcoin. Or <laughs> <laughs> Buy some <laughs> NFTs. <laughs> the difference it's made in my life and my kids' lives is that I'm able to be with them a lot more now. Chloe explained that she used her earnings to buy a new home for her and her children. After previously living in an area with a lot of crime, I was very happy that I was able to give this nice, stable home to my kids, she gushed. I feel very proud of myself that I'm able to give them this life and not have to worry about stress or not have to worry or stress about how I'm going to make ends meet this week. How many times can we say the same thing? So this has got to be Reese over here. This has got to be Reese. The OnlyFans creator recently got her younger sister, Brianna, who lives with her, involved in her new endeavor. Yeah, this is the only part of the article that matters. The OnlyFans creator recently <laughs> got her young... Oh, my God. Yes, that... like, yes, yes. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> she films it on her little sister's iPhone. Yeah. Like, the 14-year-old helps by snapping some of the sultry images and videos that go on Chloe's OnlyFans profile. Oh, dear. I don't know if I can show that. Hold on. Take me off screen for a second. <laughs> uh, hold on. Remove. Remove. There we go. All right. I was going to say, bad job. Oh. Just gonna, just going to scroll right. past that. Yeah, just going to scroll right past that. Okay, go ahead. Stop staring at my mother. <laughs> <laughs> you can put me back on screen. I clicked the it. 14... It back up. It is. Okay. The 14-year-old helps by snapping some of the social images and videos that go on Chloe's OnlyFans profile, but she insisted that she that the teen has not witnessed anything that's too mature for her. Listen, lady, I'm like almost 35, and that image was too mature for me. Okay, so <laughs> just saying. <laughs> if she took that one, I'd love to see you in jail and your kids returned to their rightful parents in Russia or whatever. The 14-year-old helps by snapping some sultry images and videos that go on Chloe's OnlyFans profile, but insists she has not seen anything that's too mature for her, like a butthole. Uh, <laughs> she just takes pictures of me in outfits in a bikini, she explained. My sister sees me in a bikini, whether she's filming for me or not, so I feel like I'm not exposing her to anything. You're exposing her to a degenerate lifestyle is what you're doing. You're teaching her how to be like a, a, a sex bob Right, like she's gonna start it acting like that at school. Oh, school picture day comes up. Uh, I'm in a bikini with like bondage gear. My sister taught me. Right, like <laughs> Reese's mom said it was okay. <laughs> <laughs> she's just holding the phone and recording. She doesn't see the online stuff. She just thinks she's helping me make TikToks. Oh, so you're deceiving her as well. Nice. Brianna, I, I'm sure she can't read. I mean, her, she's fucking named in the article. You didn't just ruin her whole goddamn life or anything. Brianna explained that she loves the opportunity because she dreams of being a photographer when she gets older. Mm. Well, we, 
most photographers do start in porn, right? <laughs> like, <come on. laughs> this is really helping me get closer to that, she shared, with the photo she takes with the fucking iPhone. Come who's on. Taking, who's taking these pictures? Oh, the, um, uh, the Daily Mail. Oh, it's just from the documentary or whatever? Probably, yeah. Um, while her sister is nothing but supportive, Chloe admitted that some of her friends have not been so accepting of her change in career. In fact, she's actually lost many of her close pals who distanced themselves and stopped talking to her after she joined OnlyFans. Let that be a lesson to you, folks. Uh, Reese, will you pull me off screen again? I just, <laughs> I'm not trusting this. Your uh, mom's poor, dude. Oh, <laughs> no. I think I'm glad we both share the same sentiment. Whoa! <laughs> I am really glad <laughs> that I uh, had that intuition. <laughs> All right. Some of my friends were supportive. Others were not, she admitted. It just sucks to not have the friendship we used to have over something that doesn't affect them. Chloe explained that she even lost her best friend, Ziri, as a result of her turning to adult content creation. Once she found out what I, that I was doing adult content creation, she was not happy. She was one of the ones who was very judgmental about it and told me that I was ruining my kids' lives and mine. Yeah, Reese, you're, you're entitled to compensation. <laughs> <laughs> we had a fallout, and, the dis and she distanced herself. She hasn't really spoken to me since I told her. Chloe is also exposed to a, uh, to a slew of criticism online, but she is not ashamed of her job and has insisted that she has no negative, uh, that it has no negative impact on her sister or her kids. Mm, I guess that one's okay. Um, I received a lot of judgment online. I got a lot of comments like your kids are going to hate you or you're ruining <laughs> yeah. their lives. Is it true, Reese? <laughs> what are they going to think? Aren't you scared of them seeing what you put up there? That sort of stuff, she continued. It's like, bro, your mom oh, that's sucks. Sort of Dude, I follow your mom's only fan. Check it out. <laughs> your mom's basically giving you the money I pay her for your allowance every week. <laughs> I'm basically I'm, your dad now, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just thinking you call me dad now. <laughs> <laughs> she explained that she used her earnings to buy a new home for her and her children after previously living in an area with a lot of crime what a happy ending my kids don't really know what I do for a living they have an idea that I do something in the social media world but they don't know that it's adult content creating no, I'm, I certainly freaking hope not the oldest one is like what nine nine yeah <laughs> I try to keep them away from it but I do plan on telling my kids what I do when they're much older <laughs> after they've made their own mistakes. I feel like they're still so young, they wouldn't understand exactly, and it would be illegal. Don't tell them. <laughs> she added that the adult industry is where she saw an opportunity to make the most income the quickest and described it as an investment in her and her children's futures while gushing over the freedom and stability it has given her to show her butthole on camera. <laughs> Uh, and amid all the backlash, she also receives a ton of positive comments from people who love that she's able to be both a mom and an OnlyFans star, and that's what, what she focuses on. People call me the hottest MILF in Arizona. I kind of like that, the horse said, adding, I don't, know, I don't feel it's irresponsible to make adult content as a mom. I feel like you should be proud of your body after having kids. I don't feel like being a mom changes anything. I'm a great mom, and I can choose to do whatever the fuck I want to do, wh whatever field I want to be in, and I will expose my little sister to it all. Okay, so I have one more article we could follow that up with just to get it out of the way, even though I should definitely have gone to bed already, and we still have mm -hmm. a watch club. Mm -hmm. I live dangerously. If I get fired, I'm counting on you guys <laughs> to fund the <your laughs> podcast. <laughs> um, I do have this article. OnlyFans model finds out stepdad was her top subscriber. Nice. Oh, dear Lord, let his name be Reese. Please let his name be Reese. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
An I'm OnlyFans not, model based I'm in Australia. Not married. <laughs> An OnlyFans model based in Australia recently discovered that her stepdad was her top subscriber on the platform. As reported by the Daily Star, Talia Madison is an OnlyFans model from Newcastle, New South Wales. She was left shocked after discovering that her stepdad had been subscribing to her adult content on the money-making app. I mean, it's probably the easiest way to get your uh, your daughter to stop doing porn, <laughs> right? <laughs> but I love that robot chicken <laughs> skit. Call me Inuyasha. <laughs> <laughs> Talia had been creating content for a couple of weeks. Oh, no, Two to four bad weeks in. Hold on. I'm just imagining this sitting at the dinner table. Honey, your last video wasn't very good. Can you try to like, do something better next time? You need to get some better lighting on your butthole. <laughs> <laughs> Look, all I'm saying... I mean, I'll, I'll shoot it for you. <laughs> Tuck, yeah, Tucker Carlson has been uh, quite a supportive dad. <laughs> um... <laughs> <laughs> Talia have been creating content for a couple of weeks two to four weeks in less than a month she began noticing that one user in particular had purchased all of her content not only this but the mystery user had certain requests for talk no <laughs> daddy likes that I had a subscriber who was purchasing all of my content since two to four weeks into me having the account. He had a very specific username that was not an automatically generated one. We would talk every single day, and he made specific requests almost every day, too. <laughs> Eventually, Talia managed to match the username to a name used by to a name used to view her TikTok account. I was I was left with six numbers. And my stepdad was one of them. I went with my gut and I messaged him online saying I knew who it was. She said that originally her stepdad denied the accusations. But when Talia threatened to inform her mom, her stepdad eventually replied with, hey, Ty, can we talk? She should have just informed her mom anyway. <laughs> According to Talia... Her stepfather would make requests including asking her to go into store changing rooms or bathrooms where she worked to show him photos of her underwear. Man, only fans is tame as shit. <laughs> Talia recounted, I would also go to the gym in the mornings before work and he would like to see the underwear I was wearing to the gym as well. Whenever I was filming solo videos, which I would film at my mom's house where he lived, he would request that I film them in my bedroom and on the bed or the floor rather than in the bathroom. I thought this was very strange until I noticed the cameras he installed. No. Uh, I thought this was very strange at the time <laughs> the, until I saw a dick sticking out the peephole in the wall. Right? But now makes sense as he could easily access my bedroom slash all of my underwear all of the time. Adding that the ordeal left her feeling embarrassed. And betrayed. <laughs> yeah. I felt so devastated for my mom, and I was honestly scared to go out and about in Newcastle for a few days. I was scared I was going to see him around. Talia's mom eventually broke off the relationship, supposedly requesting a divorce. I was afraid to go out in town, so I stayed in the house he lived in. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> to turn the tables on the unfortunate situation, Talia has, has earned a whopping 600000 Oh, okay. From selling a stepdad bundle, reportedly made of the content specifically requested by her stepdad. Hmm. Okay. I thought that her stepdad had paid six hundred thousand. I'm like, girl, you need to keep him around. <laughs> you should leave my mom and marry me instead. <laughs> I, I honestly, I thought that's where the story was going to go. Like his attraction to her is that it's the younger model, you know? Yeah. Yeah. All right. So uh, I think it's time uh, for us to discuss the Promised Neverland. So I would just say that. I had been informed that it was a major disappointment and 
it goes hard pretty quick. <laughs> um, and uh, I got to say, I didn't hate it. I, did, I thought it was going to be way worse. Like, I thought it was just going to be, like, every single story decision. I was like, oh, fucking awful. Like, like right? what, when did you rate the first season versus what did you rate the second season? I don't have any problems with the first season at all. Like, like what? what like what's it's hard for me. It's hard for me to rate it. It's hard for me to rate. It. I think it's a great show, like a fantastic yeah. watch. Right? I didn't have any problems with the first season. I did have problems with the second season. Yeah, really? yeah. I mean, that's what, like what? Like what would you have rated the first season compared to what would you have rated the second season? I'd have to rewatch the first season in its entirety to be able to compare it uh, accurately. But I would say that the first season. Let's just say that. Let's just say that if if the first season is a ten, the second mm-hmm. season is like a six. Okay. So okay. on on my anime list, the mm-hmm. first season is like the average score is eight point five. It's ranked one hundred and thirty. The second season, guess where it's at? Eight hundred five something. It's uh, I was. Av- Average score five point two nine, ranked <laughs> I was eleven thousand nine hundred and thirty two. All right, so let me just get my gripes out with it real quick. Um, problems I had with it: pacing is fucking garbage. They are, they are Millennium Falcon light speeding through this stupid story. All right, like yeah, I heard they skipped over. I'm not a manga reader, but yeah. I heard they skipped over like an entire season's worth of like. So no, they manga. skipped over two seasons worth. So the problem <laughs> even worse. I didn't realize. I just heard, oh, it sucks, right? I didn't know why yeah. until I talked to Reese about it, and Reese informed me that they go from basically the beginning chapter of of the story. And then they skip literally everything in between and go for season two straight to the last chapter of the story. Well, yeah, like the, they, they basically the first part is like obviously right after they get out of the wall, out of the mm-hmm. race field, yeah. and then they skip like three arcs, like in <laughs> in the anime. Spo- oh, by the way, we're spoilers. I don't fucking care. We're we're yeah. for spoiling it. If you don't want to be spoiled. Go fuck yourself. I haven't you seen go. it, but I don't give a fuck because I I've okay. already watched videos on it. And... Okay, so um, in the anime, they, well, let, they let me meet... before you okay. before you get to it. Let me just tell you uh, my gripes with it, so that we can okay. have Good them fun. established. So my my problems with it are that I did not like um, I did not like the fact that they brought in Mujika and um, what was the other Sanju. one's name? Sanju. Sanju. Yeah. I did not. I did not like. Like when they first brought them in, I was okay with it. I'm like, okay, I'm okay that this is happening. But then they immediately fucking leave. And it's like, all right. And they're going to where, um, what did the guy call himself with the pen? William Minerva. William Minerva. They're going to the place that William Minerva like, suggested. The shelter now, that's underground. Yeah. Now, I just want to point out. They established in the first season that Ray was like um, working with the demons, or not working with working with Mom, right? Now, in the in the first season, they kind of like they say that, but then they give you reasons to like understand that he is siding with Norma, Norman, and Ray, uh, and Emma, and he's not act, like he's actually going to help them, right? Right. So he's not actually, you know, going to uh, betray them, right? Mm-hmm. But then when they get saved by Mujika and Sanju or whatever their names are, um, he carves into the fucking tree, go to this location. I think he was. Right? He wrote that as a as a note for the other kids to keep going without it. Yeah, that's what it looked like. But and this is the problem with the story. And the first season had this problem too, to a small degree. They do not fucking adequately showcase that stuff. If I saw the kids have a scene where they see it and sneak away while he's distracting the demons, Mm -hmm. I would be okay with it when they then show me the demons seeing it. But they don't give me that scene. 
The kids are nowhere to be seen. So for me to see him carving that shit in yeah. and then the demons see it, it's like he did that for the fucking demons. Mm. You know? And then the fake place gets raided. <laughs> yes! Precisely! The whole time I'm expecting him to have actually sabotaged them. So I'm tr- I'm like trying not to be uh, I'm trying I'm like preparing myself to let him be uh, a bitch, right? Mm. And so they they meet with um Mujika and Sanju, right? Um and then they go to the place and it's like the whole thing is get to the place. Okay, we got to the place. Place gets raided, we lose the place. Then a fucking year goes by off camera. Right? And they're like, yep. "Oh, I'm dying. I can't even eat because there's no food and there's like a demon who's blind who has a who has a grandchild also named Emma that we've befriended somewhat." And it's like, what is this shit? Like, it just, you cut out entire chunks of this story that could have been interesting. Then the mm. bullshit with the people, like Norman has, it's, it's so fucking dumb. Norman is in this facility where he's being experimented on. And then, haha, Norman's alive. No fucking dumb. Most obvious thing in the world. But Norman's comrades are like, ah, oh, we're, we're ailed with some, like, experiments that happened on us but oh my god can you fucking believe it a second pen shows up because of the 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 grandpa demon that we decided not to kill no 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 no, 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 no. you're yeah hey it, it was it wasn't a second pen it was just an attachment to the pen whatever but it was it was yeah. fucking convoluted yeah. and bullshit no look if you had built that over the course of five seasons parceling out these seemingly insignificant story beats that all come together in the final season fucking 10 out of 10 that could have been goddamn incredible right and then they get to the end and they're like uh oh first of all my favorite thing about it is that they they time skip a year and have not saved a single child. <laughs> like, <Yep>. like <laughs> the whole time I'm thinking, like, Phil is going to get shipped out. <laughs> They're worried about it. They need the fucking radio to hear so that they know just in case they have to rush in there to save Phil at the last second. And then it's like, no place gets raided. A fucking year goes by. <laughs> Not a single kid has been saved. A lot of shit happens. <laughs> Holy crap. I could not believe it. Like, it was just such garbage. Norman's plan, by the way, was brilliant. I was ready for that plan, right? Except the only reason that it's not brilliant is because a character that randomly showed up in like episode three, Mujika, just happens to have special blood. And now we don't have to kill all the demons because we could live in tandem with the demons and it would be like super cool, man. Because as long as Mujiko gets to fucking vampire blood drip on all of these people, magically they're vegan. You know, fucking hell, what a trash. Oh my God. <laughs> horrible like Duh. literally the dumbest plot point just to make freaking emma into like you know some super pacifist uh this th- war doesn't need to be a zero-sum game norman it's like it kind of does actually <laughs> like <laughs> anyway i and then the very end they're like Mom, why don't you come to paradise with us? What? No, we got to atone for our sins. Bitch, shut up and get over here. (laughs) And then, by the way, we're staying. (laughs) Come on. What is that crap? Yeah. So in the the anime, they meet up with Norman a year afterwards. Mm -hmm. In the manga, it's two years. Also, not a single child's hair grew an inch. (laughs) <laughs> Except for Emma's hair growing long enough to cover her ear. And, and That's have, it. Like, have it be braided. With, yeah. Like those yellow and red and green headband things. God, man. Just <laughs> horrible. And Norman, and Norman still has the anti uh, okay. Yeah. 
the oh man that's an oh game like there's like eight o's in that one <laughs> you get a couple of l's and a y oh yeah <laughs> yeah so um like, tell us tell us what happens because you've read the the i, I, I can't really remember i mean i finished it like two years ago sure but what what away. moments stick out for you that are that were different i remember this the the hunting ground it was like they release kids in a city and they hunt them hmm. like, like the, the golden like the goldie pond arc or something i don't watch that hunting and kids. the whole the <laughs> whole anime. promise the whole promise thing with the with the demon and the like, like where God. it shows Dude. it shows I it shows, can't. It's it shows the whole Emma. first season. I'm waiting for Kefari to happen. Nope, a year goes by. <laughs> Give me a fucking <laughs> break, really? <laughs> like it's, they show Emma at like very end, like with one still making the new promise, like where she's standing on a, like a lake and with the two horrible. demons. Horrible. And in the manga, horrible. she she basically pays for this new agreement with her memories. And so she's an, an amnesiac at the end of the series. Wonderful! What a great, what a great uplifting story. <laughs> but, but but apparently, like it, 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 the way, and then like they, it, two even two years further before like the other kids eventually find her because she's living in the in the human world without her memories if, for two years. Can anybody name a single anime off the top of your head that actually sticks the landing? <laughs> like. Like holy shit! So there are so few. <laughs> so there are there, <laughs> there are so few with like an actual satisfying ending that doesn't feel like bullshit. You know, Steinsgate. Steinsgate, I think would be a a, a yeah. major contender. Yeah, except for the part where then season two happens. <laughs> well, yeah, Steinsgate too. Yeah. Yeah. And Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood definitely. Man, dude, I you just, haven't seen that yet. I know. No, I haven't. I haven't. I haven't gotten through it yet. But um, fuck, dude, Monica? I cannot believe how bad this was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Monica, Monica Magica, the original. Yeah, that has a pretty satisfying ending. Um, it's very strange, <laughs> but it's pretty satisfying. Um, Starting to watch next week. <laughs> My mom. These people are crazy. That's not what it means to marry the groom lady. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so much was skipped from the manga is unbelievable. To see, yeah, I can't fuck it. In, no. w- was the was the first season a failure in Japan or something? Like, I don't know. why on earth you are printing money for like five seasons? Right. Well, How do you? I, I, fuck I, I, that I, I, up? I, I, I said like, five seasons, but it's actually like four seasons. Plus. Regardless, you're fucking yeah. printing money. Even if it's just for one extra season, why would you throw that away? Like, look at Attack on Titan. They're just stretching that shit out for as long as fucking possible. No, I mean, they're only stretching that shit out because they, they had the gall to stupidly call it the final season well, I, so I, early. I mean, they're not really st- technically stretching. Well, yeah, I'll call it final season so early, but like. Yeah, so when when, when my it, wife. It's not like they're stretching it out. I mean, still just. Yeah. Not like. Stretching My wife read the manga, and when when I told her that it was called the final season, she's like, well, "No, they're like halfway through. <laughs> like, how, how can they? How can they end it now? <laughs> There's so much left to cover." Yeah. So, um, yeah, they uh, they should not have called it that so early. I mean, it makes sense if you think about it from the perspective of. It is the final arc, and it's a long yeah. arc, but it's it is the final arc. Yeah. But the way that they phrased it just sounds like it's ending. It's really ending this time. It's that this time final actually ending. You know. For sure, this time for real, guys. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so real quick, Ronan Jaw asked, "Could you explain to me why Vic is toxic to Viz?" So um, I mentioned this earlier. Um, oh, what yeah, I mean like by this ca- casting Vic would be just bring yeah. up all the toxic bullshit that. All the baggage of you should have hired Vic or you should have yeah. done this. So, you should have done that. So like just avoiding the entire conversation. So even even though VAs even though it VAs. seems, go ahead, Greenland. Sorry. Oh, just on top of other not, not just fans but other VAs would have probably bitched and whined. Yeah, ex- precisely, precisely. So even though anybody who paid really close attention to it 
sees it pretty obviously that Vic did. Vic clearly did not go after Monica. Clearly, they're stretching for the whole like, oh, he grabbed Jamie's hair. It's like no. He specifically says, I take issue with the characterization that it was somehow forceful or violent, right? Playfully touching somebody's hair is not the same thing as grabbing it at the base of their skull so tightly that they can't even turn their head and whispering something sexual in their ear. He, he outright denies that that ever occurred, and yet dumb idiots decide that it's okay to pretend that he admitted to it. Um, so, again... In spite of the fact that anybody who followed the the lawsuit very closely knows precisely what happened, watched all of the bullshit with all of the voice actors faking crap constantly and getting caught constantly, Hmm. to the outside perspective, people who didn't follow it, all they have are the headlines from ANN, io9, all these places – They don't watch the OCA podcast where they get the real coverage, right? (laughs) Um, So, so it creates a, uh, an easily like, because you have articles that say Vic is sex pest, it becomes very easy for people who say online, don't cast Vic. He's sex pest X, Y, Z. Here's a link to four articles that say Vic is sex pest, right? It makes it real easy for them to claim that he is. And because his his lawsuit was dismissed, there aren't articles that then say, oh, turns out Vic not sex pest. Vic wins court case, right? Um, so it becomes um, to the perception. They, they, ignore the, the, they ignore the fact that there's no articles that says Vic loses court case each. Right. So, um, so it just it becomes difficult for Viz to pick him up. Because so many people obviously yeah. are going to make us think about it, just like they are with the whole Wendy Lee situation. I mean, you look at what's going on with Wendy Lee, right? So, so many honestly, super minor, a yeah. super minor issue, and they're making it like it's the fucking fourteenth oh coming gosh. of Christ. Wendy, uh, so out of line, it's like oh right, man. yeah. So Wendy now imagine the same thing, but with Vic. Right? I mean, they'd lose their collective minds. They would literally kill Annie Arson. Viz, okay. I mean, that's how yeah. bent out of it's shape these people. Are. is the best option you could have gotten out of this situation. Like, yeah. So basically. effectively, effectively, what it is is that currently, right now, it is safer for Viz Just to, to not be hands cast off. Vic. Yeah, because not only would what not only would so called fans make us think about it, but also the other voice actors could be uncomfortable. Also yeah, make us think about it. Yeah, and so like, it's just gonna work with you. Like, it would be, be a detriment to this. It was a long or, shot. I mean, it was a valiant effort, and I'm glad that we pushed it for so long. Reach out to Viz, let them know you're excited for Thousand Year Blood War to come back, and you're dying to have Vic reprise his role. And I'll tell you, those messages that we had you guys send, that's probably why Wendy Lee got her role back. That's probably why they went to the trouble of getting the original OG cast, even though now it's non-union and all that stuff. That's probably why that occurred. So fucking pat yourself on the back for for getting the yeah, show was, to regain as many of the I was originals. So fucking ecstatic. Yeah. <laughs> About Wendy Lee coming back, I was like, no. Fuck yeah. It. I mean, Whatever honestly, I'll take things. Wendy Lee. You know, yeah, I mean, I'll absolutely. take, I'll take. Uh, that's a win, as far as I'm concerned. You know, uh, because honestly. As we saw, they'll take literally every fucking inch and they'll do it unapologetically, right? So getting to retain just one person, one more person from the original cast that the fans, people became fans because of is a win. Anyway, so um, regarding um, Promised Neverland, uh, definitely could have been better for sure. Um, (laughs) Yeah, I heard it was so shit that I was just like, you know what? Season one ended pretty good. I'll just I'll yeah. Season it. one could have. I mean, I would have preferred if they didn't do season two. I just left it at season one. I agree. I agree. I I liked having the characters come back and getting to just sort of have that like ASMR experience of hearing the interaction between Emma and Ray and whatnot. Um, and especially when once Norman came back and stuff. But um, I just felt like the decisions made were stupid. They're very stupid, you know. I thought that Norman's plan was fucking perfect, and it would have been a great way to go out in the in the series. But they had to give us like the humanizing aspect of the the bad blood princess or whatever the fuck they called her. 
Um, and it's just like it was dumb. It just wasn't smart. Like it was, it was a very, um, it almost kind of felt like uh, um, when a child is a fan of something and they write their own story about it, you know, and it's just shit, you know. And and that's that's just kind of how it felt. Like and, and, and the, the the worst, most egregious thing, of course, is the fact that the demons uh who have been like hell incarnate up until this point get to be humanized for no reason. Oh, there's yeah. children there. I don't fucking care. They're gonna they're gonna create a great feast and eat all of you. <laughs> like they were farming you, they invested like 14 years of your life, they invested almost as many years as that woman who married her son in order to eat your fucking brains. All right. Yeah. I don't care. Mujica will probably survive anyway. Like, big. also, fucking Sanju was dying to let them procreate and have free range kids to eat. I mean, come on. Even though like, he didn't even need it. Seriously, it is like, how, why even include that line? It just leaves me even more unsatisfied by the end of the series. You know? Stupid, very stupid. Yeah. Um, so yeah, anyway, uh, I don't know if there's anything go. more to say. I gotta say. get up in like <laughs> yeah, me four too. hours, so I'll take yeah, off. Me too. Uh, I think we're gonna wrap it up here. Um, you guys have anything else to say? Not particularly, um, not in particular. Didn't watch the season two, Whew! it ended good. <laughs> seven hour, one. seven hour podcast here. I do not like doing these. Um, and I gotta tell you, <laughs> I skipped like five or six articles at the beginning of the podcast, so. Yeah, um, we took like three hours to talk about voice actors and Wayne Lee, so. I'm, I'm I think that was we, worth it. I'm we, glad we kicked a lot me, of so. these out for the orange juice thumbnail for next podcast. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, it's been fun, gentlemen. And it was Take care. I'm a headache. Chat. I'm glad you got to be here. Um, next podcast, we're going to be starting our Shield Hero Season 2 um, Watch Club. You think I need to binge all of <laughs> Shield Hero. What's up, Reese? I need to be... binge all of Shield Hero. Yeah. <laughs> you think we'll be discussing it next podcast? No, probably not because I've got that freelance gig for that um, product visualization thing I gotta finish. Um, I will not rush. Yeah, no, you're not. You're not. Yes, you're not rushing. I just need to make sure that I mention it anyway. Um, ten, ten viewers. You guys are troopers. Make sure to like the video. Yeah, subscribe. Perfect. Um, and, uh, I need buy a video a outro. Yeah. Buy a Tenga. What are you doing? <laughs> what are you gay? Get a Tenga. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I don't know which video to play for the outro here. Uh, oh, of course. I'm coming day and night. I mean, it's terrific, right? <laughs>